Good morning, SMP Nation. Blaine Austin here with Sewing Machines Plus, and welcome to day three of Quilt Fest. Guys, we are so excited for today, and we're so happy that you're joined in. And again, we've had two days already, uh, fast-paced days. We've had some great education, some great demonstrations, and it's going to be more of that th today. I've got uh, Kennedy and Kyle here with me this morning. morning. And so y'all say hi to Kennedy and Kyle. Uh, we've got Rena, Rhonda, Melinda, and Joe all on chat this morning on the social media chat. So they're going to be monitoring YouTube and Facebook and all the other social media channels. They'll be trying to answer questions. And then we have our chat team that it's on our website. If you're going to SewingMachinesPlus.com, we have live chatters there that can help answer questions. And then naturally, our call center will be answering your calls today if you give a call in to make orders or ask questions. So we got everybody raring to go this morning, but I got to say a big shout out to some of the SMP Nation watching this morning. Before we get too started uh, into this, we got Sherry Pierce in Alabama. So good morning, Sherry. We have Barbara Tice in Indiana. So good morning, Barbara. Sue Wheeler in Utah is watching this morning. Uh, Gina Braun in Texas and Pammy J in Nevada. So good morning to all you. Good morning to the big S&P Nation out there. First of all, though, I got to say thanks to all of our sponsors because we could not do this without our partnership with them. And uh, our platinum sponsors for Quilt Fest are Handy Quilter and Grace. Our gold uh, sponsors are Baby Lock, Janome, Brother, R&K, Juki, and Quilt Easy. Uh, silver sponsors are King Quilter and Arrow Cabinets. And bronze sponsors are Reliable, Bernina, So Steady, Brewer, and Larstar. You see them all up there on the screen. Uh, so we got uh, some great sponsors, I tell you what. Our educational sessions uh, that we've had. Now, if you missed Monday and Tuesday, you can always go back on uh, YouTube or Facebook and watch those. Uh, we had some great educational sessions. On Monday, we had a colorful uh, yarn couching with Beth Ann Nemish. Uh, so she, we had her on there. It was really good. Y'all need to go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. Tuesday, we had the Kitchen Towel Project with Edita Centaur. And then today, it's going to be on the stencil with Jane Hopridge. And so y'all need to make sure y'all tune in today. That'll be at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, 12.30 p.m. Central. And uh, we'll have Jane on, and we can't wait to have her on to do her educational session. Now, Thursday, we're going to have ruler work with Kimberly Imo, and y'all want to make sure you see that. And then Friday, we're going to have all four judges. They're going to, all four of them are going to be back. And we're going to have a segment called Meet the Judges. It'll last an hour. We're going to have about 15 minutes with each one. And basically, we're going to talk a little bit about their quilting journey and then what they each look for in an award winning quilt. So that's all in store this week. Now, Tomorrow, uh, speaking of quilts, this is what this whole show is about, is quilting. And as y'all know, we had a quilting contest where you could enter your quilt virtually through pictures, and we posted them on our page, and you could actually get all those submitted, and then we opened it up for voting. So each person can get votes on their, you know, their quilt, and voting ends tomorrow at close of business. So we encourage y'all to go vote uh, today and tomorrow. And you can vote twice a day. So go look at your favorite one you pick out, give it a, a vote, and that'll really help them out because we are going to have a People's Choice Award that we're going to give. And basically, it's the top three vote getters uh, win the prizes. And you ask, well, what do they win? Well, the people's first place uh, is going to be worth $3,500. And so second place is valued at about $2,800. Uh, third place is worth about $2,300. So that's what they're going to win. And they each win a ribbon to put on their quilts. And then first place will get the golden scissors trophy along with their ribbon. Now, the best of show is what's going to be chosen by the judges. And uh, they're going to go pick their top three quilts out. And then the, the, the number one vote getter. Uh, we have a point system set up, and whoever has the most points is going to be the best of show out of the, all the quilts they pick. And y'all see the prize package right there. It is valued of almost twelve thousand uh, dollars for the first place judge's choice, which is an incredible prize package. I tell you what. 
Now, you all are probably asking, well, how about me? What can I win? Well, just for watching Quilt Fest, y'all all have a chance to win the Dream Studio giveaway, which is worth $26,000. And you see it all on the screen right there. It is an unbelievable prize package. And Monday, every day, we're going to pick a finalist. And Monday, our finalist was Laverne Mendez. Yesterday, our finalist was Sewing Bev. And today, this afternoon, we'll pick our third finalist. And what we do, we pick on uh, five finalists. And on Friday, we'll put all their names in a hat live on air. I'll pull out the winner. And But everybody's going to get a prize package. So the other four runner-ups, you're not going to go home empty-handed. You're guaranteed to win a sewing machine. So some all good stuff. So guys, I got to introduce my co-host for this week. She's back again today, and I tell you what, uh, we got to welcome Jane Klaus to the show. Jane, uh, I tell you what, she's a two-time Emmy award-winning TV host. She is a radio host. She is a brother ambassador. She has done do-it-yourself TV, uh, all kinds of things. She's a crafter. Uh, I tell you what, she's a talent, and we're super excited to have her because she is a, also a friend of SMP. So y'all welcome to the show, Jane Cloud. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Blaine. Thanks for the great introduction. It's so great to be here. Well, Jane, we're super excited to have you here. And again, hey, it is already Wednesday and we are, you know, this is flying by. Quill Fest is flying by and we're going to be here Friday afternoon going, where did the week go? I know. I know. I mean, I wonder if I was like, I don't know, like 30 years younger, would I say, oh, it's just taking forever. You know how time flies when you get older? Or is yeah. it just because we are just so in it and it's flying by? I wish it wasn't because I want to remember every yeah. second like it's 10 minutes. I think it's because we're having so much fun yeah. and it's so fast paced. I think that's why it kind of goes by so fast. Totally. And today is Wednesday, <laughs> March 13th. And I don't know if you know this, and I think that all of our SMP nation practices this every day. They don't need a national day, but today is the national good Samaritan day. It is. Yeah. So they say open a door for somebody, do something nice for somebody today. And we, we never need those reminders, but I just no. saw that. I thought, oh, well, this just is right to our friends here at SMP. Well, you know, and that's kind of the one of the our core values at SMP is what is it, Kennedy? Three things you have to have. To, what's two of them? Be nice. Be nice. And you have to care. And you have to care. That's two of our two of the core a, values. And, and uh, we'd say that, you know, be nice. That it's is so very, great. Very easy to be nice. It it's, really is. And put a smile on your face. That's all you need. Well, Don't be judgy. <laughs> Just be kind. Kindness. We're celebrating kindness today and all week long and every day. There we go. <laughs> well, hey, Jane, to start the day off, I got a got a joke for you. Oh, okay. Let's do it. So is, is SMP Nation ready for a joke this morning? If, if right. they've had their coffee, they're ready. Okay. So how do <laughs> quilters wash their hands? Huh. How do quilters wash their hands? With soap and water. <laughs> soap. That's good. Soap. I like soap it. And water. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I got one for you. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. Um, I hope I didn't do this one yesterday. Uh, how do you know, did I do this one yesterday? If I did, then just give me a, like a pretend laugh. Um, how do you know that someone is a sewer? How do you know if someone is a sewer? Mm -hmm. They have to have purple hair. <laughs> uh, no, don't worry about it. They'll tell you just as soon as they threaded the needle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, you yep. know, I sew. <laughs> yes. Uh, you didn't tell that one. That was a good, that okay. was a new one. All right. Good. <laughs> So there's going to be more of that the, the whole week. We got to tell some jokes and to get things lightened up. But hey, Jane, you know what have you liked uh, so far about Quilt Fest? Oh my gosh, Blaine, what have I what have I not liked about Quilt Fest? <laughs> I mean, there's, so there's so many things. Everybody knows I love hanging out with the community because I truly feel like even though I can't see you, I feel like I can see you. Well, actually, we have cameras in all of your homes and on your computers, so we can see you. I'm just letting you in on a secret, and you look 
fabulous this morning. Um, so that's number one is hanging out with everybody. Uh, number two is watching all of the presenters because yes, we are talking about the tools you need to get the job done right, but the presenters just add so much more insight and you're kind of learning their little tips and tricks to what they do when they're putting together a quilt or you know just the tools that they use. And, and again, I always say this, have the right tools to get the job done. And we have that number one. And number two, we can all be experts, but we're not experts at everything. So we can learn from everyone. So hanging with the audience and community, being a part of the presenters and listening to their tips and tricks. And of course, number three is telling jokes. <laughs> well, you know, Jane, uh, also we have some great things to give away. And, uh, you know, and we're going to give away not only, you know, things that people can get in the for the Dream Studio giveaway, but we're giving a lot of things away each day, all day long uh, that you can get a chance to win. And all they have to do to win, Jane, is just make comments or ask questions in the chat. Yeah. And that automatically enters them to win. I know. It's so much fun. All you need to do, everyone's texting in right now saying, good morning. I'm having my coffee. Love the laugh. Somebody asked about my husband, Kurt. He's doing great. So, uh, yeah, just keep talking. And I love I really love because when the presenters are doing their thing, I'm sitting here watching and taking notes because I know that the comments go by so fast and they're monitoring them and they have people. So we're here monitoring them as well so that I, I love reading what everybody's writing and I actually follow along on the conversations you're having with each other. <laughs> well, you know, and two, I want to just tell everybody out there, if you really do have a specific question about a product or, or something you see in the demonstration, wait until right at the end when the presenter is finishing up to put the question in the chat because a lot of times they'll be able to see it and our chatters will be able to see it too and try to help answer it as well uh, because a lot of times during it's going by so fast during the presentation they don't see it and we miss it too yeah absolutely so um again chat 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 yes. and call Hey, and the other thing I got to ask out there, how many of y'all have watched the show so far from Monday all day long, all day long yesterday? Put a number five in the chat right now. I want to see how many fives we see uh, that everybody who's been watching it wall to wall, as they call five? it. Okay. Is there a lot of fives coming yeah, in? a lot of fives coming in. Kyle? Was, all right. Oh, the yeah. other thing I want to see is how many of y'all are brand new to our show. This is the first time you've ever seen one of our shows. Put a this number week, one though. in the chat. This week. This week. Yeah, not just today. Or today <laughs> only, or this week. Look at there are like five, 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 five. <laughs> there we see a one. Okay. Who is the one? Lori. Lori. Well, hey, welcome to SMP Nation, Lori. Wow, Paula. lots of people. Hey guys. I love that you're here. So, glad you're here. Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Le Lisa. So, so Lisa? great. They're all coming in. Meredith, Carla. Well, there is a bunch of new ones. Uh, Kennedy has, says she can't keep up. There's so many. So, Oh, my gosh. Hi, everybody. So Welcome. Say, thank you for joining in, uh, all you newbies. And uh, all the people out there with the fives are going to make you feel welcome because they're part of the S&P Nation. And we want you to be part of the S&P Nation as well. We do this every quarter uh, of the year, all throughout the year. Every quarter, we do a big festival. Uh, we start, this is our first one. We start out it with Quilt Fest in June. We will have Hoop Fest in September. We'll have So Fest. And then we have a Countdown to Christmas show that'll be the second week in December. Uh, and, and before that, though, we have a Cyber Monday show that's an all day show. It's the oh, Monday yeah. after Thanksgiving. That's fine. And we have a great show all day long. And there it's extremely fast paced because every demo is 15 minutes long and it's I mean, non-stop all day. It is head spinning, but so much fun because you just, it's literally you jam a week of things in in one day, but it, that talk about things going fast. Uh, Blaine, you forgot to talk about the newest and greatest and latest and funnest one coming up. That is true. We have a brand new event that we're doing in April. It's going to be April the 10th through the 12th and it's called Serger Sore. And it's going to be a party. Party. <laughs> I feel like, our, it's, can we have balloons and like, you know. We're going to have a great bunch of stuff. And uh, <laughs> so we're going to have that in April uh, 10th through the 12th. And we're, we're having, we finalized most of the demonstrations. We're basically having 
Um, all the serger brands, the best serger educators in the country are going to be on the show doing things. And right now I'm working on a little spinoff to the show and y'all can tell me, you know, give me some feedback, tell me what you think about this, but I'm wanting to have a, what we call a serger sew off and yeah. have some uh, like three people that are the serger experts in the country. And I'm going to send them all the same thing and they have to do a project and we check through with them throughout the show and see how they're coming and we'll give them a challenge. I love that for sure. You have to do that. And I've got one person already in mind to do this and I got to ask her, but y'all can probably put some pressure on her too. I'm thinking Joanne Banco would be perfect. Oh my gosh. As one of those contestants. Joanne Bingo, you, you'd have to give her like three projects to do in that time frame because she'd get the one <laughs> done immediately, like the day one. And she would probably teach us how to do it while she was doing it. And she would also show us like the inner workings of a serger. So what I'm thinking about is I sit, <laughs> go out and buy some stuff, maybe some repurpose things and tell okay. them they have to create their own project out of it, it, send them a box of the stuff and let them go. I love that. I love the sustainability side of that as well. So yeah, that's so, super fun. So Joanne, if you're watching, give us some feedback. Tell us if you're in. Please, She's maybe like, I'll have to go to like the thrift store and I'll film me like picking out yes. all the stuff. Oh, yeah. will go to the thrift store and pick out their stuff. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, so fun. And then they get a mystery box of things. So everyone gets a pair of trousers or, or jeans or whatever. You know what denim and but yeah, it'd be the same thing. It'd be all everybody will get the same thing. So right. Yeah. So they get a shirt, a trouser, a this, a that, or whatever. So everybody gets this, a five same things, and then you exactly. have to make it out of those. So that's but kind they of, may so not be the same. Tell me if y'all think y'all would like to see that as well. Uh, and they have to make it on a serger. Everything they do would be on a serger. So I, I think it. it'd be pretty awesome. But you know what? Speaking of awesome, you've got a your first presentation this morning, Jane, is going to be awesome. So let's right. get going. And I'll okay. see y'all back here in about, I think, what, 30 minutes or an hour? Yeah. 30 Anyone? minutes. I'll see you back in 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Lane. All right, everybody. Whose brain is not spinning already with ideas from a mystery box of items from a thrift store on what you're going to make with your serger. I know mine is. Okay. So let's kick things off. First session of the day. I'm super excited to welcome our friends from the Grace Company, Allegra Erznaznik and Jana Matthews. Now, let me tell you a little bit about these lovely ladies. Jana works close, closely with Grace dealers and customers and recently started attending quilt shows and creating virtual events. And when she's not working, you can find her crocheting, um, adding a new hourglass to her collection or snuggling up to her adorable cat, Samson and Berthold. Maybe I said that wrong. Uh, and Jana, I love that. I can't wait to talk to her about this collection of hourglass. Uh, Jana is the assistant sales manager with the Grace Company. She joined the company a little over a year ago as an account executive. And since then, she's been promoted and has had the opportunity to work with both customers and dealers across the country. When she's not at work, Jana is an avid baker and loves bringing in tasty treats to share. Yes, please. Please say hi to Jana and Allegra, everybody. Hello, how Good are you? Good morning, girls. How are you today? Great, how are you? So fantastic. I'm bright, I'm sunny, I'm happy, I'm well rested. We're kicking off day three and mm -hmm. everyone is in, really super excited to hear from you guys. I need to hear quickly, Allegra, about this collection of hourglass. Is it hourglass <laughs> figures? Just like just hourglasses in general, I think I have almost 20 now and they're all just different colors, different shapes. They have different kinds of sand in them. That's I so just really cool. like them. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, I, I have a surprise for you when we end the session. Okay, so today <laughs> you're going to talk about the QCT 6 Plus. Is that right? Yes. yes. Awesome. All right. I don't want to take up any more of your time because everybody knows that I could talk to you for a half hour, but we want to hear from you. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. The beginning, I love being the first one in uh, the morning, right, for Quilt Fest. Because, oh, me too. <laughs> like, we just get the juices flowing and everything yes. is happening. So we're so excited for you to be here. You know, if you have any questions at any time, throw them in the comments. We'll be able to get them in there for you and um, get all those questions answered. But again, we're talking about QCT6+. Plus. Now, QCT stands for Quilter's Creative Touch, if you haven't yes. heard of that before. And in the past, it was five. We've up graded it so now we're at six plus so if you had five beginnings this is the same as six plus 
So all you have to do is update it. It's not a uh, paid thing that you have to do for the update. You just uh, go in and do that uh, automatic update on your tablet and you can get six. If you have any issues, you can give us or SMP a call. We'll be able to help you with that. But for those who have not seen QCT6, we're gonna get started and talking about it. Yes. So. A lot of you have been watching since day one, yes. so I know many of you saw yesterday's first segment where we talked about QCT6 Edge to Edge. Now this has everything Edge to Edge offers, but also a little bit more, and those are the details that we're going to dive in for you today. Yeah, I'm really excited because I feel like Edge to Edge is great, it's wonderful for beginners, but with Plus you get all the things that you are getting with Edge to Edge already, and then you get that extra piece. So the first thing that you get different than the edge to edge, you get pattern placement. So you can see here we have our select and sew and our pantograph. So those are two different things. Last time when we were doing the edge to edge, you only saw the pantograph work. That is uh, the same yeah. design let's all the way through. Real quick. Yeah, so this is them. what the plus is going to look like. This is what edge to edge looks like. So you only have the option to select edge to edge. But then once when we get into plus, you realize we get select and sew and pantograph. And I want to point out too, you get all the same features of that edge to edge. You can have that available. And you also have the user manuals. Now, uh, when you get QCT6, you can download from the software, little USB port, um, you can download three times. So you can download to your tablet and you can download to a computer. So I know for me, when I'm going into these user manuals, when I touch the user manual, then it comes up and I can't see the screen anymore. And it's like, oh wait, I wanted to go step by step. So by putting it on my computer, then I can have my tablet and go through exactly what I'm needing to do with whichever section. So let's show what the difference is about yes. <laughs> pattern placement versus just pantograph. Yeah, let's start with pantograph since you know we already kind of dipped their toes into that yesterday. Now. Yesterday, when we were talking about the edge to edge feature, we said you could only do one row at a time. That is different for plus. You get up to two <gasps> rows that you can program at a time. Because it's a yes. plus. <laughs> so when you're going through, again, you're going to have a chance to get all these fantastic patterns. But to, before you get started with anything, you always have to set your safe area. Yes. So we're going to have to do that here as well. I'll let uh, Allegra do that. Um, again, you're going to set your top left and your bottom right so it has the safe area. You're going to go slightly off your quilt so that those patterns will be able to go through exactly um, where you're needing to go. Now, with edge to edge, you get over a hundred different uh, pantograph patterns. I know you, I was watching your segment. Yes. You talked about <laughs> the giraffe and the dinosaurs, and there's a really cute sewing one in there. And they are. Prints. They're so cute. They're so fun. And, and for so many different, um, so many different ones, right? So many. Um, so, <laughs> but with the Plus, you get access to the whole library of patterns that we have available. So that's 200 more patterns. Mm -hmm. Some are pantograph, some are pattern placement. And so you get all these other patterns as well, so that you're not just going again mm -hmm. with those 100 you're yes. getting all these other ones and also. many ask like are are you limited to the patterns that we give you no once you get up to plus you do have the ability to import your own patterns that way if you've already purchased some or you find one that you just really like you can upload those into here as well and if you have a question about what file types um, of the patterns that you can download when you go into the patterns you can see here at the bottom of the screen it shows all the different file types so you've got GPF, CMD, CQP, and so on. So if you're wondering when you're downloading a pattern, is it gonna be compatible with QCT? That's your list right there. So you don't have to worry about, is it listed or not, or anything like that. You're gonna be able to you know, look for it, and then you'll have that ability to get that all taken care of so that you're not, oh, which one do I do and which one not? So what, what pattern are we gonna to choose today for our pantograph to start Ooh. out? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we should I, choose the cat since the cat. Since you're I was going to say probably one of the cat ones. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this one with the cat and the ball. I like that one. It's very cute. So you're going to see it's going to pull up as one. And then this is just one single portion of this pantograph pattern. Yes. And so don't freak out. You're not going to have one giant cat. <laughs> 
on your quilt. Although I guess you could do that if you, you really could. wanted to. <laughs> but we're going to start and show you how to add additional patterns. Yes. Yeah, so on the left side, we're going to see the select pattern button. Underneath that, we're going to see um, toggles that say patterns and rows. Now they're kind of covered up by the Grace Company little blurb on there, but believe us, it's that's where it is. <laughs> So you'll notice when I hit the plus sign, I am adding patterns to my row. This is basically, I'm just gonna pick how many cats I want, but then we can resize how tall we want it to be so it doesn't stitch out, kind of stretched out and elongated like that. Yeah, and just as she, she was saying before the rows, we can select up to two with this version um, of uh, QCT Plus. Yep. So there's our two rows. And if I just don't love how squishy the cats look, I can change their height. Now what we're seeing, this is our entire safe area that we've set. So if I were to place these exactly this size, this is how it would stitch out into our safe area. So that safe area again was the entire area that we can stitch right now, uh, left to right and up and down on this quilt. Yes. So we're gonna resize it though. Yes. <laughs> so right now it's about, the pattern height is about seven and a half. So usually I want to know what it's at first before I decide how small I want to make it. And you got to this pattern height just by touching the row height. I did. Yep. Section. All I did was just um, touch pattern height. Let's try five. See where that puts us. Okay. I'm liking that better. Yeah. And, and now you can adjust um, how close those pantographs are, that line. So if you want them with a lot of space, you can do that, or you can adjust it and move them closer together. So there they are kind of equidistant apart. And that's with your fit and your um, selecting row, all those kinds of things. Yes. You can also notice that um, we have uh, staggering. You can flip, you can yes. rotate. I'm actually going to take off one of the rows just so it's a little bit easier for us to see. But I can, let's see, is it this one? No. Well, you can move them apart. <laughs> you can bring them back together. You can also... I don't know what I'm doing anymore. There we go. <laughs> so we can flip them. You can alternate how they flip as well. So the cats are playing ball with each other. That's yes. so fun. And you can also rotate them this way. So, so lots many of, different lots things. Lots of creative freedom, a little bit more um, customization than we get in Edge to Edge. Right. With Edge to Edge, it's the pattern, how it's set, Edge to Edge. So this plus, it really does give you that plus feature of doing yes. a little bit more than you were doing before. And the fun thing about this is if you did get Edge, all it is is an upgrade fee. You don't have to pay the whole amount again for plus, and you're able to go and just do that little step. So you can build as you're going along rather than paying all at once. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that makes it a little less intimidating as well. Yes. Because I know a lot of, the biggest thing that usually keeps people away from automation is the price point. Mm -hmm. That's a big factor. And the fact that they're like, well, I'm only doing edge to edge now. I'm not ready for that mm -hmm. designing of the whole quilt or those alternate. I just want to do one thing, get it done quickly and quilt it fast. So this gives you that option of, like we're so saying, it's not pro, you're still able to design your pantograph slightly and to do pattern placements, but you're still getting that feature without having to pay the large price tag yes. for the pro features. Yes, so now we've seen pantographs, but there's so many more options that this gives you as well. So I'm just gonna hit our home button. It's gonna ask if I wanna save my design. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> We're not gonna save it for We're now. We're not gonna we'll save back. it for now. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm gonna hit our select and sew. This is going to be our block placements. We also, um, plus gives you kind of just a handful of triangle placements as well, which are fun to place when you do have triangle, you know, kind or of cutouts or uh -huh. sections that you want. It's really fun to kind of see how you can manipulate those patterns. So block patterns, they are gonna be, we have square ones, we have circles, we have some teddy bears, just some fun patterns that you can pick from. And I also kind of think it helps, you know, kind of jumpstart your creativity, mm -hmm. seeing what patterns are available and kind of where you wanna go. I love that with hammer one because Me a lot too. of people think that um, patterns just have to be about kids or about fluffy things. But you know, this we have a, a tool. You can do anything that you put your mind to or that you've downloaded from someone. So it's not just about only being 
Yes. Freely designs. You can do tools for that um, hardware yes. person in your yes. life. Yes. So here are our triangle designs. We've got a few pages of those as well. But something that's also really fun is if we want to go hit our patterns in the top left corner, then we can get to our edge to edge patterns. So we still have access to all those wonderful themed patterns that edge to edge gives you as well. That's wonderful. And now again, one, um, we had another question about, are you able to upload patterns? Yes, with the QCT6 Plus, you're able to import and export patterns. And the file types you can see down the, at the bottom of this screen, the GPF, CMD, CQP, and et cetera, those are all the types of patterns. So if you're on someone's website and they're selling it or you get an image and you can download. Those are the file types you're able to download and import into the QCT6. But we're gonna show you what it's like to place an actual block. So we're gonna, we've set our safe pattern. Yes. Now, we do have some triangle sections here. Do we wanna Ooh. do a block pattern, a triangle? I kind of like the triangle idea. I like the triangles too, yeah. yes. Okay, so we're gonna go to our triangle section and we're just gonna pick one that we like. Maybe one that won't take a while. I really love how versatile, like I don't even think about these triangles, but then like the bubbles one. Yes, well I'm looking one. at this one right here. I'm like, oh, I never even thought about yeah. like that being a triangle placement. Just a perfect, yeah, just yes. simple. It doesn't have to be really crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna place it as a rectangle, but my nodes, it's giving me four placement nodes. So we're gonna come down to triangle and then here we can switch it. So it can be like an equilateral triangle or, um, Isosceles. Thank you. <laughs> like going back to my math class. Your math. <laughs> and you can also, within that size, you can stretch the image like it is now, or you can fit it to that yes. size. So whichever design you're doing, this is able to, to you know, get yours where mm -hmm. you want it to be. And I definitely prefer stretch. That way it really gets to all the edges that I want it to be at. Mm -hmm. So now we're just going to place it. We're going to move the machine to where we want to place those nodes. Now, um, people have asked sometimes uh, which machines are compatible with QCT6. All our Cunic machines, as well as the Little Rebel, are compatible with QCT6 Edge to Edge, Plus and Pro, so that you can, um, and all our frames that we have available as well right now. Um, so there's no limit. You don't have to have a big area or a giant machine and frame just to do automation. The Little Rebel on the QD Breeze is compatible with automation as well. Yes. Okay, so I placed it. You guys saw me moving the machine around and then you'll see that it's also marked in this safe area example where that's gonna go. And as you place the nodes, it aligned itself to that triangle section because you know it was like the longer section was on the bottom and now it's on its side. Yes, so now once I'm ready, I'm gonna hit quilt. and then it's gonna connect. And a fun thing about this is it's gonna pull up your bobbin thread for you. I love this. I love this too. So we're just gonna hit our lovely pull bobbin button. Now it's gonna to go to that green image that's on the screen. That's where it starts. And you can see the little dotted line. So it's showing you, hey, I had to come this far over to the green and it'll stop at the red circle. So you'll know where it's gonna start and stop on your, yes. your screen. So there it did its stitch and now it's gonna move a little bit to the side. Let's do it. I don't think the bobbin thread was long enough. There we go. There we go. So we've got our bobbin thread and the reason we wanna pull up the bobbin thread whenever you're starting quilting is so that your bobbin thread doesn't uh, one, when it stitches off, it's all in the same section. Yes. And two, when you're done, you're not going on both sides of your quilt to get rid of all those mm -hmm. long threads. You can do it all on one side. Yes. So now that the bobbin thread's been successfully pulled up, we're going to tell the machine that we're ready to sew. <gasps> and now it's going to do it. Yes. <laughs> Something else I love about automation is it's going to lock in your stitches for you. That way, at the start and end point, all you have to do is trim your threads. So they're started. It's done the tie off and now it's gonna get sewing. And you can see how easy. Now we've set the stitch regulation for the size that we wanted. It will continue on that stitch regulation size until we change it. As it's going along, you can see that edge to edge we did earlier yesterday with that uh, shark pattern. Yes. 
also, as it's going along, it's counting down. Yes, look at these edges, Jana. Look how close I got them to the edges, so exactly perfect. where I wanted it to be. And now we have the option to pull our bobbin thread again. Because again, if we're yes. doing a new placement, we don't want to just pull thread and have it loosey-goosey all over the place. Now, you'll notice on the screen there also was an option for repair pattern. If for whatever reason the bobbin um, ran out or the machine just hit something, maybe the encoders hit something wrong, a piece of dust or something, and the stitches were off and you have to redo it, you can go back and repair that pattern, um, yes. go to the closest stitch, all those kinds of things to get it to where it needs to be. Something I really like is our functions box. So um, this will make you it'll take you directly to your starting point you can reset your safe area if you need to if you need to release the carriage while it's stitching you can do that as well maybe your thread broke or maybe some fabric is catching all of that and then it also has a measuring feature in here as well for you and this function um it it's really great so here in the bottom as well you can also change your stitches per inch how fast you want it to stitch if you want it slow medium fast you have a lot of options for those as well you know a lot of people we often put it on slow especially when we're at a show and we're showing things in our showroom you know so that people can see how it's going along but people will come by and say that's well, pretty that doesn't slow. seem very fast it's like you're right it's on slow <laughs> speed <laughs> on and purpose. we did that on purpose yeah exactly so Let's show how to place a square block, because I would yes. think that would be so fun too, besides Absolutely. just the triangle. So we're gonna go back to our select pattern. We can stay in um, the same section. We don't have to go back to the home screen because we're already in the select and sew block placement. Do you have a block that you like, Jana? Let's do the butterfly, because the butterfly. I feel like spring, even though it's snowing here in Salt Lake. Yes, it's snowing. What about <laughs> that, guys? <laughs> So you can see that as she's clicking through the buttons, it was at the triangle, yes. and now she's gonna change to the four points so we can get it exactly in that mm -hmm. square. Now, if you're doing um, one of your blocks and it's not perfectly to square, that's okay. When you're setting everything, it will go through. Something I also really like about the four node placement and not just the block placement is that if I don't have my quill all the way on even, that's fine. I can tell it exactly where those corners are and it'll place it where I want it to be. So now we'll notice that we're in stretch mode. So it's stretching that butterfly pattern all the way to the edges. If we go to fit though, it's gonna take that butterfly back to its regular size. It so, keeps it proportional. Yeah. yeah, so fit and stretch is definitely gonna be used based on one, how you want your pattern to look and if you really do want it to reach all the edges of your section, because we are kind of putting more of a, a rectangular pattern into mm -hmm. a square. Yeah, so those are things to consider, and also it's, it's okay to place certain things where you're going. Now, Allegra was being very um, loosey-goosey with the thread, and she just pulled on it so that <laughs> we could get started. Don't have Normally, any scissors. We, yeah, we, we have the scissors, <laughs> um, but we'd pull up that bobbin thread, which we didn't at the end, so we're going to show you on this one as well. And I'm going to show you guys my favorite bobbin pull trick because I personally am a little lazy and impatient when it comes to waiting for it to pull the bobbin thread up. And then moving to the side. Yes. So, so watch it fast because it's going to be quick yeah. here. So I like to slide it under the foot. It's going to do one slow stitch. And after that stitch, you're going to swipe that thread under. It's going to pull up that bobbin thread for you. So now you're ready to go. You didn't have to try and move it aside. It is a little bit faster, but you got to be quick. If you're not quick, then you can get frustrated really, <laughs> yes. really soon. <laughs> yes. So you can see it's stitching the same way as that other one everywhere we've placed it. Now, if you look at the screen again, it has a countdown stitches, so you know how much how total stitches, right? We're at 712, remaining is counting down, and then percent complete. So you can see, oh, this is how much longer I have. If you are able to walk away, if you're gonna piece, you have a long um, design or something, and you wanna finish your piecing of another quilt, you can do that and just stay near it. Um, we do have people who leave the room, and that's totally okay. Just be prepared that if you leave the room, that's probably when you'll run out of bobbin. <laughs> So it is, yes. It's, it's a universal problem, yes, right? Yes, but that's why we have our repair pattern exactly. function, which is fantastic. It'll go exactly where it had gone before. That way, um, I know some quilters, they like to wash their quilts, some don't wash their quilts. 
If you wash them, those puncture holes will kind of fill up. If you don't though, they're gonna be there. And that repair function is great for that because it'll just go directly into the same holes that it already stitched before. And then we're getting our tie off. So there's our butterfly. It looks fantastic, reminds us of spring. Now, um, we have some fantastic packages going on with SMP for QCT6 Plus. And again, with edge to edge that we've already talked about. So you've seen both versions now and you can make a decision like that's the one for me. But if you get edge to edge, mm -hmm. you can still do plus uh, later on. It's just an upgrade, which is less. It's just the difference between the two rather than the whole big package again. Yes. And if you already have one of our current machines or frames, you don't have to worry about compatibility. It's just kind of a given. If you do have one of our older frames or machines, definitely give us a call or SMP just to verify its compatibility. Yeah, so we're gonna go back to SMP now and, um, oh, I forgot to tell my joke We have earlier. a joke. Okay, um, it's it's more of a Here, funny I'll, comment. I kind of have a punchline to <laughs> I start love that you. Have you. Okay. So okay. <laughs> when is the only time housework comes before quilting? When in the, is the dictionary only time housework comes before clothing before quilting before, before quilting. quilting okay it is in the dictionary <laughs> you guys are funny that's great <laughs> amazing i love that you have a joke makes my day by the way uh, great presentation oh thank and you I, and we're going to get to the screens and tell everybody how they can get it but i have to well, I'm wondering if this is proper. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. I know. It's super cool, except that it's broken. <gasps> That's disappointing. <laughs> I know. Does that mean the time has run out? Maybe on this session. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, Allegra and Jana, so great. Love your joke, love your presentation even more. And I think everybody needs to know how to get their hands on this. And I need to make sure that I didn't miss any questions. I think we're good, because great demo, everybody's loving it. But you know what they need to do? Need to buy need it. Need to buy it, yes. <laughs> Got that right, they need to buy it. So let's, uh, I'll show those screens. And ladies, thank you so much for everything. <laughs> Fun. Thanks, Jane. Thank you. See you later. We'll see you later. Uh, oh my gosh, Allegra and Jana really just showing up for us on this first segment today on Quilt Fest Day 3. So here you go. This is your Quilt Motion Quilters Creative Touch 6 Quilting Robotic Plus. I love that. So you're seeing your pricing right there. Your Quilt Fest pricing, $4,999, but it is a call-in special. Now, you've got different versions available, so when you call, be sure to ask about all of those different versions that they have available. Again, 800-401-8151 for you to call in and get that call-in special and, and talk about those different versions uh, that, of course, Allegra and Jana talked about as well. 800-401-8151. And then um, you can also chat if you have questions right now because the representatives from SMP are standing by for you. They did fantastic. So much fun. I love their jokes. I love the presentation. And that's a great way to kick off day three. What do you think, Blaine? Well, thanks, Jane. Hey, uh, Jane, since we got a few little, a couple minutes here, why don't we go ahead and give away something? What do you think? Uh, yeah, what do, well, this is great. I just said what a great way to kick off day three and now you're even adding to it. So let's yes. give away a reliable iron oh, you see it right there. This is the 270 IR. It. It's $180 value. And uh, we're going to give one away. So Kennedy, are you ready to go this morning? I am ready. And I just would like to add that I personally have this iron and it is my favorite iron in the entire world. Just, yes. Just she, saying. I, see I don't you mean that it. lightly. She I uses love it. it all the time. Yes. All right, Kennedy, spin that wheel. Let's do it. Let's get us a winner this morning. Oh, yeah. I love that iron. I don't have it, but I love it. Oh, it's <laughs> the best, Jane. We got to get you one. Here we go. All right. Woo! Amazing. Sarah Lamp watching on YouTube this morning. Thanks for joining us today, Sarah. Happy to have you here. You won the iron. You're going to be just as happy as Kennedy is with your new iron. So all you need to do to, is go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize, scroll to the bottom, fill out all the information so they know where to send it to you. And I'm sure you will get that soon. You have 30 days to redeem your prize, but we know it's early. We know you're watching. So I know you're redeeming right now. Very good. 
So Jane, want, real quick, before we start our next segment, I wanted to kind of remind everybody some of the dates and things that we've got coming up. Uh, you know, somebody, I think Chad oh, yeah. had asked. I so if y'all look at the calendar Kennedy has put together, uh, you know, every Thursday we have what they call SMP Live. On every Thursday, we start at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Central. And we do that every Thursday. And then April the 10th through the 12th, we're having our Serger Soiree, as we already talked about. May the 9th, it's Blaine's birthday bash. So oh, we always yeah. have a special show on my birthday. Instead of me giving presents, I give. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then June the 10th through the 14th is Hoop Fest. And then some dates that are going to be coming up on July the 11th. Everybody mark these count these dates down or take a picture of it with your yeah, phone. Oh, that's good. Screenshot. A screenshot, yes. So this is a really cool event on July the 11th. We're having SMP's private auction. Ooh. And the criteria is you have to have purchased from SMP before. And there's you have to go through basically a login code and sign up for it. We give you the code to get into the private sale. And we actually have a private auction. Uh, and we auction off a bunch of different types of machines and products. It's pretty wow. cool. We That's... did it last year. And it was awesome. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. You auctioned and it off right then there. October the 14th through the 18th is what we call our national trade-in week. So if you have something that you're wanting to get brand new and you have an old machine you want to trade in for it, we actually uh, assess the value of what you're wanting to trade, give you a, a trade-in value for it, and pick your machine up. We get you to ship it in, and we sell you a brand new one. So it's awesome. I love the live show calendar, Blaine. Thank you so much for sharing that. I so, took a pic with my phone. Yeah, that's that's the best way to do. Just if you're on, you're watching your phone, you take a screenshot of it, and we'll yeah. put this up again uh, later on, and then we'll do it. We to, it. Yeah, we can post it too. I love and it. We'll do it a couple of times during the week. So it's a fantastic so save the date. You know what I mean? Like you got to get <laughs> things out there, save the date. So that's perfect. We can get it in our calendars right now. You're right. You will right, share Jane, that later, gonna, right? You, what? Pardon me. You will share that later again. Yes, yes. we'll share it again. I'll Good. post it right now. Yep. All okay. right, Jane. We will. Uh, we're going to continue on the show. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on, and we have got a special treat for you. We have Sam Fung going to be back on the show, and we are going to talk all about that Elena 782 Plus. Now, I want to tell you out there, all you Janome fans out there, this is the same as the M8. The Janome M8 can only be sold in the retail stores, but this can be sold online and shipped right to you. This is a machine. It's one of the higher-end machines. It is packed full of great technology and uh, sam is Ooh, going to oh, yeah. oh oh this is a different machine what do we have yesterday oh we had the 790 790 so this yeah this is not yeah this is like the m yeah it's not the m8 i'm sorry i was thinking we were talking the same machine so this is a 782 plus I, we had the 792 plus yesterday right yes yes okay my mistake that this is still a great, great machine, uh, packed pack full of stuff. But anyway, Sam is the educational coordinator. He has been sewing for the past 45 years. And prior to joining Janome 15 years ago, he owned a custom sewing business where he made everything for contour, contour, uh, contour I'll say it here in a second, uh, contour wedding gowns to home decor and even taught students of all ages how to sew. Sam is definitely Janome's resident notions expert. And he always says he probably has enough notions at his house. He could open his own business. Uh, but y'all welcome Sam Fung to the show. Hi, Blaine. Hey, Sam. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. Well, I, I was thinking we were doing the exact same machine we did yesterday, but we got a different machine for you. So, hey, we're ready to go. We're going to let you take off and I'll tell everybody how they can get it here in about 30 minutes. Okay, great. Hello, everybody. My name's Sam. Today we're talking about the Elda 782. And like Blaine was saying earlier, this is just like the Janome version of the 9480. That is the Janome equivalent to this machine. Both machines are basically the same. Um, all the functions are the same. The main difference is with the Elna, we give you the stitch regulator. And yes, this machine has the stitch regulator, it comes with it. With the Janome version, it is an optional add-on. So 
the Janome version is a thousand dollar add-on for the stitch regulator, but with the Elna, it's included with the machine. So let's just get started with this machine. As you can see, we have an 11 inch throat space on here. On the machine, we also have a upper light that we can turn on. And with the studio lighting, you guys can't probably see anything, but there is a light that pulls out here. So if you're a little bit dim or whatever, you can also have the light facing down right in front. Another major change they did for Elna and Janome is that they make the front, they shave the front down a little bit more so my vision to my needle is much more easier and clearer to see now. A nice thing I love, love about this machine is the door will open so I can get in and look at the inside. When I'm threading, if I uh, my thread breaks or something, I can see the take-up lever because a lot of times when the thread breaks, it breaks somewhere up here. And with the door being open, I can easily access my um, upper tension lever. Okay. This is a nice um, machine. The other thing is on the machine itself, you have a storage compartment right here in the front and a tray for putting your accessories. Also, there's another compartment in the back. Now, if you want to use the free arm, we simply slide this off and we have a free arm available to us. Not only that, on the bottom of the tray, we have compartments for the two extra plates that comes with the machine. So here are some notions um, that comes with the machine. There's 21 different feet, including the accurate stitch regulator feet, the holder, and the four feet that comes with the machine. The plates, I have the standard plate, which is a zigzag plate on the machine. We also have the single hole plate. As you can see, our single hole plate has three holes in it, which allows me to use the center needle position, the left or the right needle position, okay? And there's a slot right here on the tray where I can put the plate so that way, if I want to carry this to class or something like that, all my accessories are here with me. It also comes with the HP plate. HP stands for high performance. As you can see, this is a single hole in the left needle position. And this particular plate, it's made especially to be used with the high performance foot. Here it is. This is the high performance foot. It is a um, quarter inch quilting foot. You can use the left or the right side of the foot and this is a scant quarter inch. Okay. Not only do you get that, you also get the dual feet HP2 foot right here that has the middle um, thumb we call it. So it pulls your fabric both from top and bottom. So that's the other one. And you also get the dual feet twin foot right here. This foot is great for putting binding on your quilts. For those of you who put binding on by machine, uh, what happens is when you use the dual feet foot, you have these fingers right here pulling the fabric from the top and the feet dogs pulling from the bottom. So you don't end up with a uh, ruffled or a look on your binding. Now, when I take this extension table off here, the machine does come with this nice big table right here. So that way I have a nice large service to work on. Now, with this, with this table on, this machine also comes with what we call a cloth guide. The cloth guide, there's an area in the back of the table which allows me to put this guide on, pull it forward, and now I can move it to where I want it to. So if I'm going to sew something, let's say I want a two inch seam allowance. I simply put the fabric, I got two pieces here, up against the edge of the guide, hit the start stop button, and the machine starts sewing. So I have a nice edge across here. Now this machine, if I put it all the way to the highest speed,
It sews at 1,060 stitches a minute on a straight stitch. Okay, and we have a built-in scissors where it cuts, the foot comes up and down automatically. Look at that stitch. I know you can't kind of see it. It's on white on white. So I'm going to take this off. So if I'm not going to use it, I simply pull it up and this slides off. Okay, just like that. Okay, the machine in the front, I'm just going to point this out. We have a holder for a stylist. It is a touch screen. I have 450 different stitches on this machine. As you can see, there's all lots of different category. We have utility, buttonholes, applique. Look at all those applique stitches. There are 10 different applique stitches on this machine. Um, you have some cross stitch. We have some heirloom stitches for those of you who do garment sewing. Then we have a lot of quilting stitches up here. We have a total of 79 different quilting stitches. As you can see up here in the chart, it continues on down here. We have some hand look stitch right here. These two are hand look stitches. We have some what they call quilt style stitches. We have satin stitches. We have decorative stitch. Look at all those decorative stitch we have here. Aren't they beautiful? Not only that, if you can, some of these stitches, you see there's a gray box around it. That means those stitches can be mirror image both ways. By both ways, which I mean is they can all be mirror image left to right. The ones that has a gray box around them, they can be mirror image upside down. And we also have a, um, a menu right here that just shows that, that you can horizontal mirror image on these particular designs. So that's another great feature. Another thing I want to show you is this. This machine also comes with this extra large foot control. This is the foot control and this little guy, it's a what we call a foot trimmer. When you get through sewing, instead of taking your fingers and hitting the scissors on the machine, you simply step on the foot control and it will cut both of your thread for you, just like the button on the machine. I don't have it attached because I really don't need to for what I'm doing today. I can just use the start stop button on here. This particular button right here, it runs my machine. The machine also on this machine right here for those different plates, you notice I have no screws right here. So what I do have in the very front of the machine right here, there's a lever. And what I do is if I push on the lever, the plate pops up, put this back down, and I can simply change the plate out by taking the plate off like so. I'm going to reach over here. I'm going to put the HP plate on just to show you guys. And the machine, these plates have sensor. If you notice, right now, my needle's in the center needle position. When I push this down, you see how the plate automatically, the needle automatically jumps to the left. So it's kind of smart. So I don't have to worry about breaking a needle or anything because I have the straight stitch needle plate on. And the screen will actually give me a message. So check to make sure I have the proper uh, foot on the machine, okay? Because it tell me the straight stitch needle plate is set. So I need to clear the message and now I see all my straight stitch right here on the screen. And it also shows the HP foot, which it tells me what foot to use. It always gives me a suggested foot on the machine. It's not going to give me a foot that's not included. So I'm going to take this plate back off. And again, I'm simply hit the lever, remove this plate, and put the other one back in and snap it into position. And again, I get a message. I just have to hit X to clear the message out. Very simple, very user friendly. Okay. Now on the screen itself, I'm on the straight stitch. As you can note, if you notice right here on this machine, what, what they added for, I have 91 needle position. The top button, 4.5, that is my center needle position. I have 45 to the left, 45 needle position to the right. I can move the needle by hitting the plus 
and you can see it moving on the screen or minus to move it to the left or I can come down here which this with this button right here that looks like a zigzag this is normally if it's not a straight stitch it would be my stitch width but since I'm on a straight stitch I can just turn the knobs right here and you can see the stitching the stitches the needle moving like I said there's 91 needle position on this machine not only that the other button right here that is always going to be my stitch length i can have the default is 2.40 if i want a basting stitch i can just turn it to a 5.0 which gives me a basting stitch it's just that simple and easy to use okay another thing i want to point out on the screen is I have up here my bar. This, this is my utility stitch function. If I go to the next one right here, that's for my decorative stitch. Right here on top, it shows me I have three pages to see all the stitches that's on top on the lid of the machine. So if I want to look at something like the quilting stitches, I simply touch quilt and it's showing me the first 10 stitches. Now, if I want to see more of them. I have a choice. If you notice, there's nine pages up here. I can go through, touch the arrow to page through it, or I can see the stitches by simply touching this button right here. It shows me these are my quilt stitches right here. It shows me um, a couple of them down here. I go to the next page and it shows me more of my quilting stitches. If I see anything I like right here, I simply just touch the design and it automatically appears on my display window. So when I stitch it out, this is my stitch. Now, another thing I cool thing I can do up here is I can mirror image this stitch. Right here on the top, if you look at here, this is my mirror imaging key. A lot of times I tell people, this is like a hamburger. People can't remember, you know, horizontal or vertical mirrorage, but they, they recognize this button as a hamburger. So if I want to mirror this, I simply touch the icon up here, and you can see my design just mirror image. Just that simple. I can also combine these patterns, all these decorative stitches up here. I can easily combine them by touching these, this key right here it looks like a roll of hearts the one next to it is heart spades it's hearts and spades and diamonds right here and if i touch that my display window automatically goes blank that means i can now start combining my stitches now i don't have to stay in this category i can keep combining let's say i touch my stitch chart again I can just select from here. I'm still in the quilting section. I can come here, select that, or I can come up here and keep going to something different. Let's say I want to add some satin stitches and so forth. I can keep adding as much as I want to. Now, as you can see, when I'm adding, the stitches drop off the screen, but I like to see what I've added so far. So up here on the arrow, if I simply touch the arrow to the right, I have a magnifier right here. If I touch my magnifier, it shows me all the stitches that I've combined and in the order of the stitching. Like if I stitch this out, this will be the combination I'm stitching. This is my preview window. To close the, and down here, it tells me I have nine patterns selected in my combined section okay i have to clear to close this window simply touch the x i can close a window not only that i have letters available to me so i can add fonts to here if i want to to do that i simply touch the lettering function i have all these letters available to me now here in the states for most of us, we'll probably be just using the first four letters. Whoops. Sensitive screen. I have, to, I have the first four letters right here, which is block, script, Broadway. 
nine millimeter block. Um, nine millimeter block, you don't have lowercase. You have lowercase for the first three, no lowercase for the block lettering. You have Cyrillic, which most of us here in the States won't use. You have some Japanese characters right here, which, you know, unless you can speak Japanese, you probably won't be using these. And we have some symbols. So let's go to the block letter, okay? I have block selected, and you, you can see all my letters are in uppercase. So I'm gonna spell the, uh, the word you know me. So I hit J, and if I wanna go these letters to lowercase, I simply touch the A. All my letters go to lowercase. So I just tap the letters that I want to spell. And I have the word you know me, just that simple. Now, if I want to put a space between here, I can simply touch one of these four squares and it's a space. So I'm just gonna put a medium sized space here. It just be a jump stitch. So if I want to put another design at the end of the words, I can go back up here to decorative stitch again. This time I want to put some um, other stitches in here, like seasons, okay? Let's just put some something fun and simple. Let's put a flower. Oh, I accidentally hit two flowers. No problem. I have two arrows down here. I have a blue cursor right here. If I move the cursor up, I have the flower that I'm editing. This right now is in blue. I don't want that. I simply come up here, touch the trash can, and I just deleted it. Now, if I want to see the rest of them, let's say I want to delete some of these designs in the earlier. I don't want to be stitching forever. I'm sure you guys don't want to see it here and watch me. So I'm going to delete some of these designs out, okay? Now, this one here, this one doesn't show much. Now, this one, I can mirror this design both ways. How I know that is they all can be mirror image left to right. This particular design, I can mirror image it upside down because just by simply touching the icon, look, this one is being edited. When I touch this button, see how I just flip that design upside down? And I can come down here. And this one, as you can see, this icon is grayed out. So I know I cannot mirror image this one upside down, just left to right, okay? I'm not gonna stitch that one out, I just touch the trash can. These are kind of, takes a while to stitch out. So I'm just gonna leave that and say, okay, I'm ready to stitch out. So what I'm gonna do is gonna take a piece of fabric. I have some stabilizer here, and I'm gonna put the correct foot on here. To change the foot out is simply push, the, the foot drops. I'm gonna put my decorative stitch foot on, which the machine suggested I use the F foot. And you can see back here, I know it's hard to see. Maybe you can see it here. On the back of the foot, I know it's hard to see. All our foot have a letter to it. It says F right here. So that's the foot you'll be using, like if the standard foot, you can probably see it better. Right here, it says A foot. So the machine always tells you what foot to use. So I'm gonna simply put this foot on and I find the easiest way to do it is either dropping the onto the, the foot onto the ankle, like that, and I'm ready to sew the design out. So I'm gonna use this side there, hit start. Now these are nine millimeter stitches. And I'm starting to do the letters. And I, when I come to the end, after I stitch the flower, I want it to stop. If I don't, then it's gonna continue stitching. So what happens is when it, the screen goes to the flower, I'm gonna hit my tie off key. And what that does tells the machine is to stitch the flower and then do a tie off so I don't continue on. So they just did the tie off, I'm gonna use my scissors and cut it. And that's my design right here. And then that nice, that is how you do a simple decorative stitch. 
Now, another thing we have in here is fun to do is we have what's called the perfect cornering feature on this machine. I touched the t-shirt. This is sewing application. It just tells me the pattern combination will be deleted. Okay, I don't need it anymore. In sewing application, by default, it starts with regular sewing. But what I want to do is I want to do quilting. So I'm come down here to quilting, select applique, and I'm going to select applique two. This is a blanket stitch, a real tiny little blanket stitch. It's telling me to use the F foot. My stitch width is 2.0. My stitch length is 1.0, which is fine. On here, on my sample, I have drawn a square. So let's pretend this is an applique. So I can show you guys a perfect cornering feature. What I do up here is I'm going to highlight the cornering. There's a corner right here. And I also have, I'll activate my foot up feature, which is this, which means every time I stop sewing, the foot's going to come up automatically. The needle's going to stay down. Some people call this the hovering feature, but we call it, but the actual name for it is the foot up feature, meaning every time I stop, the foot will come up. On the screen, it's telling me to use the F foot. So I'm going to slow the machine down some. So I'm not using a foot control. I'm going to hit the start button. And as you can see, I'm stitching on the drawn line. And let's pretend that it's there. I overshot it a little bit. So I'm going to come up to the screen. I'm going to hit the start over key right here to let the machine know I've come to a corner. Okay. I hit start again. Now, another thing I can do is when I come to the corner, if I hold down on the start stop button, as you can see, the stitch is very slow. So the minute I let go, it stops. The foot is up. I can pivot, hit the start over key again, and hit start. And again, I'm stitching right on the applique. When I get close to the edge, I'm going to hold down. I'm not counting the stitches because I'm talking to you. When I get to the bottom of the corner, I'm going to stop. Okay, foot comes up, needle is down. Hit the start over. And I'm going to do the last corner. I'm going to come back to the last corner. I'm going to stop and cut it. And I'll show you guys. Look at that. I know I stitched past the line, but isn't that great? Perfect corner every time. This little funny thing here happened. But as you can see, I don't get that strange stitch that sticks out in the middle of nowhere when I'm doing the corner applique feature. And this is something that's in a um, lot of our uh, electronic machine from Elna and Genome. Is there any questions anybody have? I know my time's about up, so we can bring Blaine back on. Blaine, are you there? Hi, Sam. Hi, Blaine. Hi. Hey, Sam, I wanted to ask you, what machine equivalent uh, is this one to the Janome line? The 9480. 9480. Okay. Yes. So I, I knew, you know, there's always an equivalent. So I wanted to tell all the Janome fans out there, you know, this is a one that's the equivalent of that machine that they can buy online and we can ship nationwide is the Elena version. And uh, man, those are, machines are such good machines. And, you know, uh, Two, they're very, you know, people a lot of times are intimidated with the technology, but I tell you, they're actually very intuitive, aren't they? Yes, they are. And uh, so great job, Sam. Really like the demonstration. I think you really explained the features well. So I'm going to tell them how they can get it, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, everyone. Again, a great job by Sam. And this is the Elena 782 sewing and quilting machine. Now, the price on it is $6,999. Uh, we do have a call-in special on it. So if you want to get that Quilt Fest pricing, you have to call us right now at 800-401-8151. We're going to ship this free nationwide 
what's that, Kyle? Oh, Kyle told me we just sold the last one, just sold out. Uh, but so they, they're switching the website right now to pre-order. So uh, we have these on order to come in. We had more of them coming. So we just sold the last one. So if you want to get one of these, go ahead and get it pre-ordered right now. And as soon as that comes in, we'll get it shipped right to your doorstep. So again, great, great machine. And that's evident right there. Just sold out of them. So uh, make sure y'all, if you want to go check it out, you can go to smplive.tv. Uh, when you see that day three, just scroll over on the bar till you see this machine and you can click on it, takes you to the product page, or you can just go right into uh, sewingmachinesplus.com in the search bar at the top of the page. Just put Elena 782. It'll take you right to the product page and you can check it out right there. Again, 800-401-8151 is the number you want to call. All right, we're going to move on and uh, y'all have a treat coming up next. We have, we're going to go to Handy Quilter and uh, we're going to talk all about that Moxie 15. And uh, we have Christina Whitney and Kim Sandberg coming up. As y'all may know them as the Foxy Moxie Dancers. Somebody gave them that name a, a few years ago. But Christina was selected to be a member of the Handy Quilter Quilt Your Desire Inspiration Squad in 2017 and has been featured in magazine show programs. And she's actually on the Handy Quilter truck that travels around the nation and goes to dealers. Uh, Christina is also a member of many local quilt guilds and enjoys continually learning and improving her skills. Now, Kim helped on the development team for the PS Designer and PS Catalog and enjoys designing, editing, and teaching all about the great software for quilters. Kim loves the process of choosing her creating designs to complement and highlighting her piecing. And both of them, if you ever go to the Handy Quilter headquarters in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, you will see them at the Educational Center there. So y'all both welcome to the show, Kim and Christina. Thank you. Hey, Blaine. How are y'all doing today? We're doing good. We're doing good. good Excited to you. Welcome to the open. show. Thank y'all for being here. And I know you're getting ready to talk about that uh, Moxie 15. And, you know, the, everybody loves this machine. So I'm going to let y'all take off with it. And we'll be back in about 30 minutes and tell them how to get it. Okay. Sounds good. That Thanks. Sounds great. Thanks, Blaine. So okay. Moxie 15, Christina. Yes. So 15. It's yep. a 15 inch throat. Yep. So this is our entry level machine. It's the smallest one, um, but it is a great machine to it get is. into long arm quilting with. So it's a lot of fun. Um, it's like I said, the 15 inch throat space. It's got some different lighting, all sorts of fun features. But let's talk about what does the machine come with? It comes with a lot of really great things. Um, the first thing is the frame is always included with handy quilter machines. So let's talk about the, there's actually two different frame options with the Moxie. So the first one is the, <clears throat> excuse me. The first one is the frame that we are standing in front of right now. It's called the loft frame and it comes uh, standard at eight feet, which is great. You can do up to a queen size quilt on that. Um, you do have the option if you want to, you can actually add a two foot extension and go to that 10 feet. So you can do king size quilts on this, yeah. which is which is really great to have that option, yeah. isn't it? So with that frame size, you take a foot off. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 10 foot frame, you can quilt up to nine feet side to side. Exactly. As many feet long as you want. Yeah. So in other words, you can use that like 104 inch or 108 inch wide back. It absolutely will fit on that 10 foot mm -hmm. frame. Which is, which is fantastic. I know I love using wide backs. Yep. Uh, the other option is called the little foot frame and it's a smaller profile. It's um, only five feet and it's a hooping system. And what's really cool about it is you can quilt any size quilt on that frame because it is a hooping system. Yep. So it's just really nice to have those options, isn't it? Yeah, and also with that little foot frame, you can also add what's called the little buddy, mm -hmm. which converts it into a rolling system similar to this frame yep. here. Um, up to four feet wide. Exactly. So if you're doing like small baby quilts and stuff, you can still use that rolling system rather than the hooping system. Exactly. So exactly. lots of options out there. And those come with the machine. 
Exactly. So. They're, they're included. Uh, the, another really fun thing that comes with the Moxie, and we always love to show this, is the Moxie accessory box. So this is all the fun accessories that come with the Moxie. They are included. We've got a lot of great things here. So let's take a look. We like to call this a quilt party in a box, don't we, Christina? <laughs> yep. So when we open this up, it's uh, first of all, it's got lots of great information. We've got a quick reference card, which has got all the information about how to thread your machine. Uh, needle and thread guides. And then it's got a guide on the back that shows you how to navigate the screen because you use the buttons on the handlebars to switch stitch modes, uh, change that lighting that Christina talked about, all those good things. Um, then really fun, we wanted to add a little extra fun. We have these awesome stickers, decals, that come with the Moxie. So you can add these. Um, there's even these ones that come here that uh, uh, you put on your your poles so that you know which direction to turn them so that you load your quilts properly. They're really nice. Um, we open this up and look at a few other things in here. There is a thread pack from Superior Threads that is a bunch of try me. There's usually, there's usually five different thread options plus a pre-wound bobbin in here. And then what is really fun is we have our getting to start, getting started quilt, um, the how to quilt kit. And it was really fun because we actually got to be in on helping to develop this, didn't we, Christina? Mm -hmm. So it comes with a yard of fabric, this nice, awesome grid that we have here, um, which allows you to have kind of something to uh, give you guidelines to quilt on without, you know, having to piece anything. You can just load this and get quilting. Yeah, I know for a lot of beginners, when they're starting out, they mm -hmm. are kind of intimidated. And even if you put like a piece of solid fabric on, it's kind of hard to decide oh, where am I going to quilt. So exactly. this grid fabric is really, really good because it gives you some boundaries. Exactly. So you can say, okay, I'm going to focus on this one square. Mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on this. And it breaks it down and makes it a little bit more manageable. Exactly. So. And you get a yard of this, which is fantastic. So to get started quilting, all you need to do is grab the, once you get everything set up, grab the box of pins that come with and you can load some backing. You'll need your own yard of fabric for backing and some batting, but you know, we're all quilters. We, <laughs> we got that covered. Then you can load this fabric for the quilt top. And then we've got this, uh, now it's time to quilt. And we actually show you whenever we teach long arm quilting, these are some of the very first designs that we teach people. So we, we walk through, we've got five different designs selected. The last one being Christina's absolute favorite, continuous curve. If we're really lucky, she might even <laughs> show us some of this today. Um, but it gets you, it gets you started. Um, the other thing that is really fantastic and, and we've got, uh, it shows links on these different items here, um, is to go to our Handy Quilter YouTube channel. And we have so much education. Uh, Christina and I put out a new video every week with great ideas. Yep. And it doesn't matter which machine we're quilting on, you can always do any of the techniques that we teach on any of our Handy Quilter long arm machines. And going along with that, there's also a getting started video for mm -hmm. this specific Moxie machine. There's also a getting started for the Moxie XL. Mm -hmm. And it goes over and shows you how to load your fabric, how to turn it on, all of those basic things that you're going to need to know how to do. So those are great resources. Yep. Uh, one other thing that was really fun that we did when we uh, created the Moxie and with the loft frame was we partnered with an app called Built. And you can actually follow the instructions on how to completely set up your Moxie uh, using that Built app. And it's really easy. It really is easy to use. And it's great because it's 3D, it's, inter it's interactive, mm -hmm. um, it talks to you, which I love. <laughs> So you're not having to try to read instructions. You can just follow the pictures and then let the lovely um, AI voice on there tell you how to do all of the um, building the frame, constructing the frame, doing all of that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, that's that's another fun thing that we have. Now, uh, the Moxie, let's just talk for a second about some of the fun features and then we'll get into, you know, we're known for education. We've got a little something fun. We've got a project here we're working on. So uh, the Moxie um, stitches up to 1800 stitches per minute in stitch regulation. And we do have the two modes of stitch regulation that Handy Quilter is known for, precision, precision and cruise. Yep. And as well as manual. As well as manual. So Sorry. you've got three yep. options. Just remember when it's in manual, you're the stitch regulator. Yep. 
Uh, you can absolutely use any of the handy feet that we carry. So there's lots of fun options, isn't there? Yeah, As we're going to play with those today. We are, and we're going to show you how to do that. But one of the, one of the things I think is the most fun to do with um, long arming is quilting with rulers. So we're going to show you guys uh, how to do that today. We've got a ruler base here. This is really important. You have to have a ruler base when you are going to use rulers because you wanna have that nice solid platform to hold those rulers against. So Christine is gonna go ahead and pop this on the machine. This is an accessory that you can add to the Moxie 15. And Christine is just popping that right on there. There's little um, knobs that you install on the side that come with the ruler base when you purchase it for the Moxie, they just screw right in. And then she's just gonna slide that right over onto here. And you can see that gives her a nice uh, platform to be able to securely hold that ruler so it's not gonna wiggle or wobble and we stay safe while we're stitching. Now, let's uh, let's show them how easy it is to change the feet on these yeah. machines. Okay, so right now I've got the closed toed foot, which mm -hmm. is the foot that comes with the machine. And I'm gonna change that out because when I do ruler work, I want to have my sure foot. And if you can see the difference between those two yeah. feet, it might be kind of hard to see, but this sure foot here has a much higher profile so that the rulers don't have any problems jumping over it. So I'm just gonna take off this other foot yep. and I'm going left-handed and trying my best not to block the camera, but I'm sure <laughs> I am. There. No, you're, you're doing so. okay. So this is, as Christina mentioned, this is the closed toe foot and the Moxie comes standard with two different feet. It comes with a closed toe foot and an open toe foot. So right off the bat, you've got two different options depending on the type of quilting you wanna do uh, that come with, come with the Moxie. Yeah, what other feet can we add to this machine? Oh, we can add any of the handy feet. So we've got the couching feet, we've got the glide foot, we have the micro foot, we have the um, echo and square. the echo and square feet, and felting foot. The felting foot you can use on this one. Yep, I'm trying to think. Is that? Yeah, that's. I think that's. I think we got it covered. Yeah, there should be six so. extra plus the felting foot. Yep. Yep. I didn't count. <laughs> We got them all. We got them all. But it's great because it just gives you a lot of different options of uh, different techniques of quilting you could do. So, Christina, let's talk about this project that we've got loaded right now. Okay. Um, why don't you tell everybody why we're why we're doing a baby quilt? <laughs> well, I just got permission this week. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have been in big trouble. Well, I knew. I remember you mentioned earlier this week that Kim's we pregnant. Can be, we can, no, 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 no. no. My oldest daughter is going to have my first grandbaby. So I am working on a grandbaby quilt. Exactly. So I'm super excited. Um, but yeah, so I threw this one together and thought, oh, I'm going to do some fun stuff with it. And I have these like Dresden plate blocks, whatever yes. you want to call them. And Applicase. I I don't do applique. I'm going to be honest. I'm like the really lazy person when it comes to applique. So what I did is I just slapped that down. Mm -hmm. I marked the center of my block and lined it up mm -hmm. and I just slapped it on there and I just did a basting stitch to hold it in place. And did you use the long arm to do that basting stitch? I did. Awesome. Yeah. So I loaded everything like the instructions that we normally mm -hmm. do and I did a stitch in the ditch around each one of these blocks and nice. you'll notice I've got two separate blocks here mm -hmm. so some of them are bigger like this one okay. some of them are smaller like this one um, but I just did the stitch in the ditch and that's as far as I got okay. um, and then put the basted the plates onto there nice so now what I'm wanting to do is actually stitch them down so that they're going to stay in place okay permanently nice Okay, so if we look over at this one over here, you can see I've already stitched this one down and I just stitched in between each one of these sections. And then to cover my raw edge, I did some couching over that. Very nice. And couching means that you're stitching down the yarn mm -hmm. while, you're, while you're stitching yeah. in the couching. But we'll actually show you guys just a little plug for this afternoon. We'll be back yeah. this afternoon. We're, we're, we'll do some couching this afternoon. Yep, so if you're intrigued plan. by that, come back this afternoon. Yep. But for this section, we're gonna focus more on the rulers mm -hmm. and um, some different tips for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the machine over into position here. Okay. Okay. Now these are hopping feet, so you can lift it up if the foot gets stuck on the fabric, but I'm just gonna bring it into position and bring up my bobbin thread. We always wanna do that so we don't end up with a little nest on the back when we start quilting with the long arm. Okay. 
I think my bobbin's really short. There it is. So earlier today I was stitching and I could not get my bobbin thread to come up. Did you know that you have to have the top thread through the needle <laughs> for it to pull up the bobbin thread? Christina, that is a fantastic <laughs> pro tip there. Don't forget to thread your needle <laughs> if you want to stitch with any <laughs> sewing machine. Let's just throw that out yeah, there. Any it, sewing it helps. machine. Be sure and do that. Yeah, we have those moments. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch down through this stitch in, or through the um, ditch here. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to kind of stitch along here. Okay. Catch this next one, stitch along. And I'm just going to go along and get grab all of those. Okay. So I'm going to put the ruler up against the foot here. Mm -hmm. It's a quarter of an inch from where my needle is. So I'm going to put the edge of this one a quarter of an inch from my stitch line where I need to be stitching. Okay. And I'm going to start stitching down. Very nice. When I get to the end here, I'm going to go ahead and pause. And I like to always stop with my needle in the down position. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice thing about this machine is that I can change the setting. So either when I stop, it stops down or it stops up. Nice. So that's, very, very that's nice. a fun little setting on this machine. Okay, now to go around this curve, I'm gonna use a different ruler. Okay. Oh, let me just mention first, that first ruler that I was using is the Handy Quilter Skinny. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm changing over to the Baby Grand. Okay. And this one's kind of fun because it's got all these different curves. Now, this curve is similar to this but not perfect. So okay. I'm just kind of using this as a guideline. Okay. And I'm gonna just stitch along the edge here and I can adjust the ruler just a little bit as I need to. Okay. Very nice. And now I've traveled over, that is stitched down and I'm gonna stitch this next line. I like, I like what you got rolling here. You know, I love that you're quilting and stitching down your applique all in one step. Super efficient. Yes. Because like I mentioned earlier, I am a little bit lazy and I don't want to go <laughs> through the, the hassle of applicating uh -huh, everything just uh -huh. to bring it over to the long arm and stitch it again. Exactly. Now, one benefit of using this ruler is that it's holding the fabric in position at the same time that mm -hmm. I'm stitching. So that's a nice feature. I like that. Kind of stabilize everything for you, right? Yep, yep. It's also a little bit easier to do this on the long arm because um, it's flat. Yeah. I'm not trying to bunch anything through the throat of my domestic machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, which one do I need? I'm gonna go up. Okay. So, gotta figure out your stitch pass so you don't yes. have any over stitching, right? Well, you're gonna notice that I'm missing some sections. You are. And that is totally fine. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. Okay, so I've got all of my straight lines done. Okay. Um, I've got about half of my petals mm -hmm. stitched down. Actually, mm -hmm. I've only got three of them. Um, but that is okay because I'm gonna go back and do the couching. Oh, right. And so okay. as so I'm couching, mm -hmm. that's gonna stitch down all of the rest of those outside petals okay. at the same time. So I'm not overly concerned about getting those all stitched right now. That nice. was just kind of my travel path. So really the, the goal of what you just did was all that stitch in the ditch, which really mm -hmm. locks that applique in place. Yep. It's not gonna go anywhere. And now you can move on to the next thing. So mm -hmm. so what's the next step? What what part of the quilting process do you wanna do next? Well, let's just pull out some basting. Okay. No, that's that's not part of the quilting. <laughs> it, it actually, you know, it is. It that is. is a step, but yeah. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But I, I would pull out my basting stitches. Okay. And if you didn't want to stitch it down, do the basting stitches, mm -hmm. you could also just use like your spray basting mm -hmm. and um, just spray, spray basting. it on and then go back and stitch it. So you, there's options there. Lots okay. of options. Or like a fusible mm -hmm. interfacing, you could just fuse it on there and then go back and stitch. So I like that. I've, I've tried them all. They're all fun. Yeah. Depends on what I have on hand and exactly how lazy I am being at that particular moment. I was going to say whether the iron's already hot or not, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So um, I talked about the rulers uh -huh. and using the ruler foot. 
but we talked about maybe using some other feet. Yes. Do you think I could get you to grab the micro foot yes. for me? Yes, let's grab that. I think. And I'm gonna start changing I'm this foot. I'm pretty sure I've got one here. Let me see. Yep, okay, I just found one. We have, we have our magic box here that has all of the different feet in it. Perfect. Now this micro foot, oh my gosh, I love people. There's foot. always like shock here. People are like, wait, where's the rest of the foot? <laughs> Can we see that very well? Yeah, I yeah, we can see that. Fabric. So there's just enough there that it creates contact between the bottom of the foot and the quilt while you are stitching to hold things in place so that you get the proper stitch formation. But what it does is it gives you an absolute clear view of that needle. And this allows you to play, to be able to place those stitches exactly where you want them, right, Christina? Exactly, yep. I love this visibility. Now it's called the micro foot, um, but you don't have to use it just for micro quilting. You mm -hmm. can use it for anything that you want to, um, that you need visibility, except you don't want to use rulers. Nope. And you want to be really careful that there aren't any open seams or really right. big seams that it's going to catch on. Right. Okay. So um, right now I've got my cruise set at a pretty low speed. Okay. Because of the ruler work, I don't want that needle cycling a whole lot. Right. So I'm going to change that. Okay. So that my speed is a little bit higher. Okay. So you're going in and we use the handlebars. Yeah, we're using these fun handlebars. To do the adjustments uh, on the Moxie. It doesn't have a touch screen. It's got yeah. a nice a nice screen that it's, it's easy to see what's going on. <laughs> Christina's there <laughs> hiding, behind the, <laughs> hiding behind the machine. But she used yeah. the buttons on the handlebar to navigate. And it's, yeah. it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just um, some background fill around okay. the Dresden. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a stipple. Okay. And I'm going to actually be able to see what I'm doing. Yes, you are. Now, I do want to say that I don't have my lighting on mm -hmm. because of filming, but normally I would have some pretty fun lights so that I could see better. Yeah. I'm actually quite impressed you haven't asked for your glasses yet. <laughs> I'd be pressed in mine out at this point. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like too bad. White on white. Oh. Actually, sometimes when I quilt white on white, I actually turn some of my lights off so mm -hmm. that I can see better. Sometimes that shadow helps a little bit more. Yeah. Helps you see what you're doing. Oh, it looks great. That stitching looks really great. And who doesn't love a classic stipple? I mean, yeah. Stipple's great. I'd say that this fabric color and the mm -hmm. blocks fairly traditional-ish. Mm -hmm. Well, and on this block, I would say that you absolutely want that applique to be your focal point. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much about the quilting. It's more about that applique block. And when you put that couching on it, it really will highlight it and make it pop. Exactly. Oh, so okay, I'm in my little quilting bubble, so you if I zone. need to stop, you're gonna have to tell me to stop. You just keep going. I want to get this. I want to get this block done. I want everyone to see oh, that how, went a little crazy how great this background stitching looks here. And you can do any kind of design in these backgrounds. Yep. So right now I am just doing in a free motion. Mm -hmm. You also have the option of adding a pro stitcher light if you mm -hmm. want to do computerized stitching. But the best thing about that is that you can easily change back and forth between the computerized as well as the free motion. So I really like that. Exactly. It's just the touch of a button on your screen. I know I was, uh, I was talking with a friend who um, owns a different, uh, a different quilting system and she was talking about how she has to go and flip the switch on the frame and do all this stuff to go back and forth from free motion to uh, quilting with her uh, automated system, her, um, her robotic system. And on ours, it's just, it's just a button you hit on the screen, which is really great. So yeah, Pro Stitcher Lite, a really great accessory to add to your Moxie 15. Well, Christina, yeah. that looks fantastic. How easy, how easy was that? And I love, I love that you're like in the zone. Quilt. <laughs> yeah, I can't, um, I can't talk and quilt at the same time. <laughs> 
I just tune everything out. It's no. it's too hard to do. Yeah. So uh, maybe let's take a second and talk about some of the other designs that you're thinking of quilting in this quilt. So you're doing this cute stipple mm -hmm. in the background and you're planning on adding this, um, uh, the couching yes. to the edge of these ones. What are you planning on doing then in the rest of the blocks here? I am thinking, since you already led into it earlier <laughs> in the presentation, um, I'm thinking about doing a basic continuous curve. Nice. So with a continuous curve, what it is, is I'm going to just take my finger here and draw it. I'm um, doing an arc and an arc and another arc and an arc. But this design is really nice because I can change up the pathway mm -hmm. so that I can do it continuously. Like I could go all the way across the top and come down and grab this section and do pretty much as much as I can in that throat space without mm -hmm. breaking my thread. So it's a, I, I think that's the direction I'm going to go. Awesome. Awesome. So. It's a really, uh, it's a really versatile design yeah. and I love using it on uh, all different kinds of quilting projects that I do. Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the moxie we need to, we need to fill everybody in on. We talked about the stitches per inch, um, the, with the, stitch regulation. We talked about the great lighting. We talked about being able to change the feet easily. Yeah. Accessories you can add to it. You know what? There's one other thing I just thought of that we didn't mention. Something that you can add to the Moxie 15 is what we call our quilt from the back kit. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in quilting with pantographs or groovy boards, we absolutely have the capability to be able to do that too. What you do is you add a set of the handlebars to the back and then uh, there's a little laser system and Christine is gonna style that for <laughs> us right there. <laughs> Don't we make a great team? <laughs> but uh, pantographs are another really great way to finish quilts, especially if you like to do those uh, edge to edge designs. Uh, pantographs are a lot of fun. They, they really are. They are. Fun. Yeah. So. And they're fun for like, if you have kids or grandkids mm -hmm. that wanna mm -hmm. play around, let them, quilt a quilt. I mean, they're, it's pretty much follow the line. Yep. Um, so those are great options. Um, I do know that when we talked about the frame, I don't think we mentioned that it does come with a set of leaders for the full length. Yes. Um, you'll notice I'm, maybe you didn't notice, but I've got some different leaders on it right now and they're this all Velcroed. Mm -hmm. So you can take them off, um, change out different leaders. Don't wash them. Okay. Yeah. But um, like for this project, I can take it off and take it to a different machine and back and forth to my house and stuff like that. But the frame itself will come with a full set of leaders for yep. you. Everything you need to get start quilting um, is included, except for the backing and the batting for yeah. that, that first project that you do. So I think, I think we've pretty much covered it. Um, so Blaine, do you want to tell everybody how they can take advantage of, I'm sure, a special <laughs> offer you guys have on this machine? We do. Thank y'all so much. Great job as usual. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see, are y'all later on in the week as well? We'll be, we'll so, be back this afternoon. Yeah. This afternoon. Okay. Well, we'll see you this afternoon then. Thank y'all so much. Thanks. All right. So everybody, we're going to tell you how you can get this. Now, this is the Moxie 15. Now, I remember when we, we launched this machine, this was such a great hit with everybody. Again, it's that 15 inch long arm. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give you your choice of frames. Now, we have a five-foot, little-foot frame that you can put it on, or you can choose that loft foot, uh, loft frame for uh, either eight-foot or ten-foot with it. And so we're going to give you your frame cho of choice for $44.95 is the Quilt Fest pricing. However, we do have a call-in special on this. So if you want to get that Quilt Fest bottom price, you got to call us at 800-401-8151. Again, uh, this thing is loaded up. We do have some special financing available for you if you need it. But again, front handlebars with full color display. It's got that user-friendly icon-based display. One of the things that, it, you know, it has that built app that you can do that tells you how to build the frame and put it together uh, that Kim and Christina talked about. Uh, it's 1,800 stitches per minute. It has that LED light ring. A uh, handy feet mount with a quarter inch ruler foot installed, open toe foot included. It has that two modes of HQ stitch regulation, that precision and the cruise. And that's how uh, Kim and Christina became the Foxy Moxie dancers because if y'all remember, yeah. they were showing that uh, precision and cruise and uh, it, it was pretty cool. So that's the SMP Nation named them. Uh, it has the manual thread tension control uh, constant stitch quality from four to 18 stitches per inch. 
needle stop positioning control, easy software updates, high speed rotary hook with large capacity M class bobbins on that, has that integrated USB port, five bobbins, 20 needles and thread samples come with it. And it has the, the support from us and uh, Handy Quilter as well. It has a 10 year warranty on the casting, five years on the electrical and mechanical. And guys, this thing was designed, engineered, and assembled in the good old USA. So, uh, and there's all kinds of video support as well on YouTube if you need some support on this. So I'd highly recommend this machine if you're trying to get into something in a smaller platform. Great, great machine. All right, so we're going to continue on. Let's bring my co-host back in, Jane Klaus. Well, hello, Blaine. That was fun. It was. I know. Hey, it. So I think we ought to give something away real quick, Jane, before we go to the next session. Ooh, I think that's a brilliant idea, Blaine. All right. So what are we going to uh, give away? Kennedy, what's in that grab bag over there? Let's do the Acupulco cutting machine. Looky there. Amazing. $149.99 price point on this. So Kennedy, mm -hmm. spin that wheel. All right. Here we go. We're going to find us a winner out there amongst the SMP nation. I love it. When you, I just saw your wife's name going. I did too. I saw Michelle. <laughs> All right. Jill is so sweet. <laughs> Watching today on Facebook. Sweet. And Jill, you just won yourself that Aki quilt. And uh, that is awesome. So, what we need you to do, Jill, is what, Jane? Well, Jill, what you need to do is go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. Scroll to the bottom. You'll see it there. Tell us your name, your address, where we're sending it, all that good information. Tell us what you won, and we will get that out to you ASAP. And remember, you have 30 days to claim your prize, but I think because you're right here hanging with us on Facebook, you're going to redeem that right now. I think she will. I think so, too. I'd want to get right. my prize. All right. Well, hey, Jane. I'm going to let you take it away because I know great. you've got a couple of great presentations I coming do. up. And I'll see y'all back here in about an hour. Thank you so much, Blaine. All right, everybody, let's keep this party rolling on and the creative juice is flowing. You are going to be so impressed by our next presenter from our friends at RNK and Quilters Select. It is Nicole Gilbert. Now, Nicole has been with us the last two days. We're excited that she's back here with us again today. Let me tell you a little bit about Nicole. Over the last 10 years, She's led quilt alongs and she's taught countless classes, demonstrated sewing machines and quilted an insane number of quilts. Her first love is sharing her passion for quilting with new sewers. And she says there's no better feeling than watching that aha moment happen. So put your hands together. Say hi to Nicole Gilbert. Hi. Hey, Nicole. Hey, how are you today? I am good. How are you doing today, Jane? Um, it is. I'm doing great. I'm super excited that you're back with us again today. I love your presentations. I love your passion. I love the inflection in your voice. Like, I just feel like I'm hanging out with my bestie. So today we're going to talk about um, the perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Is that right? Yes. And I think everyone's going to be pretty surprised in hearing that most of it comes before you ever get to your sewing machine. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Nicole, inspire us, teach us, lead us, <laughs> tell us everything you got. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jane. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Uh, I know that Jane and Blaine have had some fabulous uh, offers for you throughout the day, and I am blessed to be here. So I am Nicole Gilbert, like Jane said, and I am here with RNK Distributing, which is the parent company of classic brands like Floriani Embroidery and Quilters Select. So let's chat about getting that perfect quarter inch seam allowance. I know whether you are a seasoned quilter or you are a newbie, you have been chasing that perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Now that is what is going to get us those beautiful blocks that we don't have any disappearing points and our half square triangles line up beautifully. All of that comes from the perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Now, many of us think that that happens at the sewing machine and we've bought tapes and clips and guides and all of those things. And many of you are probably still wondering, why the heck is my quarter inch seam allowance still off? 
It is because the perfect quarter inch seam allowance happens during cutting. It happens during piecing. It happens during pressing. Yep, all three of those things are going to affect your perfect quarter inch. So let's get down to how we're going to achieve that. Now, I will say it starts with proper cutting, okay? You cannot use your tapes, your guides, any of those things if you have not cut a nice, clean piece out of your fabric, okay? So here's what I'm using to get my you know, perfect, what I refer to as the cutting stage gets you the baseline. That's what's going to get you where you're starting. Okay. I love to use a really good non-slip ruler. Now, I don't know if you just noticed that. Do you see how shiny this side is? And now see how matte this side is. And that's because this ruler, the Coulter Select non-slip ruler is covered completely with non slip coating, not dots, not lines, complete coverage of non-slip coating. It is a game changer. Why is that such a big deal? I know when we're cutting, I don't know about you, but I'll start down here and I'm doing the inch as my rotary cutter is moving up along my ruler's edge, right? You're doing that inch. And sometimes when your ruler is not a non-slip ruler, it starts doing a little wiggle dance on you as you're pressing with that rotary cutter and your hand is moving. Every time you wiggle, you are changing the line that you are cutting. So you'll slightly get some little waves and, and whatnots. Yeah, that's true. Now with the non-slip, this thing ain't going anywhere. The fabric is staying with the ruler, okay? So that is number one. Let's start with the quality non-slip ruler. Number two, the go-to size of ruler, and I'm sure many of you have this guy, and if it's not a Coulter Select, you should really think about it, uh, but many of you have this six and a half by 24 inch ruler in your studio right now because it's the go-to. You can do just about everything with this ruler. This is like a must-have ruler. However, all other rulers are nice to have, right? We love, we love all that. I say second to my six and a half by 24 is going to be my five and a half or six and a half inch square rulers. I make all of my major cuts out of here, but then all of my sub cuts out of here. So here's why. Have you been watching me toss this thing around while we were talking? It's big, it's a little unwieldy, it gets in the way. Wonderful for large cuts, because you need it. But as soon as I've got my larger cuts cut down, I'm moving to this guy. Because I can move it, I can shift it around very, very easily, okay? And now I'm not worried about picking it up and moving it and nicking the side of my fabric. And now my fabric has slightly moved over the guideline I had perfectly counted out on my mat. And then I have to reposition using something that's a little bit easier to move around is going to keep us from fidgeting. And that's going to keep us with a nice straight cut. I also love using a handle on my rulers, okay? This is the Coulter Select ruler handle. Um, you know, it's only a couple bucks, it's great. But what you do is you pick up and you move your rulers and you pick up and you move your rulers and it makes your, do you see how it's like part of my hand now? It makes the transitional cuts and the sub cuts so much easier to do and we don't wiggle our fabric. Non-slip. Good hold, easily moved. That's it. That's how great it is. I cannot tell you enough about these rulers. They're fantastic. But regardless, you need to use rulers that are going to make your job and your life easier. So that's the starting piece of the cutting. Next is our rotary cutters. Now, we're there's two points to this. One, I'm not sure about you guys, but I find that cutting is my least 
favorite part of the process, of the quilt process. I know it's a huge part. We got to get over that. That being said, rotary cutters will make a huge difference. This is happens to be the Quilter Select rotary cutter. If you felt this thing in your hand, you would be like, holy cow, because it's heavy. It is a heavy ruler, a uh, rotary cutter. That being said, it's doing the work for you. For those of you who get fatigue in your fingers, fatigue in your wrists, fatigue in your thumb, especially this little joint right here in your first finger, because you are pushing down on your rotary cutter, okay? The weight of this is doing the work for you. At first, when I heard, I was like, oh, it's going to help with fatigue. Isn't it going to be worse because it's heavy? No. The weight of the rotary cutter is doing the work for you. You no longer have to push down. It glides like butter. Speaking of cutting like butter, your blades, your rotary cutter blade should be sharp. As soon as you start skipping, you need to change your rotary blade. As soon as you feel like you're pushing down, you're feeling some friction, you need to change your rotary blade. It's really super simple. I know that we have heard from the ladies at Handy Quilter all week about changing those needles out and making sure we have a sharp needle. The same goes for this rotary cutter, okay? You want to have a fresh, sharp blade. If you don't have a fresh, sharp blade, you tend to start to eat while the fabric, while you're cutting through, that is going to affect the edge. And getting that nice, sharp, straight, non-eaten up edge is incredibly important for mastering your perfect quarter inch seam allowance. You cannot use a guide, you cannot use a tape if your cuts are not straight to begin with. And that's where the rulers, the rotary cutter, the handles come into play. Okay, so that is our cutting portion. All right, now let's talk about the machine. Okay, we can't ignore it. We cannot ignore being at the machine. It is a huge portion of it. When we are doing um, a lot of piecing, you will often hear, use a scant quarter of an inch. Do you know how big of a scant, a scant quarter inch is? I, I mean, if you do, please drop it in the comments because I want to hear your answers because I know a scant quarter inch is just slightly smaller than a quarter of an inch, right? But is that an actual measurable amount? Is that a number? Is that something that you can find on your ruler? No. What's scant to me might not be scant to you. And then you're ending up with a lot of different measurements. And if we have different measurements, then we're not being consistent with our quarter inch seam allowance. So one of the ways that I like to achieve what I would call the scant quarter inch or that perfect inch, it, quarter inch is by using this thread. Now this thread is 60 and 80 weight thread. I know, all right. You are typically going to find 50 weight thread uh, for your piecing. I keep on glancing over here because this is my sewing machine. She's my best friend. And I look at her and I'm like, tell me more. Um, but 60 and 80 weight thread. We're typically using 50 weight in our needle and 50 weight in our bobbin. I challenge you to try this quilter select quilting thread. And I like to use 60 weight. And we know it's 60 weight because it's got this nice green line across 60 weight thread in the needle and 80 weight, and we know it's 80 weight because it's got this orange line on it, 80 weight in the bobbin, okay? This is going to give you a thinner thread line in your uh, seam allowance, which means you can do a full quarter of an inch because our thread is using less space in the seam allowance. So you're going to stay with that bang on quarter inch by changing your thread. Did you really, I'm, I think this is one of those moments. I know we talked, Jane mentioned how much I love seeing aha moments. This was one of my aha moments because I was constantly looking at, you know, the lines on the bed of my machine and the laser that my machine puts out because shout out to Blaine. He sells the best sewing machines. Um, I've got this beautiful 
baby lock that's got this gorgeous laser beam on it, which I absolutely adore. But I was still like, do I line up on the in just inside so I can get that scant? Now I can bang on, line up with the lines on the bed of my machine, the line that my laser is producing, and I don't have to worry about it because my thread is taking up less space in my seam allowance. So again, just so for those of you, I like to use 60 weight, which when you're buying the Coulter Select 60 weight thread, it's got this nice green line on it. 60 weight thread in my needle. And I use 80 weight thread. And again, the 80 weight has that orange line on it in my bobbin. Bonus points for the Coulter Select quilting threads. I have grays here because we all know like, grays patchwork piecing we love using grays but the 60 weight coulter select thread comes in 60 different colors and the 80 weight comes in 40 different colors uh, i mentioned earlier that our sister brand is floriani embroidery and floriani would absolutely not let coulter select carry anything less than at least 60 variations because color is everything so you'll see a lot of these colors up behind me here, but it's amazing the variety you'll get. And 60 and 80 weight thread, what I also love about it is that this is multi-purpose thread. I can put it on my machine and have a beautiful seam allowance. I can use it for English paper piecing. I can use it for applique. Okay. So there's no need to switch back and forth between a million different threads. We use one style of thread and it does multiple jobs. How cool is that? Okay, so threads. This is one of those things that you should be changing on your machine to get a really good quarter inch seam allowance. The other thing is going to be your presser foot. So I'm gonna bring this in nice and close and I'm gonna do this, okay? This is a quarter inch foot, all right? This foot, you might notice it's this really cool bright red color. Uh, this is the only non-slip quarter inch foot that you can find on the market. It actually comes in a set of three. It's called the So Fine Presser Foot Set. They fit Baby Lock and Brother machines, okay? Now, what I love is that they are made completely out of non-slip. Nope, I take that back. Out of non-stick. Talk about rulers and you talk about these and they are opposite. So non-stick material. And what's wonderful about that is it glides over everything. I keep this guy on my machine for everything. So that set comes with an end foot, an R foot, and the quarter inch foot. And because it uh, is made of that non-stick, yes, is it fabulous for vinyl? Absolutely. Great for leather? Totally. Great for uh, things like silk or satin or chiffon? Absolutely. But I use this on my Coltland cotton too. I don't take these, these feet off. These three red feet that I that come in this set, especially this quarter inch foot, they stay on my machine all of the time. And that is because even with our regular patchwork piecing, there is a slight drag between that top foot and that the top set of fabric and the bottom set of fabric. And this removes that. And so you don't have that mismatch at the end of your uh, seam that you're sewing. Additionally, and this goes for quarter inch feet in general, okay? Let's bring that right in. You see this, the fatter side of the two, you can see the line where the needle goes through, and then there's the fatter side and the thinner side. This fatter side is a quarter inch, okay? So you could be using tapes, you can use, be using the laser on the beautiful new machine that you just purchased from Blaine but also having that foot, having that one extra place to align your fabric with, game changer. The more points that you can align your fabric with to make sure you're staying on that quarter of an inch, the better, okay? We're removing fail points. This is about not just addressing what's happening on your sewing machine, but this is about what's happening throughout your quilting process to ensure that you get that perfect quarter of an inch, okay? So again, this is the so fine quarter inch uh, non-stick presser foot. It fits Brother and Baby Lock machines and it comes in a set of three with an N foot and an R foot, okay? 
So this guy is pretty stinking awesome. Moving on. All right. So we have talked about cutting and we've talked about the sewing machine. And really, I do think the thread is probably my aha moment of the day. But let's talk about pressing. I know. So the only time I ever iron is in my sewing room. My kids are like covered in wrinkles and I don't care. We're sewing in this in we're ironing in the sewing room only, but we're not actually ironing. We are pressing. Okay. Oftentimes I see new quilters taking their irons. They're taking their irons and they're instead of pressing, taking up and down motions, they're wiggling, they're pushing, they're sliding. Ah! And it kills me because we have spent so much time cutting the perfect seam, cutting the perfect piece of fabric, aligning our perfect seams, sewing that straight line. And now because we've wiggled our iron, we have created this wavy line. Okay. We have stretched out our fabric in the wrong direction. And this is especially important when we're talking about half square triangles and quarter square triangles, because in those instances, what do we have? We have bias edge seams. And so it is easy to stretch these things out. And we do not want to do that, guys. Okay. So we want to make sure our iron is moving in an up and down motion. We are pressing. Okay. We are not wiggling, we are not ironing, and we are not pushing, okay? But let's talk a little bit more in depth about the actual pressing. So whether you are an seams open or to the dark side or to whatever way the fabric falls, we can, you know, there's a lot of different camps and that is not an argument or Pandora's box that I wanna open right now. But whatever you are doing, using a seam press will really help you get that sharp seam. I really do think that a lot of times the reason why we want to push with our iron or we want to wiggle is because we really want to get in there and get that crisp seam. Let the seam press do the job for you. So this is the Quilter Select Jewel Tools Seam Press. It comes in three different colors. It comes in turquoise, sodalite and rose quartz, um, which are obviously turquoise, a rose color. And then the sodalite is a like a navy blue. It's gorgeous. Uh, but what you can do with the seam press is use these edges to really get a sharp line. Okay. Now, what I love about this is that there are times where you need to press, but you can't press. And I'm specifically thinking about foundation paper piecing. Okay, right now with Quilter Select, we are running a sew along and we have some foundation paper piecing blocks. And one of the things that I've noticed is some of the crispness isn't there and it's because we're not using our seam press. We can use the seam press to get that nice crisp line and give us the ability to sew over it because we don't necessarily want to be ironing our papers. Seam press will do the job for you. Another place, and I think I skipped this while we were when we were talking about the machine, and I should have, but now it's coming back around because we're talking about the jewel tools. Here goes the Quilter Select Jewel Tools pin cushion. Pinning is winning, okay? That is, if you take one thing, I know I just said that about the thread, but if you take one thing away from this is pinning is winning. Having a pin cushion at your side is going to be just game changer. I love this pin cushion because it's also like a corsage. So you, and it's adjustable. You can wear it on your wrist. For those of you who also garment sew, I know that you know that this is huge. Having your pins at hand while still being able to use both of your hands, amazing. I actually have come to start, and I used to think of it only as like a garment sewing thing to have your pin cushion on your wrist. But I have, as I've been patchworking, especially like bag making, I have been wearing the Jewel Tools pin cushion on my wrist so that as I'm going through and I'm pushing it through the, my fabric through the machine and I'm pulling out those pins, I am able to um, put them right into the 
pin cushion so that I don't have things all over the place, all over the bed of my machine. Uh, because, you know, we do not ever want to sew over our pins. But pinning is winning. The biggest place, uh, besides obviously not aligning yourself up with the, with the right quarter inch marking on the bed of your machine, is going to be not pinning and having those fabrics shift on you. Okay? So let's go back and recap. Let We talked about using a non-slip ruler so that our fabric does not move on us as we're inching along on those big cuts. We have talked about switching to a smaller ruler, like a five and a half or six and a half inch square, so that we can make sub cuts without moving our fabric or, a, you know, messing up those perfect alignment lines that we've been following uh, during our cutting. And we talked about using a handle to make those rulers an extension of your hand so that we can neatly, quickly, and efficiently cut. We also discussed using a high quality rotary cutter with a very sharp blade. What I also love, and I'm sure you guys were probably having a bit of a heart attack because I thought about this after the fact, I was waving this rotary cutter around like nobody's business. Crazy pants shouldn't do that, except that you totally can with the Quilter Select rotary cutter because it's got this awesome blade cover that you can easily move back and forth, making it ambidextrous. I mean, come on guys, it's amazing, but it's nice and safe and covered. And so that is a wonderful, wonderful feature, but most importantly is the weight. The weight is going to remove the stress from your hands, from your fingers, and allow you to have that nice buttery cut. 60 and 80 weight thread, 60 weight, 60 weight in your needle, 80 weight in your bobbin is going to allow you to measure a true quarter of an inch instead of trying to guess at the perfect scant quarter of an inch. This is a game changer. The 60 weight comes in 60 different colors. The 80 weight comes in 40 different colors. Not only are these wonderful for your patchwork piecing, but they're going to be also great for your English paper piecing and your applique work. You will have noticed that if you were here with me yesterday and we were talking about applique, I was using these threads for my applique as well. It's that good. And when we're at our machine, we want to be using a really high quality quarter inch, uh, quarter inch presser foot. I like this so fine presser foot that comes in a three pack. It's great for the fact that it is nonstick. It allows your fabric to glide very easily through the machine. And it has this great quarter inch marking so that you can get a really good line. Now that three pack includes an N foot, an R foot, and then this, the only non-stick quarter inch foot on the market. And then let's talk about pressing. The jewel tools, okay? So our jewels tool line includes not only this pin cushion with this gorgeous semi-precious stone here in the middle, it includes the seam press, but then the third piece, which I didn't even bring here today, is actually a needle minder. It's a notions minder. It's a magnetic pin. It's a beautiful brooch made of the same stones that are in the other two portions, the seam press and the uh, pin cushion. But these three items together make up our jewel tools line, and they are huge. It is an absolute necessity to pin while we are quilting. Pinning is winning. And having those pins readily available so that you're not taking your hands away from your project is key. So let's go ahead and use one of those pin cushions that you used to think was just for garment sewers. Nope, they're for everybody. And the seam press, get that sharp seam no matter what. Huh. All right. So let's see, Jane, we, um, we may have some questions that have popped up and I would love to chat with you a little bit. How you doing? Hi, oh my gosh, that was so great. And I, I took notes, right? So I love the sections that we did this in. We have our non-slip ruler, right? Yeah. And then you said that you had the six and a half by 24 inch and then you have the squares. Yes. 
The squares are huge. We need, we all know we need that six and a half by 24, but being able to go to a smaller size when making our subcuts is going to make a world of difference. You're going to be able to maneuver more easily. You're going to be able to make those cuts without the fabric moving. It's huge. Uh, you said that color is everything when it comes yes. to your favorite thread, which is the uh, aha moment of the day for Nicole. We love that. Uh, question was, do both weights come in all the colors? So the 60 and 80 weight, the 60 weight comes in 60 colors. The 80 weight comes in 40 colors, but those 40 colors overlap. Okay. So you can find it in the 80 weight. You can find it in the 60 weight. And then we've got a couple of extras in the 60 weight just because we know top stitching is everything. <laughs> top stitching. Everything is everything, Nicole. Okay. I want to tell everybody how they get their hands on all of these amazing products that you showed us today from Quilter Select. So everyone put your hands together for Nicole Gilbert. She's awesome. Would love it when you're on the show. I love your demos and your conversation. And I'm going to show everyone how to get it. What do you think? Absolutely. Have a great day, Jane. I'll see you guys later this week. Okay. Thanks, Nicole. Wow, everybody. That was amazing. Okay. So that was Nicole Gilbert from our friends at RNK Distributors. And she was talking about the Quilters Select line. Now, there's a lot of things on smplive.tv, lots of other products. Today, Nicole talked about the non-slip ruler. She talked about that ruler handle that makes the transition easier, became part of her hand. She talked Talked about those heavyweight rotary cutters and the blade and of course the quilters thread color is everything make sure you get the right um thread for your project she talked about the so fine presser foot and that comes three in a set oh look we're showing you here the non-slip rulers um and as we go and i'm just kind of recapping what she talked about and then she talked about pressing and i see a question there what was pressing that she was talking about she talked about the seam press and that's going to give you straight lines it's all there on the website that seam press in the pressing conversation was part of that jewels tools package that she was talking about so again no wiggling no pushing just press that's what michelle had to say so if you go to smplive.tv uh, i'm sorry smp live uh yeah smp live <laughs> Uh, dot TV. You can uh, see all of the RNK quilters select items and products in there. Everything is 20% off this week. So that's a nice, easy, clean, great promotion they have on all of these amazing tools. And Nicole has been telling us about all this week. So again, go to smplive.tv. And you can look up the rulers and the rotary cutter and all the things she just showed us. But again, there is so much browsing and so much buying to do right now for all of those Quilter Select products. We love Nicole. So excited when she is on the show. But now it is time for education. And we know we love being educated. So I'm really excited to introduce our presenter, our educator of the day, our teacher, if you will, because well, she's amazing and she's a great teacher, but she's got a fabulous name, everybody. Jane Hoprich is going to teach us how to make feathers. Jane's stitch by stitch. Ah, oh, she's the best. Jane is a self-taught free motion quilter that began her quilting journey on a domestic sewing machine. She's now a professional award-winning long arm quilter who specializes in custom free motion quilting. Her goal when teaching is to spread as much knowledge as possible and enable more successful quilters in the future. That is all of us. Uh, Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> I'm really happy that you're here. I, do you get as excited when somebody else's name is Jane too, or just me? I know. No, I do. No. Cause we don't, yeah. there's not many of us. There's not many of us. And then uh, the many of us that spell it the way we spell it, like the I regular, know. right. I always wanted mine spelled a little differently, but yeah, happen. my mom was like, then you'd have to tell everybody with the Y. So everybody say hi right. to the Janes, the two Janes, <laughs> the, the two Janes. I um, Jane, I just have a quick question. Um, what's your middle name? Ellen. Okay. I think we, I asked you this before because mine's Elizabeth. So okay. we've got Jane Ellen and Jane Elizabeth. Um, there you go. And then are you showing us how to make feathers? Actually, um, I think that was a typo. I'm actually oh. doing stuff on, um, 
on stencils and how to oh, change. Oh, well, fabulous! I like stencils fun. better than feathers yeah. anyway. <laughs> 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 All right, Jane, uh, you're going to show us stuff on stencils. I love it. It's great to have you here, and we're going to hang back and we're going to learn. Okay, and I'm going to switch over to my other camera then. All right, everybody, thanks for having me here. And um, this class is going to be um, about stencils and how to use them and maybe to change them up a little bit because, um, but first, let me just start with a little bit of introduction. I am a free motion custom quilter. Um, I love free motion quilting more than anything else. And so, but some of my students always ask me, um, is it cheating if I mark my quilts or is it cheating if I use stencils? And I'm like, no, it's not. Absolutely. There's so many great resources out here. I have just a couple examples of some stencils sitting here. There are just all kinds of stencils. I actually had a closet full of stencils. I must have picked them up at a yard sale or something. But anyway, and then I, I you see there's all just different sorts of stencils. And then I... I, there's also these, which I'm going to demo because these are more of a um, papery type um, stencil. So I always get asked first. And before we get into the class, I just want to explain. I do use marking tools. Um, I usually use a blue water soluble pen or I use a chalk pencil if it's on dark fabric. Or you can also use your quilt pants. And I thought I would demo the quilt pants very quickly. Um, and show you that because some people don't understand. Um, these stencils are made by full line stencils and they are soft and pliable. And so the pants, you never want to really pounce the pants. You just pounce it inside to activate it. And then you bring out your pants pad. You gently just brush that across your stencil You pull it up and your mark is already on your fabric. So you're ready to go then at that point. So it's a great way and it does, yes, it can brush off a little bit, but you can see even if it brushes off a little bit, those marks are still there and you can get to use it. But what I really wanted to talk about today, oh, wait a minute, there's one more thing I wanted to show you too about that, is suppose you find a design that you really, really like and but it's not a stencil. What can you do? Well, you can take something like this product here, which is quilting paper, um, golden threads quilting paper. And what I like to do is if I'm gonna make one stencil, I'm gonna make quite a few and I'll cut the sheets into the right size that I need. I'll staple those sheets together. I'll take this to my sewing machine without thread in it and I'll needle punch it. And then, I can tear that off, place it with the bumpy side up, and I can use my pounce and I can go right across there. Those bumpy places, pick that pounce up and allow it to drop right onto the fabric. And now you've made your own stencil and you can use that over and over again. You can also sew through the paper too if you'd like to just lay that down. So don't feel limited by the stencils that you have. Like I said, if you find a design that you really think would go work well in your quilt, go ahead and make your own stencil. Why not, right? All right, so this one, this is supposed to be about how, what can I do and how can I make stencils differently? Or what can I do? I'm gonna flip that over so you get a better view. But here is a just a standard stencil that I had. Um, but what can I do with that? Yep, I can use it for a sashing or a border. But is there anything else I can do with it? So I have this sample here that I want to show you and share with you what I did with it. So in this particular area here, and I'm hoping you can see that, let me turn my one light off real quick. That might help a little bit. In this right here, this is the stencil all quilted out. So right here is the stencil all quilted out. But if you look here, what I did in this one was I did a stencil going one direction and then a stencil going in the other direction. So I, if you have a wide border, 
just double them up and get them quilted in. Um, the next area I did, because I'm all about changing up, changing up those things and seeing what I can add and what I can do. Doodling is definitely going to help with that. But in this one, I used the um, I used the stencil and I marked it. But when I went to go stitch it out, in every one of those sections, I did free motioned a feather in there or not a feather, I'm sorry, a flower. So now we took this simple stencil and we dressed it up to make it look like that. And then of course, if you add echoes around there, and then that makes that stand out even more. So you can see, you can take a stencil and you can change it. You can make it regular, you can double it up, or you can change it up. And I'm gonna show you some more. I have some other samples. In this one down here, I use this stencil. So this is a pretty flower. It looks really nice. And in this side, I did it exactly as it was on my fabric. On this side, I flipped it over the other direction and you can see what I did. Because stencils are similar to anything, um, I can, I don't have to follow the line. I can use the line as just a reference. And so here where there were rounded petals, I decided I would square them off on this side and then add an echo in there. And then I added an extra leaf and I did some micro quilting in there. And then I dressed up that swirl by adding some pebbles in there. And I thought by doing that, that just, you can see the difference. So you take one stencil and you can do it a couple different ways and always pointing out that those lines are just there for reference. If you don't hit right on, it doesn't matter if they're going, those markings are going to go away. Just be proud of what you did. So the next one I have for you is, I have all this laid out for us, is just a basic feather. Well, on its own, it's beautiful, right? So here it is on its own. And there's the feather. I went ahead and I drew that on there and I quilted it just as it was. But I thought, how else can I use this and make it look good? Like, what else can I do with this stencil? Because maybe that's not what I want for a specific thing. Well, you have this line that's going through here that would make a really nice feather vine. So that's what I did here. I added, I used that curved area to make that vine. And then I echoed that vine down or the spine of the feather. And then I added my own free motion feathers to that. And again, and then I also, something to remember too, is if you're, when you're doing a design, adding an echo around it can really bring the attention to the design. So think about that too. But again, I didn't use it as the regular as it was because I have a tendency of looking at something and thinking, oh, I have to use it that way. So I like to sit and doodle at night. And what I do is I, I sometimes I take a stencil and I figure out all the different ways I could use that stencil. Now, how else could I use it? I took and I just did these like, in the vine area or in the spine area. And so I went ahead and I traced those onto my fabric. And then I sort of created my own design around that. So you can see that, again, I didn't use the whole stencil. I just used that one little section in there. And I built off of that as I was going along. So don't think that you have to use that exactly as it is. So this bottom section is this stencil here. So it's cute on its own, but what happens if you take it and do it and then you flip it and attach them in a border or something? You can see, you can create here, the top one is basically just that, that actual stencil. But when I flipped it, I added some more elements to it. 
And then I added a little bit of micro quilting in the middle just to make it pop. But you can see that by adding elements to it, you've changed it from what it was to something even more phenomenal. Okay, so I did a couple designs for us so we can see what all different things we can do with stencils because I did an entire six week class on this. So I'm trying to condense it down into 20 or 25 minutes. <laughs> so here's the stencil and this is what you can do at home. If you have a stencil, draw it out on paper or draw it on your drawing tablet or something like that. And then you can play with it. So in this particular one, what happens if I take that, maybe I have a wide border, but I really like the stencil. I can take that and I can run them right next to each other. And now you end up with a completely different shape than what you were thinking. And you can always add some quilting in there to make it different areas pop. So what other elements do we have in this stencil? Well, you have the melon shape and you have diamonds. So maybe you really like diamonds. You could just use those and you can keep on lining those up in your border or in your sashing and work with that. So what happens if I only use this melon shape and I only use half of it? So maybe I have a border and I mark it now. What you can do is if you're afraid that you're going to go over that area, you can take some painter's tape or something and mark off the part of the stencil that you're not going to use. But I'm just going to draw in from there to there. And I'm going to keep on keeping that melon shape going down. And I'm going to do the same going in the other direction. And then I'm going to end up with a fun design in there. How else could I use this? This is the same way I look at quilting templates because I, I see them for what they are, but there has to be other ways to use them. So what happens if I took the stencil and I took it in this direction? So I now can create, I can mark off where I don't wanna use or mark a line of some tape across that one area and then just bring this down and attach these down. And then I add an echo in there to separate that out and then some fill work. Again, who would think to take something like that and just use that one section, but you can do it. Something else you can do is you can take just the diamonds. Suppose you like those little squares. Well, you can see you can just add a play on those squares coming off of it and creating your fun ornate design in there. I chose to add some little um, feathers or some flowers in there off of each one. That would be really cute too. It would make for a very fun sashing or border. And then how could you use it, but again, use it different. If you had a wide border, why not use the melons and do those in, and then you can come back in and you can stencil in those squares and there are the diamonds. And now you've created something even different than what this was intended of. So I'm just trying to get you to think a little bit outside the box and think about using what you have or stencils that you um, are looking at and how you can look at them a little different. So um, <clears throat> here's another one. This one is just, it's a cute little stencil. But how else can you use it? Well, I can just use this area here. So, and make these like this, if I have a small sashing or border. You can also do that and make that into kind of like a scallop type design if you have some fill work that you wanna do. And up oh, here was the original design. So you can also do a play on it. You can do what I did in that other one where you take it and do it one direction and then you're gonna flip it and do it in the other direction. And then you have a totally different design than what was right there. And you can even add to those elements. Suppose you have a box. So I took it that way, I took it that way. I added some fill work in between and you have something so different from what you see there. 
And same thing with this. Um, I just, I did the stencil, I added an echo, and then I added some fill work in there. And sometimes you also have to think that you don't even need to use them as, um, you don't need to use them as, <clears throat> as they're intended. You can take, so there's that one stencil that we just had. Okay, so suppose we take this and we just, we go ahead and mark it on our quilt, but we're not gonna actually quilt those lines in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use those lines as boundaries. And I'm just gonna take like a dry erase marker and do this, but you can use that boundary to kind of do something like that. Or you could do something like if you like ribbon candy, you can do that and you could just bring that. And again, you're not actually stitching the lines, but what you're doing is you're using those as your boundaries. So you have a visual of where to go. Something else you can do is you could even turn that, <clears throat> excuse me, and you could use it as another boundary by doing say a leaf. And then you would travel on the border to the next one. So again, it's just helping you create that even distance that a lot of us strive for in our quilting. So there's that. And there are some really fun designs out there too. There's lots of great grids out there, but I don't want you to get caught into thinking you have to use them as they are shown you can so here's the actual grid okay i drew it out on paper but you don't have to draw all the lines you can just draw some of the lines and so there's that you can think about that what lines in there can i use and come up with a different design well how about you can use these lines and come up with octagon shape by just going around every the six of those diamonds and you come up with something like that. And then you add some different fill work in there and you've come up with something totally different. Or do some bigger triangles by taking, or diamonds by just using the lines that are gonna get you those bigger diamonds. And again, that would be something really fun to do. Um, there are lots of good ideas out there that you, there's lots of great stencils and you can find them just about anywhere. And you, I just want to encourage you to find a way to go a little bit beyond what you think that they look like. I, like I said, sometimes I'll take a ruler or I'll take a stencil, I'll draw it out and then I'll try and think of all the different ways I could use that stencil and get the most out of it that I possibly can. Because we all need help. It's not wrong to, um, to mark your quilts. It's not wrong to, you know, people think, oh, if I, if I mark it, it's cheating. It is not cheating. You definitely want to go ahead and um, do that if it helps you. Whatever makes your free motion journey fun and enjoyable. And this would even apply to hand quilting. I mean, there's lots of great stencils out there to use for any of that stuff. So something else I wanted to share too, just have to find it underneath all of my items. Um, so uh, something else I wanna show too is that I have these free motion quilting panels. They are practice panels and the, 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 the um, designs all have companion YouTube tutorials and they are printed with water soluble ink on fabric so that you can practice your free motion quilting square, um, your free motion quilting. And, and that same thing as the stencil. If you don't like a design that's printed on there, you can do something different. You can change it up because those lines are gonna wash away and nobody's gonna ever know, but it gives you a way to practice. And I also have some free motion. I have five different free motion quilting workbooks. And the unique thing about mine are that each page 
has a clear plastic overlay so that you can use a dry erase marker and you can practice your designs and then you can rub it off and you can practice over and over to learn your muscle memory and figure out how you wanna quilt those designs before you commit them to fabric. So I will go ahead and switch back and so we can have any questions and answers. Hey, Jane. There she is. Hey. That was so great. Like That goes so fast. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, we got a couple minutes for questions um, for the two Janes. So uh, people put your questions in if we if they passed and we didn't get them. I saw a couple, Jane, that I can ask. Um, number one, I mean, you might have answered this at the very tippy top, but how did you come up with this idea? You talked about um, you found the stencils and then how did you come up with this? This is such a great idea. It's so out of the box. Well, because I like, really like the moment, <clears throat> excuse me. I think, um, I just always want to do more. So like I, I, if, if you follow me at all, I do a lot of my, my quilting is I quilt everything to death. And so I'm always looking at ways to, in use things or make them more quilty or whatever. And I just look at rulers. This I look at the stencils the same way as look at rulers. Like in the beginning, I was very thrifty. Rulers, quilting templates can be very expensive. So I was trying to come up with different ways to use them and how could I utilize them in different than just what they were. Because you have to be able to use it the more than just the, what it is. I mean, if you like one little shape in there, you should still be able to use it and find multiple ways to use it. Um, and then the, I just see one. I have other ones here. What was the item you used to sew in to make your own stencil? It was called, um, let me, it is Golden Threads Quilting Paper. Perfect. And do you have a favorite soluble ink that you use? Or so I love my blue, my blue line water soluble and I have several different brands. I don't tend to be brand specific, but I do try it first on my fabric before I commit it to fabric. And I try and make sure I use it very lightly so it doesn't get into the bat, go through the fabric and into the batting. Cause a lot of times I'm marking it while it's on my frame. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so I try that. Um, I don't tend to use the friction pens as much cause I've heard heard to I have not had personal experience but I've heard some personal some experiences of others and so I might use them in my piecing when I'm doing like marking half square triangles but I don't tend to use them in my quilting and Nancy wants to know do you use them on your domestic machine with a walking foot or free motion the, the quilting paper I think so or the stencils I think your stencils not maybe um, I think it's the quilting paper. So the quilting paper, I generally do it free motion, but I guess you could use your walking foot. I mean, um, I, I'm a free motion quilter, so I just take it to my machine right. and do free motion quilting. So, um, I think that, um, yeah, you could do either though, but I'm sure you could use your walking foot if that's what makes it more comfortable for me. I tell all my students, do what makes you comfortable. Like if you're going to stress out over it, then try and do it your way and what you're comfortable with you so, do you yeah right exactly. i like it I yeah. that's, that's that's something we can live by all the time jane how can everybody get a hold of you or find you or watch you or, or be a, be a student in your class give us all the details so i i am teaching at paducah i'm in the long arm room this year um i have there are some slots still available um i am at www.stitchbystitchcustomquilting.com and I also have a YouTube channel under my name. I would love it. Uh, you know, when I first started free motion quilting, I didn't have YouTube to watch. And so I try and offer as much free content as I can to try and help others because I just want everybody to love free motion quilting. I love it. 
I've, I've, nice. I don't, I, I love it. I've jumped on other people's, uh, you know, free motion. I've done lots of TV segments with quilters and quilt uh -huh. clubs and, and guilds and they let me drive for a minute and it's really, really fun. So. <laughs> yeah. And I see all the great, I'm watching the comments on yeah. YouTube and it is, they're so nice. Thank you, everybody. That's just so sweet. Everybody is so sweet. No, they're so good. That's what I love the like-minded community. And we're all in this together. Yeah, Jane, absolutely. thank you so much. Thank for you. All your great, your time, your expertise, your tips, your talents. And thank you for sharing them for us. You're amazing. Thanks. And I'll see you all on Friday. Okay. Thanks, Jane. Oh my goodness. Wasn't she amazing, everybody? We love Jane Halprich. Blaine. I know you're a little jealous that you weren't here with me. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. Uh, there's a reason we have those talented uh, judges doing uh, educational sessions because they're so awesome. I mean, truly so great. And just like, I love the idea of using the stencils. Like, okay, we're all running over to our paper crafting section of our craft <laughs> rooms and sewing rooms. We're like pulling the stencils out right now. <laughs> yep, you're exactly right. It's so much all fun. right, Jane. Well, okay. I'm going to let you take a little 30 minute break and you'll okay. be back. And, uh, but we're going to go all the way over to uh, guess what's up next. So steady. And uh, we have Stacy Louie going to be with us today. And Stacy is a marketing and product manager as well as one of the owners of So Steady and Westerly Designs. She has become an expert in all things so steady. And for the last 10 years, uh, and Wesley Designs in the last five years, she's coordinated over 20 educators worldwide sharing Wesley Design with the world. And they just recently launched in Broadway Lee. Uh, so y'all welcome to the show, Stacy Louie. Hi, thank you so much for letting me be here today. We are so excited to celebrate National Quilting Month with you guys. Well, thanks, Stacey. Um, yeah. And I know you've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to let you get going. And I'll be back in 30 <laughs> minutes and we'll tell everybody how they can get your products. Thank you so much, Blaine. Well, we always love working with Sewing Machines Plus, and I'm really, really excited today to be able to be here and show you all of our quilting tools, guys. And we've got a lot. So I'm going to get started today by talking to you a little bit about Embroidery and why not showing you some live Embroidery action while we are actually doing it. So I'm going to start. I've actually been working on an Embroidery design right here. You can see it um, on the screen there. I've been working on a live design because I wanted to share with you the opportunity to use Embroidery to finish your projects. So I was using my amazing Embridely, um collection. It's a sampler starter collection, which is one of our first official Embridely launch collection. And this came from our sampler set of templates. And that is our bestseller temp, uh, template set that we have uh, started everyone off on ruler work with. And we're now showing you how you can take all of the amazing designs that you can make with rulers and we've turned them into an embroidery collection. And not only an embroidery collection, but a lookbook for your ruler quilting as well. So we've been able to share this with you guys in some other lives, which we really appreciate. But just as a quick refresher, what we're sharing with you is the opportunity to be able to look at all of these designs that are in now and um, embroidery formats available in four to eight inch hoop sizes. Um, as well as single stitch uh, for ideal for quilting to bean stitch designs, and then of course, fill designs as well. So we're giving you a lot of options to finish your projects with, but keeping in mind that all of these designs were originally created to help you finish your quilts. And so what we're looking at is minimal thread breaks. We're looking at the opportunity for a lot of edge to edge designs, and we're looking at the opportunity to be able to um, kind of easily fill in around it with matching ruler work. So as you can imagine, being able to put a uh, embroidery design right in the middle of a petal like I'm doing right here um, is really simple, but being able to get the detail work around it and really fill in the, uh, the quilting, that's going to be great for ruler work. So I'm going to go ahead and show you live really quick, and then we'll talk a little bit more while this embroidery design finishes up. 
I've got an embroidery design that I finished down here. I'll get you a little bit closer up here in a second and we'll finish that design. And then I'm gonna dive in and share with you some of our other amazing uh, tools that we have for quilters um, going all the way to the beginning, which is called our Sew Steady Table. One of the really great things about this too is that we are actually donating um, a whole lot of prize, uh, prizes to the quilters for this event. And so my focus is going to be sharing with you all of the amazing prizes that you're going to be able to win from Sew Steady today for this quilting event that we're doing with Sewing Machines Plus. So uh, we're just finishing out this design. We've only got about a minute left here. But as you can see, this is one of the designs that we created using our Sew Steady um, design that it was originally created from the spinning wheels, which is a template part of our sampler set of templates. So what I love showing is just that connection between the design that we're showing on the embroidery and the actual ruler design that we have. So the nice thing about the embroidery designs is that you have the ability to size them, right? You can take what an original design would be a five and a half inch overall flower design, and you can make it any size you want virtually depending on your options with your sewing machine. The sewing machine I'm using today, I can resize the design that we have in this in the file. 80%. So I can go down or I can go down 20% and um, 20%, which is great. Um, so what I've done here with my embroidery designs is I've actually just started filling in the petals. And now I am going to go through, if time allows today, and allow you to help me choose which designs we might want to fill around with rulers to kind of fill in the petals a little bit more and really create this. I'm actually honoring one of our most recently lost amazing educators, Donna McCauley, by showing off her dream panel class. This is a class that she created uh, probably about a year ago, and we have gotten so many amazing ruler quilters to go through and really learn the essence of quilting design with Donna in this design workshop. And so I'm combining embroidery with it because, well, I love embroidery, but I love the ability to be able to really show off how you can fill in these gorgeous petals and, and uh, quilting with, with the embroidery, but then you can also fill it in with rulers. So um, let's go ahead and transition. I'm going to have, um, we're going to show off some of the designs that we've done, and then I'm going to transition over to show you another prize that you're going to get here today. But before I do that, I do want to take note that I am using our so Steady suspension system right here to be able to hold up this project and keep the fabric out of the embroidery field area. And so I'm using, I just used two of my arms to be able to do that, but it's so simple. And because these two, these are our, this is our suspension system, which is one of the prizes that we're giving away for uh, National Quilting Month. But this, these allow you to be able to hold up and act as arms in your sewing room to keep your project out of that area. And this is just one of the many amazing quilting tools that we have here at Sew Steady. This was really developed with the ruler workers in mind because for years we've been creating these amazing ruler designs and teaching people how to do ruler work. But the number one question that I remember at the beginning and still today is, sure, that's great, but can I do the bigger projects? And the answer is yes, you can. You can do the bigger projects by framing up the project and going and getting out the big long arm, or you can use these super simple tools that we have available, like our Sew Steady suspension system to hold that project up and allow you to keep it out of that uh, sewing field area and keep that weight off of it. We say take the drag out of quilting with these amazing suspension system arms. That's exactly what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and have um, my assistant Maddie here. I'm going to have her do a little trunk show for you while I transition over to our Wish Show Study table. So uh, because now I'm going to be doing some ruler work. So I want to show you how simple it is to transition over to our Sew Study table and do ruler work 
um, but she might as well show you some eye candy while I do it. So this is, I'm gonna have her show off a few of the designs that we have um, with our So Steady Embroidery collection. And I've just done some of these designs right here. And then um, I will go ahead and just lay that right here, Maddie, and you can take them around and show them some of the designs. This is another um, project that we've got right here that's kind of aligned with the patchwork. And uh, so you can just kind of take them around, perfect. And then, yeah, show them some of those. So that is part of our patchwork class series. And um, we are doing um, amazing patchwork uh, projects from our Westerly Design patchwork line. And you may or may not know, but Westerly Design actually got their fame in Australia for patchwork. That was their original original um, items that they actually started creating um, in the quilting world. And they created, and I'm gonna show you today, because of course, these are some of the things we're giving away. Um, they created what they call the adjustable locking rulers. And it was a, an amazing system that allowed you to be able to create um, putting the fabric in a really, really simple way. And so we have over 100 different patchwork designs that are designed using those patchwork rulers. So I want to go ahead and um, share that project with you because every single month we're doing a new patchwork class and we're quilting it with embroidery. So it's fun to be able to show that combination and how you can do that so easily. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and get you guys visualizing how simple it can be to transition over to your so steady table. And why would you want a so steady table? Well, to be honest with you, a so steady table just makes quilting and projects so much easier because you have that smooth flat sewing surface. And I know a lot of machines come with extension tables these days, and that's awesome. But one of the things that's really, really nice about our so steady tables is, well, I'll tell you a few things that are really nice about them but they're, they're larger than the, the average table that you're gonna get with your machine. This table in particular is our So Steady Wish table. And this table is actually 22 and a half by 25. So if you're a quilter, this table is going to give you a whole lot of space to help hold up that project um, behind the machine and to the left of the machine, which is ideal when you're doing any kind of ruler uh, quilting or free motion quilting. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how simple it is to set up these amazing tables. We offer this travel bag, which is amazing for being able to store your table, cutting mats, embroidery hoops, all of those things. Look how big this is. Um, and it's got pockets in it now. So you can store your tools, your rulers, your books, your gliders, all of that extra stuff in there as well. Keep it all organized. And we're going to share more of those tools with you here in a moment. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you just how easy it is to go ahead and just get these legs on your table. And then we're going to put our So Steady Wish drawer on the table. So all you do when you get your table for the first time is you're just going to go ahead and size the legs to be about a quarter inch below the top of the free arm. And the reason for that is because you wanna be able to make it so your table sits perfectly level with the top of the free arm. And um, so our wish table, because it comes with this awesome rail system that holds your drawer in, we actually have that table sitting about, um, uh, that one actually sits about a half inch below the arm. And that's because we add a quarter inch for the rail. So we have two sizes of legs that will often come with our wish table. And uh, we give you all of that in the instructions on how to install it. But this is how easy it is. All you do is pop on and off the legs. One of the really, really cool things to note about our SoCity tables is you never take a screwdriver to them. The leg system is pop on, pop off. So it's super, super easy to take to classes, to make portable if you're, you know, have to, you're quilting in your living room going to a retreat, super simple for all of those features. The other nice thing that comes with our Sofetti table is our circles and straights mat and tool. And this is just a bonus, guys. So circles and straights 
allow you to be able to do um, all kinds of straight sewing and circle sewing and align it with the needle area. So you actually have the opportunity to just do a whole lot more with your machine. And this doesn't uh, matter if you've got a simple straight stitch machine or if you've got a machine like this with all the bells and whistles, you are able to take this and use the mat and if, if you can see the mat a little bit we've got all kinds of markings on this mat that give you different seam allowances and circle diameters to be able to turn this in to a amazing tool right there at your needle area so this if i was going to use it as a straight guide i would just go ahead and line that up with my seam allowance stick it down and then go ahead and have my fabric flow through there and use it as a, a amazing ability to go ahead and get a straight stitch ideal for folks like me that have a hard time maintaining my quarter inch seam allowance um, and then if you're circle sewing what you're going to do there is you're going to pick the circle size that you're looking for and then you just um, use the etching markings on the tool stick it down onto that align the etch markings with the mat and then you're able to go ahead and have the feed dogs up, pull through the needle area and give you a perfect circle. So we might have a demonstration for that in a little bit, but I wanna keep showing you the setup of how, to, how amazing our wish table is. So I've got all kinds of goodies right now inside of my wish table. Um, almost too many goodies, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna pull a few of those out so it doesn't look overwhelming. But as many of you know, when you are doing any kind of sewing, you want all your tools handy and organized, ready for you to be able to use. So that's what we've got right here with a wish drawer. Everything is right there, ready for you to use. Got my screwdriver, I've got my ruler foot, I've got my USB, I've got my scissors. So all kinds of things that you need and want are just right there, ready for you to be able to take advantage of and grab onto. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and transition over to ruler work mode. And in order to do that, I'm going to use my ruler foot and I'm also going to use my screwdriver. But before I do that, let's get this table ready for ruler work. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use this polish kit. So guys, this is a sample polish, but the great news is this sample polish is now coming with every single so steady table that we sell that just start uh, changed at the beginning of this year but if you purchase a so steady table um in 2024 then you are going to see that you have a sample polish right there in your uh, so steady table leg bag and what's great about a polish is that it just gets your table super super slick smooth ready for fabric to glide across it and almost at times a little too fast in my opinion <laughs> but it, what wait, what your goal is is to be able to just make this ready for free motion and so i'm just going to go ahead and kind of get this all polished up and again this is a sample so we just give that to you but if you want more polish you can purchase that right there on the sewing machines plus website this is something that's great for any kind of acrylic sewing surface we have a lot of uh, customers that will use it to polish the beds of their machines as well. We've done all kinds of testing and um, all we, honestly, we send it with this cloth, you just wash it off and we've never had any problems with residue. So um, amazing option for being able to really get everything nice and slick. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a different type of glider. So here at So City, we love our gliders. We started with the amazing grid glider, which the grid glider is a, um, much like our circles and straights glider, only it just has um, markings that are focused on giving you seam allowances and markings that are focused on um, the option for being able to um, really give you all kinds of measurements right at the needle area. So our grid glider basically will cover the span of your um, of your free arm, depending on how big your free arm is. This is obviously a big one. Um, and then you just get all kinds of markings. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pull that out of your tube and be able to use it. We launched this probably what well, was right before COVID. And during COVID, 
you wouldn't believe the number of videos and um, just excitement that what came out because so many new people were making masks, uh, pulling out those old sewing machines, and they needed some guide to be able to help them do their seam allowances. So it's so, so simple to do this. All you're gonna do is pull off the backer. And a lot of questions come up at times on, you know, how does that work? What if it, um, what if it doesn't keep it stick? Well, um, this is made with what they call micro suction technology. So what you do is it's not like an adhesive that's gonna go bad and gooey. What you need to do if you ever find that um, maybe there's some lint buildup or anything on this glider, is you just take it over to the sink and you wash it. And it washes the lint off and it starts sticking again like new. The other thing is you can use baby wipes. Um, you can use a lint roller, um, but all of those are ways to be able to get that gripping right back on it. And that's the truth for all of our gliders that we have here at So Steady. But this is our best seller glider. This is our grid glider. It's 12 by 20 in size. Um, it's got a centering ruler that goes one to 12 inches uh, one direction, one to eight inches the other direction. And then of course it's got some angle markings on it and your seam allowances. So this is an amazing option for doing all kinds of sewing. We've got folks that just leave it on for all their quilting needs as well. But because we love gliders here at So Steady, we're gonna show you that we actually have a ruler work glider. And why would we wanna have a different glider than the grid glider? Well, the ruler work glider has, notice that this has a rectangular cutout. The ruler work glider has a ruler work, a ruler work cutout for that needle area. And what that means is that it's got a circular cutout. And the reason why that's important is because when you are doing any kind of ruler work, you sometimes want to cover up the feed dog and keep those out of, um, keep anything from being able to kind of stop you from being able to freely use your ruler and have the stitches, you know, get off, um, get out of whack. So being able to cover up the feed dogs with a circular hole keeps that ruler from having anything that stops it from being able to go all the way around and be able to continuously stitch. And that's why we use a ruler work glider. And that's another gift. All of these things, guys, these are all gifts that we are giving away for National Quilting Month through Sewing Machines Plus. So we hope you are just kind of keeping an eye on these as things that you are going to have the opportunity to win. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this over. Same thing, I just peeled off the back. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stick this right onto the sewing machine. And we're covering up the feed dogs. We're making it so our, um, obviously our stitch and our thread is gonna be able to come up from the bobbin. Um, but that's all we want. We just want the thread to be able to run freely um, and then have everything else nice and covered up. So now we've got our, our table ready for ruler work. I've showed you some glider options. We've talked a little bit about our circles and straights. So let's go ahead and get our machine ready for ruler work. So every machine is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna have machines that um, actually, um, you just drop the feed dogs because there's a little button on it, or you're gonna have machines that you can't even drop your feed dogs. And in that scenario, you're actually just going to set your stitch allowance to zero, and you're gonna use this glider to go over them. And uh, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be in free motion mode then, because when you're doing ruler work, you wanna be in free motion mode. And then the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna do what I just did, and you're gonna put your ruler foot on the machine. And that's important because this ruler foot allows you to stitch around any ruler template. So here at Sew Steady, we've got all kinds of amazing ruler templates. And we were kind of talking about those earlier when I was showing you our embroidery Lee because the embroidery Lee is inspired by all of those ruler templates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how some of these ruler templates you can use to go ahead and combine with your embroidery designs to be able to finish your projects. So here's our sampler set of designs. And this is one of the design collections that we're going to be giving away for your National Quilting Month. Um, some other design collections that we're gonna be giving away are our feather designs. We've got our feather design right here. Um, and stay tuned because we actually have an embroidery collection for feathers coming out 
next month. And we've been doing so, all kinds of testing on that. We've got some amazing inspiration coming out. We've got our spinning feather designs, which is another really, really great all over quilt design that you're gonna love. And um, those are just some of the designs that we're gonna be giving away. But some of the different ways that you can learn ruler work and really get inspired with projects is by using the education that we have. And here at SoSteady, we believe strongly in education. I know Blaine mentioned we have over 20 educators worldwide. And with those educators comes a ton of education. We have over 250 classes on our SoSteady University. Um, we've got many of those that are free and available to you. Um, and then on top of that, we have books. People love to learn different ways. A lot of the classes we have on the university are video-based classes. But we do have some amazing books you might want to check out. One of them is our, our starter uh, collection. It's our sampler set collection focused book by Janet Collins called our Janet Collins Ruler Design Book. And what she does in that book is she teaches you how to create these amazing ruler designs and make a whole cloth quilt if you desire. But one of the most valuable aspects of that design is just the step outs of how to create an interlocking circle design, for instance. She shows you where to start with the ruler, how to place the ruler, how to move the ruler in a book format. So sometimes I like to learn with both the book and the video and having all those options is really, really helpful. So this is one of the books that you're going to actually be able to take advantage of with your ruler work. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the machine ready for ruler work mode. And I'm gonna get my fabric down here. So this is the project that I was going to actually show you. And we're going to use this amazing sampler. Um, this is our, our dream panel. And I'm gonna use rulers to go ahead and finish around some of the designs that I was working on with, my, with the embroidery. So I'm gonna take some of the embroidery designs and I'm gonna put some of the ruler designs that marry to those. And we're going to do some ruler quilting. So as I said, it all starts with a sew steady table or smooth flat sewing surface. So what we've got here is we've got our smooth flat sewing surface. I'm gonna go ahead and use my sew steady suspension system to help hold up the weight in the back of this. This is a nice big sew steady table. This is our wish table, which is again, the, um, the 22 and a half by 25 table size. But I'm gonna go ahead and use that to help hold up the weight of this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move my machine. So sorry for the noise. And I'm going to get this ready for doing some ruler work. It looks like it wants me to turn it off and turn it back on. That happens sometimes when you switch from embroidery mode to ruler work mode, maybe improperly. Um, and so now I'm going to go ahead and just share with you a little bit of the options you can do with ruler work. I know we only have a few minutes left. So Let's go ahead and take it to look at some of the ruler designs again. Um, there's this template that at first you look at and you think, what would I do with this template? But I will tell you, when you dive into doing some of the small ruler work um, that you need to do around these designs, this little baby template is amazing for echoing. It's amazing for being able to just kind of do simple fill designs. So I'm going to use this template and I'm just going to do some ruler work to show you how simple it can be. So we're gonna head over to our ruler functions, which is gonna be a setting on your machine. Again, that could also be something that is, um, that is just simply uh, built into the machine, or it's something where you're just gonna drop the feed dogs. So it really depends on your machine, how you're going to get in there and do any kind of uh, ruler work. And um, this particular machine, um, there it looks, it looks to me like we are going to go ahead and go into our ruler work setting through, um, let's see here, quilts. And once you get into our quilt setting, we have our quilt styles. Here we go. Nope, not there. Let's see. Where is it in this machine? This is the one tricky thing is sometimes you got to figure out how you're going to find those settings on these fancier machines. I know I'm just about out of time, um, so I can go ahead and take some questions, but I was excited to show you just how simple it can be to do some of the ruler work. 
in how to combine it. So I'm going to show you on this project right here. This is actually our Goodnight Pillow project. And this is a project that uses our starter, our Starry Night collection, which is another really, really popular collection uh, that is in our Embroidery series. And it's got 650 designs in it. And with that collection, you get a font as well as um, over those you know 600 plus designs for ruler quilting um, and finishing your quilts. And so this is actually a combination project. So it uses both ruler work and the embroidery to be able to finish this pillow. And so this is just one example of how simple it could be to be able to finish your projects with rulers and embroidery. And again, this is our Starry Nights collection. With our Starry Nights collection, which is again, one of the amazing um, options that you're gonna be able to win, we are also giving away our Starry Nights ruler collection. So this actually has over 50 different tools to be able to get you going with ruler work um, and Starry Nights designs. It comes with a book, it comes with 20 classes, so this is actually part of our quilting giveaway. Again, guys, we are giving away so many amazing tools that we have here at Sew Study, where we love to just make, elevate your creativity with all of our amazing options. Um, so again, I know that I'm just about out of time, if not over time, but since I don't hear Blaine calling me off, I'll show you a couple more options of things that you have the opportunity to win. Um, so I shared with you our wish table, which is definitely the table that um, all of our quilters wish they would have gotten if they haven't gotten it already. Um, but we do have our bestseller large table, and this is an 18 by 24 table in size. And right now we actually have a package where we've got our large table and a travel bag on sale together. So you have the opportunity to get it in this 18 by 24 size, which is kind of our best bestseller size if you're looking for just a standard so steady table. Um, but again, if you're looking for something a little extra, then we do have our new colorful series. So I wanted to show you that option as well. This is our red colorful table. So we are going to actually be rolling out a new color in um, April and that new color is going to be purple. So we've got a red here um, that's available right now, and that will be available ongoing, but our purple is going to be our next color that we're offering come April. So that's something to consider as well. So again, all kinds of prizes. I tried to get through them all, Blaine. I'm not sure if I did, <laughs> but I did my best. That's really cool. I love it. Thank you. Well, you know, it's National Quilting Month, and I don't know that that speaks to So Steady any other, any better because that's what we do. We love helping people quilt. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Stacy. We're gonna tell them how they can get all this stuff. And also we're gonna give one of your wish tables away or the large table away. Is it the large table or? Large table yeah. with the travel bag. We're gonna give one of those away right now. Awesome, I love it. Okay, right. great. Well, thank you, Stacy. we'll see you soon. All right, everyone. Now these, all the things you saw was so steady, Every bit of it is a call-in special. So you, if you saw anything that you absolutely loved and need to have, give us a call at 800-401-8151 right now and order it because we have specials on every single product. We have a special quilt show uh, price. But let's bring Jane back in, and we're going to do a giveaway real quick for one of the So Steady large tables with the bag. And so, Kennedy... Well, let me show. I have a you got, you got a picture of it? Oh, right, good. A picture of it. There you go. So you've got your... Oh, so my God. That's what we're giving God. away right there, Jane. That is so awesome. That's a great prize. It is a great prize. $150 value. So, Kennedy, spin yes. that wheel. Spin it, Kennedy. She needs something to do anyway. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah, she's thank just you, been thank you for the charity laugh button. back there. <laughs> Liatha Whitney, hanging with us on YouTube. Liatha, you are the winner of the So Steady table. Congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us today, and good job on the big win. Go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize, and you've got 30 days to do it. Blaine, what else does she need to do? 
Well, you know, she just needs to. Uh, oh, with the table. She yeah, she. I was going to say she needs in the notes section on that. She needs to put in the brand of machine she has and the model number because every just for everybody to know, uh, any, all the so steady tables they're custom made to fit your machine because you saw how Stacy put that machine on or that table on that machine she was using. Well, that cutout has to be you know exact. So we, every time you order those, so we, anytime you get a so steady save table, also you know need to plan on like three or four weeks uh, to be able to get your table because they have to custom cut it to fit that. So it's a little process they have to go through. But uh, so anyway, it's uh, they have almost every uh, measurement of every domestic machine out there. So all we need to usually do give them is just the model, you know the the brand and the model. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Blaine, before we move on, can I just give you another joke? Yes. So I meant to do this after my last uh, session with Jane <laughs> Hopridge because my personal writer for the show, Mary Orr, is continuing to send in great material and I cannot, I cannot not use it. So thank you, Mary. Um, why was the stencil so good at coloring? Mm. Oh, this is intricate. Because it stayed inside the lines. Oh, Blaine Austin, oh, you got it. it on the head. Did I really? <laughs> How about that? He's just really good at Google. He just punched it in. Punched it in. Oh, then, Mary Orr, by the way, uh, Michelle was talking, my wife was talking about her last night, said that Mary Orr is uh, big into dog rescues. Oh, that's fabulous, Mary. So way to go, Mary. Mary, way to go, Mary. She's compassionate and kind. She's a comedy writer, and she's also listening to a Zoom call at work. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I know you've got a special guest coming up next, a, a real uh, good friend of mine that I've known for many, many years. So I'm excited to see her. So I'm going to let you take it away. I like it. Thank you so much, Blaine. Okay, everybody, let's move things along. And of course, a very special friend of Blaine and an idol to me, Colleen Sweatman. She is here to talk about the brother, PRS100. Let me tell you a little bit about Colleen. In the mid-1990s, she became fascinated with machine embroidery. It was love at first sight. She loves every aspect of embroidery, from digitizing to seeing the design stitched out on the finished item. Don't we all? Colleen started with the earliest version of the embroidery software and enjoys the many new advanced features and ease of use that are available in software today. If an item can be embroidered, she's probably embroidered on it. So put your hands together and say hello to Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Hello, how are you? So good. Is everybody doing well? Everybody's super Welcome, excited. thanks for joining me. Everyone's excited Everyone's to see excited you, Colleen. Thank you so much for being here. I love this machine. You know, even if you have a different big machine with lots of needles, you're still gonna want this guy because he's really special. I don't know if you knew that, but it's true. Do, do you have a favorite? Is this your favorite? Or do you have like so many of these kids, you can't pick a favorite? Well, see, that's the problem. It's when you have multiple children, you can't say that the, this one's my favorite. I know. I was putting it on the spot. <laughs> yeah. No, I love them all. And every one that I have has a different, you know, a little different twist to it. Yeah. So uh, one of the things, this guy is a great, great way to get into free arm embroidery. And free arm... Man, that's the cool part because, of course, it does regular embroidery, but the free arm is the big part. This is so you exciting. Can stuff, you can do stuff you can't do on your flatbed machine. I love I mean, it. You just can't do it. I'm going to show Probably, you one right here. I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. I'm going to show you one right here. This is a camera bag. Now, nobody carries a camera bag anymore because we all have them on our phones, but I did this a while back and you can see there is no way you could embroider this on your embroidery machine. But on the Persona, it's easy peasy. It just goes right over the arm in the little hoop and stitches away. So to me, this was, huh, this thing is worth its weight in solid gold. So let's get started. Let's take a little bit of a quick look at the screen and I'll walk you through some of the features. Before I do that, I wanna tell you what it comes with, the eight by eight hoop, the four by four hoop, and then the little bitty hoops will let you do stupid things like this camera bag that nobody has anymore, but we all have phone bags, right? Don't you have a phone cover? Yeah, well, most of those get embroidered on too. So let me switch to the machine. 
No. Let me switch there. I'm going to switch to the screen and I'm going to pop right over here because I want you to see that it has this nice screen and it has all these cool designs on it. So the first thing that I always like to show because it's so exciting are these gigantic letters. So there are six of these beautiful, amazing fonts. Now it may gripe at me because I have a four by four hoop on and it may tell me I can't do this. Nope, there it is. There's my B. I'm going to touch the B for brother. And if you look at that, it is almost six inches tall by about four and a half inches wide. So it is a big, bold and beautiful letter for uh, monogramming tote bags or jackets or, you know, anything where you want something big and beautiful. Um, I often do something like this for a wedding gift and I'll put their name in the big letters. So there are six of those fonts, including the Greek, because we can't forget the Greek alphabet for those collegiates. Then we have our normal fonts and we have 13 of those. So you can write and type and put in anything that you want. And I'll, um, no, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you this guy because he's one of my favorites. And I'm going to put up a B. And that one's about an inch tall. So that's a nice size. But wait, I can go to middle sized and he's only a half an inch tall. And I can go to small size and you need a microscope. No, he's about a quarter of an inch, a third of an inch and a quarter of an inch. And why is that fun? Quilt labels, uh, little prayers and poems, little dedications. Um, when my mom was in the hospital, I put some little things on her uh, candy bag that I made her and it. Uh, the nurses had fun reading that. So I'm just going to go back to large and there you see it. So those are all really, really fun. And uh, of course, you have so many of those to work with that it's pretty exciting. So we're going to come out of that. And then we're just going to look at shapes because shapes are very useful. And I'm going to come, I'm going to put the letter in one more time. I'm going to put in the B and I'm going to add a shape to it. Where'd my shapes go? Nope, I went too far. Let me go back. That's the beauty of this. You can just go back. And um, yeah, let me go through the rest of this. You can rotate this, you can change its color so you can see it. This would allow me to do a whole bunch of these. So if I needed to, I could touch this and it would just keep making them. And I do that a lot for patches. I used to have a kiddo in Boy Scouts and we were always doing Boy Scout patches. But you can also do it for multiple items when you're traveling, a, way, a quick and easy way to mark your gear. So that's kind of fun. That, of course, would flip it, and it won't let me flip a letter because that would be silly. This will change the density. Now, the machine will do some of that, but if you're going from an organza to, uh, I'll show you a computer bag I did in a few minutes, the thickness of a computer bag, I may want a little bit different stitch, a uh, little bit different. Multicolor array will uh, let me allow the letters, and then this would do the copy-paste. Now I'm going to get rid of that guy because I want to choose a design. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose the little four leaf clover. It's nearly St. Patrick's Day and we're going to pretend that the four leaf clover is like for St. Patrick's Day, right? So I'm going to push this guy up just a little bit and set him. And then I have a couple of ways I could just add a design and I would do add if I was going to add a different design. But in this case, I can just do copy paste and he allowed me to bring in a second one of the same design. Now I want to make a few changes to him. So I'm going to flip him. So that way his stem comes out the other way. It makes it look a little, little more interesting, I think. And I'm going to go to embroidery. And now that's grouped, I can move it to the center. And I can move it up to the top because I'm going to stitch this on a onesie and I want to move it all the way up to the top. Now you can't see it yet, but I will show it to you in a minute. This has a laser pointer on it and the laser pointer is going to put a little red drop light on the screen. Let me think of the best way to show you that. Oh, I know how I can do it. Um, so that would be cutting on and off. This one is my favorite right now because as you see, I have uh, two of the light greens and two of the dark greens. 
well, I really don't need to change the greens. I certainly could. And I could, I could group them and do by this icon, I could do all the lights and then all the darks, but I'm going to cheat and I'm going to tell it to just make it all one color. Now that grayed out my color changes. And there you go. The next one is to put a basting stitch around it. Sometimes you want to base something. Um, I know if I'm doing leather or certain really fragile fabrics, I won't hoop them because I don't want the leather to get damaged. I was doing some very three millimeter leather the other day. And by having it just basted in, it was really easy. It didn't use that much of my leather. Now I don't need to baste it today, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to move my little fella right back up here where I wanted him to be. And I think I'll tuck him into memory. This machine will go from slow, about 500 stitches, up to 1,000 stitches per minute. And so you can see it's going to take it four minutes to do what it's doing. So I'm going to let it go ahead and I'm going to tuck it into memory so that I can recall it if I needed to at another point in time. And then I'm just going to let it stitch. And while it's stitching, I'm going to show you some finished items that I've done on this machine. And there's a million things you can do. Oh, maybe. Well, we'll get, we'll get to it. Now, this is a little bit of caution. I haven't been able to test my volume while I'm standing beside the running machine. So if you can't hear me, just let me know and I'll stop the machine because I want to talk. I don't. Oh, just kidding. So let's go ahead and tell it to lock because it always is going to lock. And then I can push the green button and let it start. Now, the reason that it locks is so that someone doesn't come along and mess with it. So how is that? Can you hear me over the machine? I'm going to step over here and I'm going to choose a different camera. I'm going to choose the machine camera so you can see it, first of all. So you can see it working smoothly and beautifully. I never get tired of watching embroidery because it's so excellent. And I think Jane told you I've been doing this since there were dinosaurs on the earth. So it's not new. Now here's something I'm going to show you that we haven't talked about yet. And I'm going to go to this camera so you can see it better. This uh, is a hat option. And this does a beautiful, beautiful job on hats. So I put up just a few where you can just put like the little bumblebee and the word happy. And you can't see that very well, can you? I'm dyslexic, so I always turn it the wrong way. Sorry. And this one, we all know what this one's going to say. Brother, yay. And then this one was just a little offset star. This was a fad for a while. They have them all just in that left section. And I think it was because the teenagers always like to wear their hats that way. And then it was in front. But I'm not sure where that fad came from. I'm not hearing her say anything, so I'm guessing that you can hear me all right. Yes? Okay. So here's a couple of other fun things that we can do besides hats. Let me show you this. Oh, it comes with a lovely toolkit. So they provide everything that they think you're going to need. And I like that they do that. They even give you bobbins and uh, spool things for the threads so that it, if you have an icky thread, it won't... Um, it will unwind smoothly. I love that Brother does that with their product. They give you so many, so many tools. All right, let's take a look at a few of these show and tells I brought out here. So this is just my initials on a tote bag. Now that wouldn't be fun on a regular machine because it would be what I call, I'm gonna hold this up a little higher. I did it in the pocket so that I didn't lose the waterproofing of the whole bag. So this is what I would call a vocabulary enhancing experience if I was trying to do it on a regular machine because you'd be fighting all the rest of the, of the fabric behind the pocket. Here's a little fun one. This is a lunch bag. Let's see. I'm going to figure out which camera I'm closest to. Here we go. It says, hands off my lunch. And again, I can just toot this little flap and all the rest of this stuff hangs down and is out of the way. So I love, love the ability of this guy to work. 
Here's another one from a, um, whoops, let's turn it upside right. Now this one is fun because this one is an applique. I'm dyslexic, so I'm gonna do it wrong every time. It's applique. So he just did fun fabric in there. And again, it's another one of those tote bags. I love those tote bags and I give a lot of them as gifts. Here's a beautiful one. This one is a dress up Sunday wear baby onesie. So we're able to use the crest and an initial in the middle. And then you have a, a kind of a go to church or, or birthday party, look really nice um, outfit for your kiddo. Now, this is one of my favorites because these are just fun. And I had them when my, there we go. This is just a name on a bath mitt. And when I have uh, grandchildren or little nieces and nephews come, I have these on the tub. And so there's no fighting over which color washcloth or blah, blah, blah. It's all just very simple. And they can see it with their name right on it and read it and recognize it and feel the letters. And it's just fun for them. Oh, my project is finished. Let me finish my, you want to, um, let me go to the project because I know you're more, no, nope, we're going to finish this because I'm excited about this one. This one is initials again on that little zipper bag. This one is a hot mitt. Now we have a place, family owned place that we rent out occasionally. And what we found is that things would get lost because people would forget, oh, what did I take with me? What did I, what, what whatever. So what I started doing hey, is Colleen. Putting, Colleen, turn, yes. Turn the um you're showing to the other camera. Turn to turn to the main camera. Uh, oh. oh, thanks. <laughs> this one right here. Oh. Uh the one that's looking right at your big machine. Your big the big beautiful machine right in front of you. Right. That machine. That camera, right? I think so. Look look straight at or look over your right shoulder. There you go. That camera. Okay. Yeah. Cuz we know see Okay, isn't that beautiful though? And yes. it's got a pocket. Thank you. So it was Thank you. super, super easy to do on this because you can just stick the arm right into it. So I love these. But what I found was that when people rented our house, sometimes they would forget what they brought and things would vanish. But with my initial on it, it doesn't. Saving me money. Now, this one's huge. Let's see if this works for you. Does that work? This is my dog and a generic phone number. When we first moved to the neighborhood, I had a 120 pound dog and people were afraid of him. And I was afraid if he ever got out of the fence, I wouldn't find him again. So I embroidered on his dog collar. And what I found afterwards, I was talking to a lady I was over in Sisters, Oregon, and there was a lady, they do crafts in the park there. And she was doing her crafts in the park day. And um, she had this machine with her and she was only doing dog collars. And so I chatted with her for just a minute. She didn't want to chat very much because she was really busy, but you know what she told me? She purchased this machine and paid it off in three days of doing dog collars in the park. Yes, it's a busy park. And yes, it was a big craft event. So a lot of people were coming through, but that's how she paid for her machine. Just saying. It's worth the money for sure. Here's another one, and I love this one. This, to you, probably looks like a wine bottle bag because that's what it is. And it's insulated to keep your wine warm or cold. Well, I'm not a wino, but I happen to, um, I, I do love wine, but I happened to be at a show and a fellow came by on a scooter and his, ox his little mini oxygen bottle was rolling back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between his feet. And so we talked and we chatted and, and I said, could you come back tomorrow? And he said, well, sure, I, I'm here for three days. So he came back the next day and I had gone out that night and I had bought a wine bottle bag and I monogrammed his initials on the front flap of it. And now instead of the oxygen bag rolling back and forth between his feet, he put it in here to keep it cool because you need to protect it from the heat and it slides right over the handle on his scooter. So don't just think because something is sold for one project that you can't use it for a hundred different things. Isn't that fun? He loved it. He thought it was great. This is one I wanted to show you because it's thick. It's foamy and padded and thick. And I had no trouble at all putting it on the machine and letting the machine um, 
do my initials for me. Even though that's kind of a, a busy fabric, it still shows up really, really, really well. So now let's go back to the bed of the machine. Whoops, that's not the bed. There we go. And you can see a little red light here. And that little red light is a positioning dot. And with it, I can move it up, down, left, right. I can move it all over and then position my design that way. So that I think is really, uh, really useful. It takes away the mistakeability. And I'm gonna pull this fella off so you can see him a little bit better. And there's my little shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day. And you can see that they were just, I flipped one the other direction because I could. I showed you that when we were going through the things on the screen, how, how easy it is to flip this. I, I personally find this a really exciting machine to have in your repertoire. If you're, if you're only using a flatbed, this is like giving you the keys to the candy store because now you have a free arm and you'll be able to do things with it. And if you, if you don't have a multi-needle because of the, uh, with the free arm, you will really love having this guy because it's got the capability to do these different projects with that free arm. And there are so many hundreds and hundreds of things that, you know, you, I, my friends used to take apart their jeans. Now they don't take them apart anymore because they have the free arm. So that's a big deal. So I think I've kind of run through this quickly because I wanted to make sure we didn't run out of time. Are there questions? No questions. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Well, Colleen, everyone is loving all of your samples that you showed us and loving the demo that you did. It's so cute. Everyone's just saying, I love mine. I love mine. Love the shamrocks. Love the freedom which I think is the most important thing, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, how would you like to try to hoop this in a regular hoop? Mm -mm. No, thank you. Like I said, it makes you think bad thoughts. So if you can just slide it right up over the arm and hook it in and get that perfect design every time. Somebody's I think that's the way to go. It's really great. I love it too. I'm still cutting apart my jeans, trying to get that embroidery going around them. Uh, do you have a hard time hooping thicker items? That is no. gone. No, because remember this this fat boy right here? Mm -hmm. This guy is at, at a minimum a quarter of an inch thick, if not more, because it's got the outside layer and an inside layer and then a foam layer. So no. Here, let me see if I see this is thick. Wow, that is thick. Yeah, is thick. yeah, no, it's an impressive workhorse. It is an impressive workhorse. And everyone's impressed by your friend that paid off the machine th in three days. <laughs> yeah, well, if you want to work three long days in the park, she got it. <laughs> well, yeah, and then she didn't, then she was, uh, she didn't have a payment, so that's that's always good. <laughs> So another fun reason to, to get this machine is I have a friend who does, um, oh, you're looking. Hey, there she yeah. is. <laughs> Hi. I have a friend who does all kinds of, of um, shirts and jackets and hats and things for shows. And then she goes to a particular, like a soccer show or a baseball show or something like that. And she's done something all around the theme of that event. Okay. Yeah. Then she takes this guy along to monogram them. So she'll have 20, 25, 50 shirts ready to go. Well, everybody on the team buys one, but I want my number on mine because all the rest of you have the same shirt, right? So she takes this guy along so she can put on a number or an initial or something just real quick to identify that specific shirt as yours, Jane, and not, or not mine or whatever. So I thought that was a really clever way to do it. And she said she likes this because it's, it's compact. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she's able to, to travel with it. To bring it. And I, I've seen, I've seen that. Uh, that's a great idea, especially too, if you're doing a lot of like craft fairs, I love the idea of bringing it for the team because everyone's going to want it. But if you're out there, you can, you can personalize something right there on the spot. 
Oh, yeah. And the kids are there. You know, they're always there for a couple of hours for a game. So you've got plenty of time. You could do the whole team if they all wanted it. And sometimes that's what happens. One gets it and you show that sample and then mm, well, everybody wants everybody else has to have and it. Then the, and then the parents have to have one and the brothers and sisters have to have. I mean, it's just it's just kind of a snowball and it happens. But it all happens because of the PRS 100. Not your favorite child, but all in the same children. You love them all equally. But today we're focused on this one. Right. She's a hard worker. She is a hard worker. She's I always a hard, hard work. I always say, you know, if you have the flatbed, you need to get this one as well, because more is more and less is a bore. So if you have one machine, you got to get another. I mean, you're absolutely right. And and without the free arm, I mean, this this to me is just killer because. She can do something while I'm sewing on my on my big on my sewing machine. I couldn't agree with you more, Colleen. Thank you so much. I'm gonna tell everyone how to get this today. They must have it today. Okay. All right, thank you, Colleen. She's so great. Uh, great demo, great explanation, even better machine. We love it. This is from our friends at Brother. It's the Persona PRS. 100 single needle free arm embroidery machine. <gasps> Not only Colleen's favorite, but my favorite too. Check out that pricing right there. Four nine, I'm sorry, four four nine nine ninety nine. But you got to call for more information. Just give us a call, 800 401 8151. Now, there's a big price drop and free Durkey four piece easy frame set valued at $249.95 to go along with it. I mean, I don't know, really, do you have to think anymore? She's a workhorse. This is a machine that you want in your stash. And of course, it is from Brother. So you know it is innovative, it is quality, and this is going to be a great machine to add to your sewing room, to your crafting stash, to your passions. So again, call for more information, 800 401 81 51. Thank you to Colleen. Wow, that is so much fun. I love it. Okay, let's move things along here with our next presenter. She was with us yesterday and she's back again today. Aubrey Hartman with the Butler Robotics. We love Aubrey. You got to follow her at quilts underscore EZ. Aubrey is an area sales manager with Butler Robotics. She has a long history with thread, thread, not thread, thread, fabric, and a sewing needle, just like many of us. She's been sewing since she was five years old when she took a kid's quilting class and never looked back. She has a degree in theatrical costume design and loves making her own clothes, especially her yearly Halloween costume. Everyone say hi to Aubrey. Hi, Aubrey. Hi, Jane. Hi, s &P Nation. Glad to see you guys today? again today. We're, we're um, great. We're so happy you're back. Oh, I'm so glad to be here again today for another day of Quill Fest. I just love it. I know. And we love when you share your knowledge with us and we love watching what you're doing. So I'm going to let you take it away and take us into that quilt. All right. Thanks so much, Jane. Hi, everybody. So glad to have you joining me today with my Butler Robotics System. As you can see here, I've got our professional version, which is a 12 inch screen and it comes with 500 patterns and all of the bells and whistles on it. Um, but if this doesn't work for you, we've also got the basic and the deluxe available. So your basic Butler robotic system will come with an eight inch display screen and 150 patterns. And the deluxe version will come with a 10 inch display screen and a 250 patterns and as you go up in model you go up in features so you'll just have to decide what you want and what's going to be best for you what's really great about the butler robotic system is that you've got a universal automation system so it doesn't matter what long arm you're quilting with at home or what long arm you buy during quilt fest this week you can put the butler robotic system on I have a King Quilter 2 here that I got from Sewing Machines Plus, but you could have a Gamel at home, you could have an APQS at home, you could have a Handy Quilter or Grace at home, and you could put this robotic system on. So watch our demos and see what you think, and maybe this will be the right time for you to get it so that you can work on your projects for Quilt Fest next year. 
Um, but we are going to continue along with the quilt that I've been working on this week. Um, I had this in my stash and figured this was a great opportunity to try some different techniques and show you guys the features of the Butler Robotics System. Um, we touched on this on Monday because we had someone who had a question about can you record your free motion? Um, and yes, you can. So I'm going to actually go over that again today since it was just tagged on at the end of my demo then. So I want to go over that again. So anybody who missed that on Monday or I rushed through that a little quick just to squeeze it in. So yes, you can record your free motion quilting. I am not great at it and you will see that as I demo this, but I'm practicing and getting a little bit better. We have a free motion icon here. It looks like a little video camera. And when we touch that, it takes us into our free motion mode. We've got a record button here and we have a save button here on the other side of our display screen. Let me move this over so you guys can see that. So you can turn on your record, you can free motion, and then you can turn it off and save that. So you can bring it up later. You might be really great at drawing designs, swirls, whatever you've got, or maybe you want to add a signature to your quilt and you want to save that so that you can bring it up every time you're quilting. You can do that with this. So I'm going to give it a go and just try and see if I can write my name so that you can see that. Um, I try to follow along with the grid pattern that's in my background so it doesn't kind of go downhill on me. So I'm going to concentrate probably harder than I should because I'm just not so good at it, but I'll give it a go for you. I am going to turn on my record. So when I touch that, it highlights orange. I'm going to move into place first though, but I wanted you to see that I highlight that. As I move away, you can't see things as good. So I'm just going to get to a comfortable place. I'm going to turn that record on and then I am going to free motion with my machine and try to sign my name. And I'm watching the grid pattern on my screen so that I kind of keep everything level and the same height. That's what works for me. You might have a different technique when you free motion. Um, but like I said, I'm still learning free motion. I need some practice at it, but I'm doing okay here. All right, so now that I've got my name, I'm gonna turn off my record. And I'll bring this over here where you guys can see that I did okay today. I got my name on there. So we can go ahead and save this so that if I wanna use this over and over again on quilts, where if I wanna just put that in the corner, I can. So I'm gonna use my save button that I've got here. It looks like a little disc with a pencil. I can touch that and I get a whole keyboard. Um, so this keyboard is gonna allow me to name my little design. So I can name this signature. And this works just like any other digital keyboard. And I can hit my check mark. And it's telling me now that my pattern that I named signature was saved with the tag saved. So when I go back into my patterns, and I'm gonna bring this over here. So my patterns are located over here on the left-hand side of my display. When I highlight that, I can come into my tagged list here and find the word saved. And right here is my pattern signature. So I can bring that up anytime I want. So if I try really hard and get a really good free motion signature, I can save that and bring it up anytime I want. I'm gonna come out of that. The other way we can get words onto our quilt if we're not great at free motion like me is there's a text feature available. So you can actually type out font work and quilt that into your quilt. So I actually did a sample of that earlier because it does take some time to stitch out but I'm gonna show you how to set that up. And then when we're done today, I'll bring the camera down like I have been so you can actually see what it looks like stitched out on the quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and just set us a layout box. And we've been doing that all week together. So I'm gonna highlight layout here on the left-hand side of my screen. When I touch that, I've got my features over here on the right-hand side of my screen. I'm gonna hit my plus sign here so I can start a new layout box. And it says set the first point of my layout box on the bottom here. And I've got my plus sign over here that I'll be using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just set a layout box that I can put my text feature in. 
I usually hover over the corners of whatever box space I want to use with my needle and hit my plus sign just to create a layout box. I work in a counterclockwise motion and I hit all four corners of my box. And when I get to that fourth corner, there's a little green check mark that I can touch and that will complete my layout box. So I know it's kind of pale here on the screen. It is orange and that's difficult with the lighting, but there's my layout box. From here, when I want to add that text, I'll go up to my edit feature and that's the second icon down here on the left. It's got a pencil on it. When we highlight that, we can then come over to the right hand side of our screen and there's a little T here that's kind of crooked and we'll highlight that and this is where our text feature is located. We will click on the click to set our pattern text bar that's down here across the bottom of our screen. And once again, when we do that, we get this great big keyboard where we can type out what we'd like to put in that pattern box. Um, based on the theme of my quilt, I'm gonna use the word retro. So I'm gonna type in retro and hit my check mark. Okay, look like uh, lightning struck two places at once. We lost Jane and lost Aubrey. So um, I think, are they back? Both of them back? Okay, so they're both back. Let's go right back to Aubrey. I have no idea what is happening. All right, Aubrey. Nod if you can hear me. So they don't know what's happening. Well, we're going to give them five minutes to sort it out. Jane, I think Jane is back. I'm back. All right, Jane. So Mary Orr is up to her shenanigans again. Oh, Mary. And she wrote two new jokes. Okay. <laughs> One of them is just for So Steady for Stacy Louie, right? Yep. One of them is for So Steady for Stacy. So won't you tell that joke? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, why was the needle always so calm? Why was the needle always so calm? Yeah. Because it knew how to sew steady. <laughs> That's why it was for Stacy. Okay. Right. That's exactly. Okay. And there's one All for right. your wife. Okay. Uh, hold on. I, I have it in my notes here. Um, oh, because your wife, apparently your wife works out a lot. Loves to go to she the does. gym. I love to go to the gym. So why did the needle go to the gym? I don't know. Because it heard it was a great place to work on its cross-stitching training. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> well, way to go, Mary. That was Mary's great. our show Two writer. Great jokes. She's keeping us in stitches all week. Uh, and I have one for um, Nicole Gilbert from earlier. Remember, she was like, thread, thread is the aha moment. Well, it's not actually a joke, but just remember this. Life is short, but the thread in your stash is eternal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jane. All right, I think Aubrey's giving us a thumbs up. She's ready to go back, so let's go right back to Aubrey. <laughs> oh, come on in, Aubrey. Hey, guys. Going? Hey. I guess the gremlins got us both. The, yeah, I guess so. The gremlins <laughs> wanted us, but uh, luckily Blaine was there to take things along. But we are back up and running, so I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. So we were talking about changing our font and generating our font. So right now I've got my word retro right here that we want to stitch out. But I can change my fonts to the different styles of texts that are available in my robotic system. And when I find one I like, I can just hit generate and it's going to pop up in my box here. I can then use all of my editing features that are over here to move it around in my box and resize it how I see fit. So if I wanted to center it, I could use my move feature that's over here in my edit on the right hand side and I can move it around 
or if I wanted to resize it or rotate it, if I needed to turn it upside down, I could do that too. So you have all of your options to get this stitched on the quilt you need to, but it's great to have this feature available to you because sometimes we want to put new baby names on a quilt, or maybe we want to put a special date like an anniversary or a birth on a quilt. So we could put those special dates on there, or maybe someone's getting married and you want to put the names of the special couple on a quilt. So you've got some options to do all of that text work. And this is really great to have. All right, so now I want to do um, another layout box. And what we're going to do this time is add more than one design to it. So no one ever said you have to just put one design in and repeat it or make it really big. You can take a couple of different designs and add them into your layout space. So I'm going to go ahead and set another box. We're going to do that the same way. And I'm going to hit my layout. That's here on the left hand side. Let me get this in screen for you. I'm going to hit my plus sign on my right hand side. And it says set the first point of my pattern box. So I'm going to come over to this big yellow box that I've got here. It's got kind of a floral pattern in it. I'm going to hover over my top left corner with my needle. And I'm going to hit the plus sign that I've got in the bottom left. I'm going to come down to the bottom left hand corner of my yellow box here. I'm going to hit that plus sign. I'm going to come down to the bottom right corner of my yellow box, hover over that, hit my plus sign. And then I'm going to come up to my top right corner, hover over that with my needle and hit that green check mark. I'm going to bring that back over to you guys so you can see what I have here on my display. I know it's hard to see that orange box, but now we're going to start adding some patterns. So once again, my pattern. Gremlin City, here we come. Okay, everybody, we'll let Aubrey get reset there in uh, with her audio. Oh, there she is. She's back. Oh, but we unmute yourself and oh my goodness, they are just those gremlins. Oh, there. Hi. Hi. Here hey. we are. Okay. All right. Let's keep it's going. Like, it, we've never skipped a beat. I know. I know. Sorry, everybody, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we went into patterns and I've got my whole pattern list here, but I did choose a couple of patterns that I wanna use. So I'm gonna type those in so I don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll because my professional Butler robotic system has 500 patterns loaded on it. So I'd be scrolling forever. Luckily, I know the name of what I want. So I'm gonna hit my little white box and I am going to type in the word sharp because the design I want starts with the word sharp. I'm going to hit my little green checkbox here. And right here is the design I'd like. It says sharp star. I'm going to hit that and hit my green check mark. Now I've got a big design here, but I want to make it smaller. So I'm going to shrink this down and I'm going to do that by using my touch screen because what's great about the Butler robotic system is you get this wonderful full color touch screen when you make your purchase. So if I touch on my design, I get all these little nodes around my design and the little blue nodes are going to allow me to shrink my design just by touching my screen like you would with your cell phone. So I'm going to just grab this little blue node in the corner and just shrink this little guy in some. I think that looks pretty good because a little outside of my pattern box, I'm gonna bring it down from the top edge too. So that's a good size, but I want one of those in every corner. I've got a plus sign over here that I can duplicate my little design and it's gonna duplicate in the size that I just made it. So I'm gonna duplicate it three times. I now am able to grab those designs because I've still got my little highlight around my last one I added. And the green node that's in the center is my move node. So I can grab that little green node and drag my design across my screen. I love having a touch screen. So I can grab and move all of my designs individually. 
I'm just touching on that one using the green node in the center and dragging it across my screen. So now that I've got one of these in each corner, I think I want to rotate it. I'm going to start with my first one and I'm going to use my rotate button and that's over here on the right hand side of the display. It looks like a little square on point with little squiggly arrows on the corner. And when I highlight that, I've got little 45 degree angle buttons and that's really all I need because I just want to turn these just on a 45 degree angle. So I like that and I can use my arrow up here to page to the next design if I want to and turn that on point or I can touch the next design and turn it on point. So you can use a combination of your touch screen and your editing features to open them up and use them. You don't have to use one or the other, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Sometimes I'm more comfortable using my move feature with the node, but my rotate feature, I like opening up the actual feature button. So now that I've got these all rotated, I think I need something in the center. I'm gonna go back to patterns and type in another pattern that I picked out. So the other pattern I picked out is called pinwheel. So I'm gonna type in pin and hit my check mark. And right there is my pinwheel design. I'm gonna highlight that orange and hit my check mark again. And you can see that I've got a giant pinwheel and my little block is over here. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of sizing again. I'm gonna go ahead and touch on that and use those blue nodes that we talked about to shrink this in to fit the size of my box again. So I'm gonna shrink this down from what I can see, but this is kind of small for me to work with. So I'm just gonna hit my layout button and now I can see it a little bit better and then I can go back to edit and do some fine tuning here. So it's mostly in my pattern layout box, but I can grab this side and extend it out a little bit. I can center it just a little bit more down here on the bottom and stretch it just a hair if I want to. And it needs to come down just a little bit at the top. So what I'm looking at that you may not be able to see is this design has a green box around it that those nodes are floating on. And I wanna make sure that that green box is inside my orange pattern layout box. That way I know my design is gonna fit inside that square that I laid out here on my quilt. So now that this is all laid out the way I think I want it, I've got five designs here. I wanna turn that into one design so it's a little bit easier when I go to stitch it out. I have a button here for me to combine my designs over on the right hand side of my screen. So right now, when you look at this, I've got lots of little start and stop points that are indicated by all these, um, they're red squares, that's my stop point and underneath them are little green dots. If I hit my combine button, it's now combined all those designs together. I have one green start point and one red stop point. So now this has all become one design and when it stitches out, it's gonna all work as one. I like that. I'm gonna wanna use this multiple times on my quilt, but I don't wanna have to do this every single time I wanna do it. We have a save button over here on the right hand side of our display that looks like a little disc with a pencil on it. So we're gonna save this so we can use it whenever we want. I'm gonna hit my save button and we, once again, we get this really nice keyboard to use and I'm gonna call this SMP Quilt Fest because that's the quilt I'm working on. It's my Quilt Fest quilt. I'm gonna hit that check mark and it's again gonna give me my pattern that I named Quilt SMP Quilt Fest is being saved under my tag saved so I know where to look for it. If I hit okay, I can go back to my patterns and just double check that it's where it said it's gonna be. So I can scroll down my tags, find the tag that says saved. Oops, I didn't touch on the right one. And right here it is, my design that I just created that says SMP Quilt Fest. So I can bring that up and quilt it on anything I want. I'm not gonna go ahead and quilt that out right now since we're running out of time because our gremlins got us, but I will quilt that out to show you guys tomorrow. 
but I do want to show you what we quilted out um, from last night because I did those cotton puffs in the border. So um, we talked about that and showed how that went yesterday. And I want to show you the text feature all quilted out because I did that this morning so that you could see a full sample of that done. So I want to take you guys down off the stand so you can see what all that looks like. And Lindsay, if there are any questions out there, we could probably get those answered too. Is there a limit, excuse me, is there a limit to how many patterns you can put on? Um, the limit for how many patterns you can load onto the Butler robotic system is a huge, enormous number. So you'd have to load tens of thousands of patterns to hit that. So I'm gonna say, no, there's not a limit you'd have to have quite a collection of imported patterns to hit that. So with the professional, you're starting at 500 and there's tons and tons of room for you to import whatever you like. All right, I'm gonna get you guys down here. And the first thing I wanna show you is this right here. And I'm gonna try to get kind of hovering over the text. I know it's gonna be a little hard to see, um, but you, you can probably see the quilting. I wrote mid-century modern because that's the type of furniture that's on these little blocks here. Um, so it's typewriter text is what I chose. So that's what this actually looks like. So you can see text all stitched out. And then we're going to come on over to the block that we did yesterday where we did the border with the little cotton candy puffs. And then we clipped out the center or cropped out the center. So I actually put a separate design in the center. And then you have all those little teeny cotton candy puffs in the border. So it stitched just in the border and didn't go into our center block. So that's a great feature to fill in borders on blocks like this if you don't wanna use the point to point feature. I did use the point to point feature on another block over here. So I stitched it out in the same style that we did, I think it was on Monday, but I shortened our design and then duplicated it in reverse so that we've got it kind of back to back. And I thought that made a really cute look. Um, can you go over the file types for patterns again? Okay, so someone wants to know what our file types are for our patterns again. So when you're purchasing off of a quilt design website, you can purchase QLI, QCC, and DXF patterns. That's what our robotic system can take. Um, you just wanna make sure those are the file types you purchase so that they are compatible. And then is there a way to scale your pattern so that it doesn't like go really fat or really tall, like stay proportional. Okay, so the question was, is there a way to scale the pattern so it doesn't get really fat or really long? We want a proportional scaling. Yes, there is a uh, proportion lock on your scale feature that is available um, on the mid-level and top-level robotic system. It looks like a little pat or a little key lock here on the corner. Well, I think the Grevelins have gotten the best of, there she is, there's Aubrey. <laughs> hey, Aubrey. I think they maybe got the best of you as you were just wrapping things up. You're still on mute, but if you want to just give us, finish your thought, and then I'll let everybody know how to get this amazing machine. Yes, I was saying there was a proportion lock on the mid-level deluxe and the top-level professional system where it will lock your design and scale it proportionally for you. Amazing. Aubrey, is there anything else? We have a, we have a couple minutes, but if, is there anything else that you want to finish? 
Um, I think that finished everything for today. So I can't wait to stitch out this design so I can show it to you guys tomorrow. I am right. loving all the work that I'm getting to do on this quilt and sharing it with everybody. Isn't it fun? You're like working and having fun at the same time. Um, I, I know. I love it. It's it's hard to see a little bit, but you can see, um, you know, when you did the the letter blocks in the, the newsprint type, that was really cool. Yeah, it is a fun feature and it's a great way to really personalize that gift that you're making for someone as if it's not enough to give someone a beautiful quilt, then you can add awesome. a special name or a date on it. It's, it's so really great. wonderful. I love giving the gift of anything handmade. So, and then personalizing it. Oh, it's just so much better. Aubrey, thank you so much. Uh, go beat up those gremlins and we will see you again tomorrow, right? Sounds great. Thank you, Jane. Okay. Thanks, Aubrey. Okay, everybody. Aubrey Hartman uh, doing an amazing job with that presentation. I think she slayed those gremlins because we got her last. All right. Let's tell everybody how you can get your hands on this amazing Butler Longarm Quilting Robotics dis display. Now, you've got three different versions here. This is the basic edition we're showing you here right now. That's the eight inch uh, display. You're seeing the quilt Best pricing right there for four three five nine. But guess what? There is a call in special, so you're gonna call in. Um, let me quickly tell you what you get with this basic edition because then everything when we move on to the deluxe and then the professional, just you get the basic plus plus plus. So here's your basic you are getting, um the connection with any long arm quilting machine, the, it's manual mode only, no handlebar cable or ports. You've got the pan, pan, uh, the block patterns, pantograph. Thank you. Panographic, uh, block patterns, repeat auto fill scale, mirror, rotate and pattern nesting, integrated help videos, nesting layout, creation and saving pattern merging, save altered patterns, 10 levels of undo and 160 free patterns. Again, call in special for the eight inch basic edition. We'll move on to the deluxe edition, and that has a 10-inch display screen right there. You see the pricing, just a bit more, 5949 but again, it is a call-in special, 800-401-8151. We get everything you get from the basic plus, 260 free patterns, record, channel locks, text crop, morph, quilt layout guide, automatic scaling, and point to point. So if you want just a little bit more, I think this is a really great value. And then finally, we've got the professional edition that has a 12 inch display screen. And again, the pricing, if we always say more is more and less is a bore. I think if you're going to go for it, you go for the professional 5999 call in special 800-401-8151. You get everything from the basic, you get everything from the deluxe plus additional points or additional fonts, point to point channel locks and 500 free patterns. And again, I think we talked about this yesterday that this is basically the same price as the deluxe. So if you're going to get one, you might as well get the professional. Am I right, Blaine? I know. You are right, Jane. Thank you. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's kind of a no brainer right there. Uh, you know, the price, uh, you know, uh, Butler Robotics is very generous enough for Quilt Fest to lower the professional price down to that deluxe price. And so, yeah, yeah. just uh, you might as well just do the upgrade and uh, get the best one uh, for the same price. And uh, again, you know, uh, all three systems are exclusive for sewing machines plus for what you're getting in each system. Uh, you can't get those anywhere else but Sewing Machines Plus. You can get Butler Robotics, but you can't get those exact same designs and, and things. So these are unique for us, and uh, they will fit on any long arm machine out there on the market. Uh, there's a, I mean, a huge uh, list of machines that it's, you know, will work on. So uh, if y'all have any questions about that, just give us a call, and our, our folks in the call center can actually, uh, you know, tell you which ones it'll fit. Sounds great, Blaine. I love it. <laughs> All right, Jane. Well, hey, we're going to continue on. I'm not going to answer the phone, but call me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to continue on. Uh, Jane, I'll see you back in here in about an hour. So Jane can have her little break and go check on her hubby's knee. I think he's home in, in uh, bed with a, after a knee surgery. And uh, she's shaking her head yes. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, We've got a special treat for you next up. We have got Kelly Latre from Juki back in the house. 
And we're going to talk all about that TL2000 with the fabric frame. And uh, if y'all didn't catch it when we introduced Kelly uh, yesterday, Kelly is the national account trainer at Juki America. She's an accomplished performance driven territory manager with a strong background in operational management, budgeting, staffing, inventory control, training development, and customer service. And she is just dynamite with product knowledge when it comes to anything Juki. Uh, we've had her on our show many, many times, and we welcome her back. So y'all make a big welcome, SMP Nation welcome for Kelly Latre. Hi, Blaine. How you doing today? I am awesome today. I tell you what, it's been a great day. Uh, we have had a big, huge event going on. Uh, you know, our studio is actually in the back of the San Marcos retail store, as where we're at today, and in the San Marcos classroom today. They had a huge event going on, had about 80 people here uh, with Sweet Pea Designs. And uh, so they were all in the house. So we've been just having a blast here today. And between uh, when we're not on on, on camera, we've been uh, having a lot of fun. So and then having a lot of fun on camera. So it's been a great day so far and it's getting better. So I'm glad you're here. And I know you got a lot to talk about with this. So I'm gonna let you get started and uh, I'll come back in just a little bit and tell them how they can get this great special today. Sounds good. Thanks, Blaine. It sounds like you guys are so busy all the time. It's great. Quilters, I have a question. Do you have a lot of UFOs, those unfinished projects? Perhaps they're quilt tops like me. I love to piece, but do you send out your quilts to get finished or does a friend do them on her long arm? Or are you simply having sticker shock when looking at long arms? This may be an alternative for you. This is the Juki tabletop frame coupled with a domestic machine. Yes, you can quilt with a domestic machine in this portable tabletop frame. This machine is the TL2000QI, which is a classic in our straight stitch series. And those of you who know about the TLs love the TLs, coupled with the frame. Now, I am a person that's learning to quilt, so this is a, a one way to do it also if you have an rv i a friend of mine has a long arm but she takes her quilting with her when she goes on vacation so a second house a long uh, uh, or an rv would be great now let me talk quickly about the frame and then the machine and we'll get uh sewing show you all about it so for first of all i built this frame in about an hour it was easy to put together with great detailed instructions. And it's portable. When I don't have my machine on it, actually, if you can see the carriage on the right, the machine is being supported by a carriage. So I can take the machine off and put it back into my studio and use it for piecing. But while I'm working on a quilt, I use it in the frame. So the frame is assembled. Basically what it is, is a bar here to support uh, the majority of the quilt and back here to support when you start. And then of course, when you quilt in zones, we're gonna move that around. So after I sew, I'm gonna show you how that is set up. But let's talk about this machine, this fabulous TL2000QI. This is our in our straight stitch series and is considered semi-professional because it is a heavy duty machine. It is has an aluminum frame like all our TLs do, and it's capable of going 1500 stitches per minute. That is fast. On this side of the machine, I have a stitch length dial that goes from zero to six millimeters. And it's a little thing, but that six millimeters I love for a basting stitch. I also have a needle up down. And when you're using the frame, it's always a good idea to have the needle in so you can start where you left off, so to speak. So that's an important tool. I also have a thread cutter here, a reverse lever. And down here, I have a lever to lower the feed dogs. And I have done that today. I have set up mach my machine for free form quilting so that we can um, have some fun. So when I open this, there is a light. It also has a pressure adjustment for the presser foot. Whether you're sewing silk, denim, or leather, 
This machine cuts through it without a problem. It's fast and it gives you the best straight stitch on the market. Great machine. It also has a needle threader built in. And I'm going to show you the needle threader because when I'm at shows, what I hear all the time is how to use that needle threader. Once you tame it, it's fantastic. So all I'm going to do, and you may not see it, so go to our website. We have a video on it. Push it down firmly. Remember, this is semi-professional. You can push it down firmly. I'm threading from the left to the right. And then I'm just going to release the threader. But I did what generally I wasn't going to do is pull the thread out. <laughs> so when you get to this point, don't pull the thread. In fact, let it be because what it's doing, I can't talk and thread my needle apparently. There we go. Uh, it's pulling that thread through the eye of the needle. So now my needle's threaded and unthreaded. Ha ha, did that myself get to do it again that's all all right so we've got our needle threaded and i won't pull out the loop there we go this machine takes standard needles for sewing and let's talk about the bobbins the bobbins are the l series for juki they are metal bobbins and what i suggest you do before you start quilting is you'll want to wind several bobbins so you are ready to go when that bobbin comes out. And I, you can access the bobbin from here if I pull up my handlebars. Now, talking about the handlebars, these handlebars are adjustable out and up and down. So you want to make sure it's comfortable for you. You want to make sure you can go back and forth and you're comfortable. So if you want to bring these a little forward, you can or angle them whatever you want to do. So with my machine in place, I'm excited and ready to go. Uh, let's talk about the foot pedal. The foot pedal on the Juki is a special foot because the power is on the blue. You want the ball of your foot to be on this part of the foot. And remember, it goes 1,500 stitches per minute, but how do you control that? There is actually a micro computer chip in here that will enable you to go slow and fast as you need to. So it's not going to take off or go very slow. And then the ankle will cut the thread if you wish to do that. So that's a nice feature to have on the machine. I'm going to put this on the floor, but notice I have an extension on my foot pedal and I have thread typical for my sewing area. Uh, this extension comes with the frame. So it enables me to put the pre or the power pedal down on the floor. So how do you run this? Some people stand, some people sit. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And I actually brought a bench because somebody said to me, why are you standing? I sit when I use mine. So whatever you like to do. So let me show you a little bit about the frame. When you set it up, and again, I'm going to sew first and then show you how to set the quilt into the frame. So what I want when I'm done setting up is I want to make sure that I can move where I want to sew. Okay, so I'm moving the carriage that's holding the frame, and this is my sewing area. Okay. So that's what I want to be very aware of. Now, before putting the quilt in the frame, I have made, you know, I put uh, my top on, my batting, and then my backing. And let's talk about leaders. You can use leaders with this. And the leader is a piece of fabric you use so that you can quilt or straight to the edge of your quilt if you want to. I bought a little extra fabric and I added extra batting and I add an extra backing so that I could use that instead of a leader. You know, when I'm doing little quilts, this is a little crib quilt that I'm working on. And over here, I actually made my own leader just to make this taut over here. So whether you use leaders or not, that's totally up to you. Probably for a bigger project, I would, because on this small frame that's portable, you can do from a lap quilt to a king. 
And the key is quilting in zones. So for example, for this quilt, what I'm doing is I'm meandering and making little loops around the bear and in the bear so that they kind of look like balloons. So I've done the first two, I'm gonna do the third, and then I would shift my quilt over to do these two, and then probably put a leader on here to keep it taut. So before you even load it, think about where you wanna sew and where you wanna get the majority of the quilting done and plan your project. Actually, I think the first thing you do before you start on a quilt is buy it like three yards of fabric batting and backing and play. Get used to where the sewing zone is so you're not surprised when you get on your first project and you're going, wait a minute, this is my sewing zone. So that's what you want to do. I started with my quilt over the bar in the back. I put it under my presser foot. And then once I had that area straight, I rolled it up on this side, put it, it over the bar here, and then clamped it in place. There's two large clamps that come with it that go to the front, and then there's three clamps that go to the back. There's also two clamps that come with it, and I have one here. It's for the sides, so if you want to clamp that side down, you can. So how do I quilt? So what I can do is I'm gonna bring this up to where I wanna go, and I'm gonna work on my third uh, thing. But be aware of your sewing, because you don't wanna do this. You just wanna make sure of the sewing zone. And actually, when I started with this, I would mark where my sewing was. So I knew where the end was, and I knew where the beginning was. It's a little thing, but remember to lower your presser foot or else the tension will look like uh, loose loops on the back. When I have my presser foot up, it's easy for me to pull this thread. When I have it down, you can see it's just right above that, that quilt and easy to do. So I'm gonna start, I'm actually gonna start over here so I can just bring up my bobbin thread. So I'm gonna use the needle up down to bring up that bobbin thread. And what I'm using for a presser foot is the open toe quilting foot by Juki. There we go, I got it. Okay, so the other options are there's several quilting feet we make make sure it's a high shank and made by juki because we do make the best parts in the industry uh but this is a quarter inch foot that also is available and uh that could be another alternative there's also an echo quilting foot so you can go on our website and check out the options that you have so bought that brought that bobbin thread up and get your a uh, power pedal in a place where you're sewing so you can coordinate that. So now that I've got that up, I'm just going to take a couple of stitches in place and then start quilting. Got it right on the edge so it should work great. And I, I tend to put this, I'm going to back it off of my cutting table so that I have the room to move. So there we go. I'm taking a few stitches. Now the key is, and I'm still practicing, is to get a st steady speed so you can get a nice steady stitch. So I'm working on my use. There we go, let's get a nice, there we go. And then I'm gonna start looping. Whoops, and there, that's what I, you wanna avoid. So marking the sewing area is a really great idea. Look at that though, it looks good. Okay, now I'm going to, I got to get my speed even, make some loops here. Oh, this is fun. Once you get it all set up, it's a blast. And now I'm going to make a loop here, make a U, make a loop down here, come up. And I'm just going to stop where I started and take a few stitches, okay? Then I can cut those threads. Woo! 
I could do that all day long. It's so much fun. So let's talk about setting up the quilt because that's the most important. Just like when I do my embroidery, I spend time hooping it because if it's hooped correctly, you'll get fantastic results. Same thing with this. I think I spent an hour on hooping this quilt just because I'm getting used to this frame and it's fun to use, but the first thing you'll want is accuracy. So I'm gonna cut this, okay? And I'm gonna show you how I did this. I'm gonna take the hooks off back here. Now, let me tell you, it looks like they, they're tight, but there's ample elastic in there to do a king quilt, a queen quilt, whatever you wanna do. So if you haven't taken the jump yet to a long arm and are kind of on the fence, you may want to try a tabletop frame. So I'm going to show you the clamps. They come off from the back. They're the smaller ones. There we go. That easy. So what I'm going to do, and let's make this, take this clamp off too. There we go. So now when you start, first, the important thing is to determine your sewing area. Where do you want to quilt? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this to the back and over the bar. Okay. And I'm going to do that back here so it's nice and even. Okay. And once I, oops, once I get it all set. So what I tend to do is I have a marker, but I have it lined up such that I can see a little bit of that blue fabric. Okay, and I'm gonna go real, real. I'm gonna take these off too. This is the front of the fabric. and. As I sew in zones, I'm going to shift this front to back and left to right. So I'm going to take these off too. So those are two bigger clamps that I'm going to remove. Okay, and you can see that I have the, the quilt all rolled up here. So I'm just going to kind of hopefully balance that as I put this front on. So when I put the front on, it's important to make sure it's straight and it's the location you want. So I'm going to go down and put these clamps on. And check my alignment. Ooh, that looks good. There. Very nice. And then the third down on the end. And making sure it's straight. I've got a little higher than normal, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so once I push those down, before I roll those up, I like to take my fabric here and see where I am. So I can now move this and see where my sewing zone is going to be. So that's a nice thing. And then you just want it taut. And I'm going to bring this over. And these clamps in the front are too. And here's a really nice hint is that Juki's always in front. You can always see that. So that makes it easy to place them. Beautiful. And then I'm just gonna, oops, there we go. Get that on there better. Usually I don't uh, roll the quilt until after this. So I would be rolling the quilt and then the hooks are attached to the frame. So you can probably see how the frame now is. You take that carriage off, you take the machine off, 
You can pop it into a closet. You can pop it under the bed. Very easy. But if you've been thinking about a long arm and just haven't gotten there yet, this is the way to start. You can start finishing all those tops you have on your own with a tabletop frame. So I'm putting these all in and I'm also going to do this in the back too. There we go. The hooks are nice in place. It's nice and taut. I actually check the tautness right before I start quilting. So excuse me. I am going to go back here and then just do the same thing back here. Let me sneak around you there. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to do this, fold it up in the back. And let me tell you, if you miss hooking one, you'll run into it. You'll know. Because it's probably not going to be as taut in that area, and it's going to be in your way. So now I'm pulling this last part up and putting it over. And you're good to go. So that's how you do it. You just put it over the back bar, under the needle, over this bar. And just, again, the most important thing is to check your sewing zone. Check how high you can go. And actually mark it with tape. I probably should get back to marking that. But if I wanted to just sew this whole line right now, I could. And then I'm going to do the last two squares once I shift the uh, quilt. So what I my game plan is to fill in all the squares and then shift it around so it it's going to be meandering loops. I'm so excited because this is my first project on it. So remember, get a few yards of fabric and play before you start on your quilt. You'll know then how to set up that sewing zone. You'll know how to shift the quilt once you're done with one. And I think needle up down is really important. So remember, Blaine is going to give you a deal today on the Juki table as well as the TL2000QI. And this is a great combination for quilting because you've got the 1500 stitches per minute. You have needle up down, you have that thread cutter. And when I'm not quilting on this, I love to do tabletops and things like that. There's so many possibilities with this and it doesn't have to be up all the time. You can store it away and have it ready when you're ready to go. So this is the Juki tabletop frame and the TL2000QI straight stitch. And a couple of people asked questions the other day. So yes, I want to make it clear that you can take the machine out and use it for other things. This can be stored. And it's just like quilting. You put your sandwich together, which is a whole nother thing I'm learning. And then you can begin by quilting your quilt tops that are sitting there waiting for you to finish. How exciting is that? So remember, it's easy to construct. It comes with directions. There's a video on how to construct it. You'll be quilting the same day you set it up. So have fun, relax, and like my cameraman says, take a breath, relax, and play. I think the most fun I had was when I just got three yards of fabric, put it in here, and started my uh, lesson on freeform quilting. So I'm still working on that. It's a fun process. So if you're looking and don't have the space, or if you just want an addition to a long arm, whatever your story is, keep quilting. This is a really, really great alternative. So I think I've gone on so long. I'm going to check in with Blaine because I'm very excited. This is so much fun. If I could just sew the whole <laughs> time, I would. Well, great job, Kelly. And, uh, you know, we've got a really great special on both of those products. So I'm going to tell them all about it and we'll see you again here tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, everyone. Now this was the TL2000 that we, the machine that she was using. 
Now, again, this is that long arm quilting machine, $699, but we have a call-in special on it. So if you're interested in this, it's going to come with that extension table. Uh, it is a great machine just on its own. But if you want the ultimate combo, you're going to, you know, combo it up with this fabric frame. And you can see that fabric frame right there. Now, the price on that is $889. We have a terrific call-in special on this today. So you make sure you give us a call. Now, here's the great thing. If you want a great combination, the machine, the Juki with this fabric frame would be a great combination to get you started into long arming. And it's the great st straight stitch machine. However, if you just want a fabric frame and you already got a good machine at home, this will accommodate any domestic machine you have at home will fit on this frame and you can just get the frame and put it with your existing machine. So great two combos, but we have a fantastic price on the combo and we have a fantastic price on the frame by itself. Give us a call right now. 800-401-8151. They are both in call-in specials. This is the only way you're going to get the quilt fest pricing. We have some financing available, and naturally, we're going to ship it nationwide absolutely free. So, All the are, wink, wink. wink, wink. They are wink, wink. <laughs> As y'all know, uh, a lot of times, and I just want to explain this again, when we say it's a call-in special, that means you have to call in because most of the manufacturers in the United States have what they call MAP pricing, which means minimum advertised price. So when they have a price set at a minimum advertised price, we can't say it or advertise it lower than that price. However, if you call us, we can tell you what the specials are. So when we have it. So that's how you get the deals. You got to call. And uh, when sometimes we have them, when they make a, a price with us, uh, we can actually put it on our website and tell you. Uh, but uh, so when I say, you know, wink, wink, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we are going to move on. And hey, we have got another terrific educator coming up next. And I tell you what, we're going to go in the world of baby lock. And we're going to talk all about that six needle array today. And well, everybody's wondering why, hey, this is a quilt fest. Why are we having embroidery machines on here? Well, because the new thing out there is to combine embroidery with your quilting to have very, very unique quilts. And so a lot of people are doing that. And that's why we're highlighting some embroidery machines as well. But we have Melinda Stevenson and our good buddy from down in Florida. And y'all know Melinda's been on her many times, but throughout her time at Baby Lock, uh, you know, uh, she has been an, uh, an educator. She is, uh, Melinda has made an important discovery. She's learned that people who send, uh, so tend to be smart, creative, and determined. And I would 100% agree with her on that. Uh, these are the people who make the world a better place. They are givers. The majority of their sewing tends to be for, peop for other people. And that generous spirit is contagious and brings her so much joy. And uh, so very well said, Melinda. I like the way she said that. And she said, connecting with those people is her favorite part of teaching. We are healthier when we are in a community and teaching engages me and this fabulous community of men and women who love to learn to sew. So great, great uh, quote by Melinda there. And guys, she is one of the sweetest ladies I know. So y'all welcome to the show, Melinda Stevenson. <laughs> Thank you so much, Blaine. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really excited about this machine. Um, this is well, one, this is one of my really favorite machines. So. I know. Well, you know, I you, I kind of tell people all the time, and we've even talked about some other people that's been on the show. You know, you're kind of a serger expert, and then you're kind of a, an embroidery expert. So it's it's like you know, I, you know, you do it all. I mean, it's. I <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I do it. It's so much fun though. You know, you just, it's like one of those things that you start doing and then you look at the clock and it's like 1130 at night and you're thinking, oh my gosh, where did all my time go? But it's really fun. Surging and embroidery, super fun. And especially on this machine. <laughs> well, I know the machine today, you know, and like I just said in the intro, you know, it's I'm finding more and more people are incorporating embroidery in their quilts. Yes. So, you know, to do that, you need a very good embroidery machine as well. So I mean, you can't beat this one. So I'm gonna let you take it away 
And Melinda, right. I'll be back in about 30 minutes. I'm going to tell everybody the special we have on this today. All right, great. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Vine. So I really love this machine. Um, I, you know, I have single needle embroidery machines, but this machine is so lovely. One of the things I love about this machine is that you can pretty much walk away from it. And there is this something that we have called IQ monitoring. And our IQ monitoring, I'm going to pull up a picture here in just a second. IQ monitoring allows us to walk away from the machine and still be able to keep up with what it's stitching. OK, so it's going to look something like this. And I'm going to change cameras now so that you can kind of see what this IQ monitoring does. And what happened just a few minutes ago, I was um, uh, embroidering a baby onesie. I have a grandbaby coming in a couple of weeks. And so I was embroidering a baby onesie, but I wanted to walk outside because it's gorgeous outside. It's like 71 degrees. And so I was able to walk outside around my backyard and keep an eye on what my machine was doing. Okay. So let me change cameras here and show you what that looks like. Okay. So here is, oh dear, you're not going to be able to see that, are you? Let me see if I can get a little bit closer to the camera. There you go. So this is IQ monitoring and you can see that what it tells us is how many minutes I have left. And it also, if I should have a thread break or if I should run out of thread, it shows me that. So it's really nice. I can walk out of um, my sewing room and go into the kitchen and cook or, you know, do laundry or go outside and take a walk or do some gardening, whatever I want to do. And that's that's really helpful for me. So one of my very favorite things about this machine. And because of that, um, because it has the uh, Wi-Fi capabilities, you can also um, create you can also create designs and send it to your machine. But let's talk about um, why I love the six needle machine. Like I said, let me move my mic over here so that you can hear me. Like I said, one of the things that I really love to do um, is embroider for my grandbabies. And this is a little onesie that um, I'm in the middle of embroidering. And you can see that this is a newborn onesie. OK, so that's like the that's like a itty bitty, itty bitty onesie that is very difficult to embroider on your regular embroidery machine. But on the um, six needle, it's easy because what you're doing, the way you hoop this and I'm going to unhoop this because I'm, I'm I can I can go back in because I have some really cool um, abilities on this machine to center my design and get it right back where I wanted it to be but I'm going to pop this out and I'm going to show you how easy it is to hoop these little onesies so what you do is you simply put your hoop inside of your onesie okay and this is true for bags and you can see that I've embroidered this bag this is true for any kind of small space. So you're going to put it in here and then the hoop goes on top, right? And so you just kind of squish it in and then I'm going to put it over here on my machine. So let me show you what that looks like when I put it on the machine. I'm going to change my camera one more time and let me get my, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the, there's the bed of the machine and what you're going to do is you're just going to slide it in here and see that that goes in between the top and the bottom of your onesie. So you never, ever, you know, stitch on your onesie and it's just super easy. Look at that. I just pull it under there. And if you if you get under, if you could see under there, you can see that my um, machine, the bottom of my machine goes inside the machine bed, even though it's a little teeny tiny arm, goes inside of the onesie and it never stitches on top of it. And I'll show you another thing that I really like about this machine. So let me let me change my camera real quickly again. So what happened on this little onesie is I made I put a hole in it accidentally. OK, there's my hole and that hole needed to be fixed because I only had two onesies and I needed to embroider this one. And so what this machine enables me to do is create appliques in the machine that then enabled me to cover up that hole of this onesie. So let me show you how that works. OK, I'm going to show you all the cool editing. Well, I'm going to show you a few. Won't be able to show you all of them, but I'm going to show you a few of the wonderful editing features on this machine. Let me see if I can get the glare off of my bed. All right, there we go. I think you might be able to see that. Okay, let's get that camera angle down there. Y'all yell at me if you can't see it. Okay. 
All right, there we go. Okay. Whoop. Let's get it stabilized. There we go. Okay. All right. So you can see, I'm going to go back to my home screen. I'm, I'm erasing this pattern that I was just using. I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'm going to show you some of the features. If you have a baby lock machine, um, you're going to be fairly familiar with the front of this because most of these, most of our machines operate in very similar ways. Okay. So you can see right here on the home, you've got your machine comes with one, two, three, four hoops from the biggest hoop which is um, 11 by 14, all the way down to the smallest hoop. But you can also order even smaller hoops. And I'm going to show you a hoop in just a few minutes that you can use in order to create, you can embroider on tennis shoes, okay? You can embroider on like a converse tennis shoe with this machine. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so built-in designs, okay? You've got your really fun, easy designs, but you also are able on this machine to pull in any design that you want to. But these built-in designs are really quite lovely. I love this ship. The ship looks really pretty on um, black and white as a, as a wall hanging, really, really nice. I'm gonna go to the quilting over here and, and you can see that we have several quilting designs that look really nice. Um, this is a nice one because you can take, you can pull this one in and then we can set it. And then you can put some initials inside of this. You can put your own initials. So that is super easy to do. Let me show you how you might do that. Okay, so there's, we've got the um, quilting design in there. And so let's go in here and let's just find an, a script. Now, one thing about this machine, you're gonna see that it's got a ton of scripts, 40 different, 49 different scripts, 46 of them are English and then they're all different sizes, varying sizes. So if you're interested in creating an embroidery business, this machine is fantastic for that. OK, so let's say that you just want to um, give some put an M in here. OK, let's say that you're creating um, a design for a friend and you have the ability to make your small letters, you've got your large letters, I'm sorry, your capital letters, your um, lowercase letters. So let's, you can, sh you can see all these beautiful, all these beautiful letters. Okay. All right. So I'm going to delete and I'm going to go back to this first one. I'm going to make it large and you can see how easy it is. Large, medium, small right there. And you can see it on there. But you might, you know, you might decide that you want to put three letters in there and then you might want to sort of curve them and the machine will curve it for you, whichever way you want to curve it. OK. All right. So let's touch OK and let's go back. Let's, we're going to delete those. Let's say that you wanted to just do one really pretty large script letter in there. Um, and then what you could do is you could take this letter. OK, and you can make it put it into the medium and then you can move it over into your screen. All right. And, and you can you can see how easy it is to manipulate your designs on the screen. So can you imagine that's something that would be really nice. Another thing that you could do here is you could write your name and you could put, you know, um, made by whatever your whoever, whatever your name is. So that is a really fun thing to do. Another thing that this machine does and I'm going to um, I'm going to delete these patterns and I'm going to delete that one. OK, because I want to show you how easy it is to quilt around a design. OK, so I'm just going to pull in just one of our designs, one of our really pretty designs. And let's say that you wanted to put this design on a quilt. But let's say that you wanted to um, around that design, you want to quilt around the design. You want to maybe stipple around it. So I'm going to touch set and then I'm going to show you how easy that is. But let's say that you want to make this a little bit bigger before you do your stippling. So I'm going to touch size and I'm going to increase the size. Now you have two ways of increasing the size. And this is this is only in our best machines. And that is you have a, the ability to change your stitch count so that you don't have um, it. Like if you make this, the, the design a lot bigger, what that's going to do is it's going to increase your stitch count if you use this particular control. All right. So I'm going to make it as big as I can make it. 
and you can see how much that's that's really big you can go up to 200 percent and I'm um, down 60% whenever you're using the stitch recalculation. And that way you don't have a big mess on your um, quilt on your quilt. OK, so there's let's say we like that. Um, but let's say that we would like to stipple around that. So I'm going to touch OK here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this little stippling. And then it's going to ask me how um, how far apart I want that stippling and what I can do if I want it to be spaced a little bit farther um, from my design then I can touch that and it will it'll push it away a little bit okay it takes a little bit of time to do that and let's say that I want to um, increase make it a little bit bigger I think that stippling's too big so let's make it a little bit bigger and you have all sorts of controls and see how you can make that larger or smaller so you can just create your quilt you know just as you as you wish so I'm going to touch okay here I'm going to undo that okay now I want to show you a couple of other things that we're able to do so I'm going to delete this design and this is all in your um editing screen so I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to pull out a smaller design okay and let's see let's go down here and let's say that I want to create a applique out of this soccer character okay all right so I'm going to touch set okay and then in order to create an applique, and that's what I did. That's what I was showing you just a few minutes ago when I had the hole in my um, design. So what I did is I touched the design and then I'm going to touch applique. And I can either simply applique around that design as it is. And by doing that, I would just touch set. And you can see it's going to applique right around that. But if I wanted to do a design, and I wanted to applique using something more standard. Let's say I wanted to do a circle or let's say I want to do something like a stop sign or even, you know, just a traditional applique design. Then I can touch that and then I can um, decrease the size of that, get a little bit closer if I want to do that. OK, that's too close. So let's put that out. But see how you've got the ability to increase the width. You've got the ability to increase the um, the length of the of the design and I can move it down. OK, so you can play with that. I'm going to touch. OK, now what that's going to do is when I go over to embroidery. So I'm going to touch edit end and I'm going to go over here to embroidery. And so what that's going to do is it's going to. Well, first, it's telling me that I need to change some of my threads. But what it's going to do when it stitches, it's going to stitch all of my character and then it's going to go down here and it's going to stop that little hand makes it stop and it's going to stitch a one single stitch around the applique and then you can pull that off of the machine and then you can put the actual fabric that you want to um, put it on so the shirt or um, the jacket the back of the jacket the you know or the girl scout uniform or the you know Boy Scout uniform, whatever it is that you want to put the applique on. So you'll just hoop that and you'll center where you want that applique to go. And then the next stitch is going to do is going to do an outline stitch that will tell you exactly where to put that applique. So you'll just put that applique exactly where those stitches tell you. And then the very next stitch is going to be your zigzag stitch. Well, first it's going to tack the applique um, down, then the zigzag stitch. And then you have a perfectly created applique on, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you want to put it on. I love that. I just used that today because like I said, I had a hole in my little onesie. And so I needed to perfectly center the applique about that around that hole. Now, speaking of perfectly centering on this machine, let me show you what this machine does with centering. So I'm going to go back home. I'm going to touch OK because I'm going to um, get rid of that design. OK. And then I'm going to pull this hoop off and I'm going to put my five by seven hoop on here. And I want to show you something that that is just kind of funny. A lot of times when we're hooping, we don't hoop perfectly. OK, and so let's say that you have some checks and you are trying checks like as in checked fabric. And let me see if you can see this checked fabric down here. 
and I'm going to move the camera down a little bit so that you can see this. Okay, so there's my checked fabric, okay? And you can see that I really was kind of cattywampus on my hooping. I did not hoop that very well. And so what I need to do is, you know, I could rehoop it, but we all know that rehooping is kind of a pain. On this machine, I don't have to rehoop it, okay? On this machine, I am able to center the design and get it perfectly straight on these checks without rehooping it. So let me show you how that looks. All right, so I'm just going to take, I'm going to put this little, um, because we're almost at St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to put this little four leaf clover on, okay? All right, so I'm going to do edit in, and I'm going to highlight my, there you go. Can you, see, I don't know, let me make sure you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so you see this little cross? Well, what I want to do is I want to get that cross centered first on my design okay so there it's centered but i need to get it straight i need that side and that side to be straight okay so the way i'm going to do that is there is a um i'm going to touch my screen i'm going to touch this okay and what this is going to do is it's first going to show me you know where all of where my centering where i want to start okay and then let me go back over here and let's get to the whoops i didn't want to do that let's go back <laughs> all right let's go back let's go back to my embroidery okay Whoop. okay here we go let's go back here all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to it's going to originally start right here and so i'm going to say okay let's let it let's let it give me the measurement right there so i'm going to touch Next, let me see if I've got a, I kind of want to, I think I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Okay, but I'll do that in just a second. So I'm going to touch next. And so what it's asking me is my, what my alignment direction, what I want it to be. And this is where it becomes very important for me to decide on my alignment direction. Now I want it to align this way because I want to make sure that I get my cross hatch done properly so that my checks are even, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now align my cross hair positioning, all right? All right, so let's let's align my cross hair positioning. Okay, let's get that with a point, okay? All right? And now I'm going to get it, I'm going to go up a little bit, okay, because I want that last one to be aligned, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch sit. And what it's done is it's moved my um, cross here a little bit so that, but I need to do it again. You can see it's not quite straight, okay? So I need to get that cross here set back so that it's right there where I need it to be. But you can see how helpful this is whenever you're creating a design. You can actually get that cross here to go exactly where you want it to go so that you don't have to, you know, rehoop your design. Okay. So let's go into, let me show you some of the easy things that you're able to do on this machine also, right? So let's go back to edit, all right? And so I'm going to show you, let's go back to the edit screen so I can show you all the cool things that you can do on the edit screen. All right, now let's say that you're making a um, table um, and you can see that I've kind of, that my little uh, shamrock is kind of to the side and the reason it's to the side is so that it will go straight on my, um, checks okay so if i were to actually um embroider this right now it would be perfectly even on my checks okay but i'm going to rotate it around i'm just going to give it a little get it out of the way okay so now what i'm going to do now that i've got it kind of straight what i want to do is i want to create a border around my Let's say I'm making a table runner, okay? And let's say that I want to make a border that goes down and then across and then maybe back up and across. Well, this alignment tool enables me to do that. And you can see I can make it go across, okay? So plus across. I can make it go down, okay? But And that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start making it go down. So I'm going to touch here and... I'm going to plus down and then I'm going to plus down and look at that. 
that gives me absolutely perfect alignment. Okay, now I'm going to move the whole thing up a little bit so that I can fit another one down there. So I'm going to put another one down. And now what I'd like to do is go across. Okay, now in order to go across the single one, I'm going to have to split my designs. Okay, but you can do that very easily. Now, what I could do, if I just do this, what it's going to do is create, yeah, it's going to create, it's going to create too much. It's going to make it too big. Okay. But if I want to separate it, what I can do is I can choose my, the, um, the, the key that I want to separate it on. Okay. Let me get back to here. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little undo. Whoops. All right. Let's separate it one more time. Let's do it the, the other way this time. Okay. We're going to go to this way okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to um a couple of things that you can do here also i can i can make those a little bit wider or i can make them closer together okay but here is my there's my border okay all right now here we go again OK, and see, this is telling me that I can't add. It's too big if I try to add a long part of that border. OK, so can you see how useful this could be for creating your. Um, so here's right here. So here's what I was telling you about. I'm going to separate this right here. So there's my knife. Um, and so what I can do now, now that I've separated this from those, you can see how cool this is going to be to create a border. So here I go creating a border. OK. All right, that's, yeah, I don't want to go up again. But now let's say that I want to go over again. So what I have to do is I have to separate my, um, separate my key. There's my knife, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that border, go back to my across. I'm going to add that border. So here we go. I'm going to touch plus and plus and plus and plus, all right? And now I just want to do one more and I'm, it's telling me right here that I can separate the border from the, I separate my little, um, but I want to, I want to do this one. I don't want it. I don't want to do that one. I want to do this one. Now what I've done is done all of them though. And that's fine. That's fine. So I'm going to add again to the bottom. That's it. How about that? So now when I go in to embroider that, Look at that. OK, so let me show you something else so that I can do. So in my edit screen, I can go back to my edit screen and I can group so that my machine um, actually groups my um, colors the way that I want them to be. So look, let's look at this. Here's that. Uh -oh, let's, let's, let's just use this one. OK, so what this has done now is that this is going to create a continuous border and it's going to create it's going to color all it's going to um, stitch all of my dark ones first all a little you can see there's two greens it'll stitch all those light greens first and then it'll stitch all those dark greens after that okay so I mean I think that is just really fun and especially for quilting I mean you can do some really cool borders on table runners or you know borders on placemats or borders on whatever it is that you want to do OK, so let's go back and let's look at some more. Um, one more. Oh, gosh, I'm going to run out of time. Ugh. OK, let's go back to our edit screen. I'm going to delete this entire screen. OK, and let me show you um, I just one more thing. So let me delete all of this. All right, now look, I separated all those, so it's going to be craziness. OK. So another thing you can do is you can create um, your own monograms. OK, so here you can do a three letter monogram or you can do a two letter monogram. Either one of those. OK, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go back to Blaine. It looks like I've run out of time. So Blaine, you know, you're going to show them the great deal that they can get on this machine. OK, and I, like I said, there's so many more things that I can show you on this machine. And I completely ran out of time. So here you we go. Know.
We did. We ran out of time, uh, Melinda, but you know, it's, uh, there's so many, we could spend all day on this machine. There's uh, so many things in it. <laughs> there is, and I just, I couldn't show you everything. It's so frustrating. Oh my gosh. I mean, we have all these cool little hoops. Like we have this teeny tiny little hoop that you can get that, and you've got these big, it's, and this is the hoop that you can use to embroider like on a Converse tennis shoe. I mean, we have, we have hoops for everything. So we have, it hoops. it's awesome. It has a lot of stuff. Well, thank you so much, Melinda. Awesome job as usual. And I know we're going to see you again real soon. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow, Blind. Thank Alrighty. you. Bye-bye. Okay, everyone. That was the Baby Lock Array. And again, we have a call-in special on this. Now, you're going to get a free accessory bundle valued at over $742 with this when you purchase. But we have a call-in special as well along with this. So you have to give us a call. That's a wrong machine. Array. Oh. It's the array. <laughs> it's the array we had up there. Oh, it's the array picture. Right. You had the persona. You had the persona up there, I think. That was a, just the text. The picture was right. Oh, was the picture right? Okay. So as long as the price was right. Yeah, everything was right. All right. So you can put it back up there. Y'all just ignore that it says persona on it. All right. Well, yeah, she's got the website up there. All right. So that's what we're looking at right there is that array. This is the six needle machine. And again, we have that accessory bundle. Uh, the price is $11,999, but we do have the call-in special on it. We have some special financing and we're going to ship this absolutely free nationwide. Now, the great thing about this, it has that maximum embroidery field. It's seven and seven eighths by 11 and three quarter. And uh, we're also going to have that free <laughs> bonus package of the Durkies going to come with it as well. But it has those, all those, you know, it has that smallest hoop, a size is a one and one half inch by the two and one quarter. It has that embroidery crosshair uh, positioning laser with it, the I2 Intuition monitoring app, 126 built in designs, 50 built in fonts. And this thing is a thousand stitches per minute. Uh, great, great machine. And again, guys, this thing weighs only 68 pounds. So it's extremely lightweight for a big multi needle machine. So you're going to need two people to help you kind of, you know, lift this and get it set once you get it shipped into you. Uh, we'll, we'll take two people. Uh, but what a great machine. And I tell you, this thing is a workhorse as well. And uh, you can do so many things with that free arm. But again, give us a call at 800-401-8151 that we, we do have that call in special. So you want to take advantage of that. All righty. We're going to continue on and we're going to bring our co-host back in, Miss Jane Klaus. Hello. Hello. How are you? Doing fantastic. And uh, just the day is flying by, Jane. It is just crazy. I just can't believe it is like... For those of us in central time, it's that midday slump when you want to grab a piece of chocolate. That is true. <laughs> so Mountain to do Mountain Dew and a Snickers, what everybody needs right now. That's right. 3 30 <laughs> here in Chicago. And now you just need that little a little bit of Mountain Dew, and then you're ready for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, I bet uh Shauna Westergaard is uh drinking her dew today. I'm sure she is drinking her dew today. <laughs> There's probably like a secret Mountain Dew Club. I think you should be in it. I'm not sure where it's at. It's probably on social media somewhere. Mountain Dew Club? Mm -hmm. I know. I need You to and Sean are the president and vice president. There we go. All right. <laughs> well, hey, we're going to let you get going. We know we got a great okay. presentation coming up next. And yep. I'll see you back here in about, uh, what, another hour? Yep. All right. I got, that right. I got two back to back and it's going to be great. I'm super excited to keep the party rolling on. And by the way, our friends from Grace Company are back for this next segment and you're going to love it. I promise you that. Let's talk about Anthony Weiderberg and Allegra Erznaznik. Anthony, he's been with the Grace Company for a year starting as a customer service representative and he quickly took on a wholesale accounts. Hey guys, our... And that's Anthony. He's got a great retail background, primarily focused on sales and customer service. 
in his time off. And Anthony knows, uh, enjoys traveling and concerts and watching movies and live theater. And Allegra was with us this morning. She works closely with the Grace Dealers and customers and has recently started attending quilt shows and creating virtual events. You know what? When she's not working, she's crocheting. She's adding a new hourglass to her collection or snuggling up with her cats. And I would love to welcome to the show, Anthony and Allegra. Hey guys. Hey. Hi. Thanks so much for oh, having wait, us back. Anthony's not here. I'm here. Anthony's right here. <laughs> oh, it's me. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you, Anthony. Um, my apologies. <laughs> Normally they put on a one screen with your faces, and I thought maybe the grumblings got me, and I was just talking to myself for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no one is, that has not happened. It was just me solo introducing you guys. So, Anthony, I kind of flubbed on your. Um, your intro because I was like, well, well, where's the one sheet? Where's their pictures? What's happening? <laughs> so you love, um, you love being here in, in your customer service role and you, what's your favorite thing about customer service? And then I have a follow-up. Oh, um, I think my favorite thing is just being like a yes, man. Like I want to do whatever I can to help you. I really like getting that satisfaction of a happy customer. So I really like just, doing everything I can for a customer. I love it. And then traveling, favorite place you've ever visited? Oh, it's a tie between Anna Cortez, Washington and New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh my gosh, I'm going to New Orleans really soon. That's fantastic. Okay, cool. And Allegra, we're still, we're gonna, I still, I still have, I still have this year for you. So. Oh my gosh, I was gonna make you show it to Anthony. Actually, <laughs> describing it today. I love that. I know it's still broken though. So if you've got like a time person that you can send along, <laughs> to me, I'll be waiting for the text. Okay, you guys take it away. I'm gonna be watching the clock. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Well, our segment is on our 16X machine and our Q-Zone hoop frame with its two foot extension. All right. Where do we want to start? Because I kind of want to start with our machine. Okay. Here. Let's start with the machine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to start with? Um, first and foremost, my favorite thing about this machine is that it gives you, well, about our 16 series in general, it gives you just a little bit of extra light here down in the throat, which our other machines don't have. It keeps wanting to run away from me today. Um, this throat light here, there are lights in the bobbin area and the needle, but that throat light is one of my favorite features. And every time I advertise this, that's what I go for first. The throat light and the LED bobbin light in the bobbin area which is honestly a treat. Yes. <laughs> I like to call the underneath of the quilt like a deep, dark cave. It gets so dark. I mean, you got three layers of fabric blocking light out. I mean, you can't see under there. No, you need so the LED light really gives you the ability to see where what you're doing. Um, putting the bobbin back in correctly, it helps with making sure that all the lint is cleaned out and helping you with that maintenance as well. So that is a feature you won't find on our 19s or our 21s. No. The 16s are the only quilting machine series, excluding the Little Rebel, that has those lighting features. Yes, and it is my favorite machine. I know the 16s are also yes. yours, so I'm <laughs> glad we got paired for this one. Me too. I could talk about the 16s all day, any day. I think we're going to have to cut you off after 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I also really like about the 16s, that's a, that is one of the reasons it's my favorite, is it's easy access to their maintenance areas. So our machines, they don't require any yearly servicing, which I love because it means you don't have to box it up and send it back to us once a year. All the maintenance is done by you and we've built the 16 series to make that super easy. The front hood of this machine just pops open just like so. And I'm not gonna swing it all the way open because we do have a camera, but it pops open. It gives you easy access to that needle bar where you'll be oiling without feeling like maybe you're putting too much or you can't see where it's going. Yeah. It's just right there. I would have to agree with you. I really like that our machines are able, able to be maintained on your own because you don't want to pay to send it in. It's easier to just do it yourself, know it's done right and keep going with your quilts. Got to say another feature I love on this machine is our bobbin winder. It runs on a separate motor from your machine. So if you decide to hook up automation to your machine, you don't have to choose which one you want to use, your bobbin winder, your automation, two separate motors. So I do love that. It's nice and easy here on the back. And I will add, it gives threading instructions on both the back or on the side of the machine for both the bobbin winder and the actual machine. So if you ever, find yourself thinking, how do I 
thread my machine. How do I work that bobbin winder again? Nice, easy printed instructions all right there for you. Yes, and if you're like me, who often forgets how to thread something or just how to do something, I like repeat in general. Yeah. It's so nice that it's on the outside of the machine and I don't have to go dig through the manual or look it up. It's just right there. Cause there was a time I misthreaded our 21X Elites at Houston <laughs> and no one can figure out why the tension was wrong. <laughs> So it's right there in front of you. It tells you exactly what you're doing and you don't have to worry about whether or not you did it right. Yeah. Yes. All of our machines are built for your own comfort. There's a lot of flexibility in terms of customization with things that you can do. A big thing is the adjustable handles. First, when you're installing them, you can decide how high you want these to sit. And once they're tightened, you can also move them out, move them in, also sideways. That way they are exactly where you want them to be for maximum comfort. I will say that is a nice feature. A lot of people don't know that about our machines. And at the last quilt show I went to, showing somebody like, oh yeah, you can pull it out a little for, further to towards you. She said that you know her hands and her wrists hurt a lot. So she likes to keep them at this angle. So she was able to put her handles all the way down here and just push it like, like that yes. instead of holding them at this angle and hurting longer. So I like that it does that for your comfort. Yes, and that's just the outside of the machine. Oh boy. This machine has four built-in stitch modes. Three of them are regulated. You have your precise, your precise, your cruise, and your basting stitches. These are gonna be your regulated modes. Precise is gonna start stitching once you start moving the machine. It'll stop when the machine stops. Cruise is gonna stitch in place even if the machine's not moving. And then basting will give you small, medium, and large basting stitches. And then we have our manual mode that has no regulation if you just want to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, I like to say that it's the wild, wild west of um, stitches because you are the sheriff and you got to control it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. All of our machines also have built-in overspeed warning and edge warning. The 16X runs at 1,700 stitches per minute. Anything faster than that, it's not going to hurt the machine. It just won't be able to accommodate that regulation. That is quite a fast machine. I don't know if I've ever took it that fast before. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have the edge warning or the safe warning as well, which is a patented design that we own. Um, that way you can set your safe area and then the machine can blink a red light at you or beep at you and just let you know when you're getting a little too close to your safe areas. Yeah. How many times has that saved us? <laughs> so many. Too many to count. <laughs> So while I do, do we want to take this for a test drive? Let's or? take it for a spin. Okay. Let's do, you know what? We'll keep it in precise mode. It's my favorite. And I am no quilter, so bear with me on my designs here. I'm just going to... You can hear that warning tell me I'm going too fast here, so I'll slow down. Make sure everything's still regulated. You can see how beautifully it stitches all across here. And I love that it is just, you know, a nice, easy stitch across, a nice, quiet machine. I kind of want to take one home right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the space, but I want to take it home. <laughs> oh, yeah. So lots of bells and whistles, super easy to use. Um, the bobbin winder, we mentioned it has its separate motor, but it also has a built-in fill sensor as well. So you can um, adjust that sensor, um, either if you want to overfill or underfill your bobbins, or you want them just right. It'll automatically stop so that you don't have to sit there and watch it. It is nice. It is nice. That's the I, machine. It's honestly easy peasy, pretty self-explanatory. Um, let's get back into the frame and then we can talk about some other things. All righty. This is our Q-Zone Queen frame. Um, it is a rolling rail frame, two rails on there for you. Uh, one thing that I really like about this uh, frame here is that it can be an eight foot, but we have just released our extension so that now it can be a 10 foot to give you just a little more options for when you're buying a rolling rail frame from us. It just helps out with deciding what size is gonna work best for you. And if you do wanna upgrade down the line, I will say there's some nice things that do come with that two foot extension that come with your frame, a beautiful upgrade package. Oh yeah. So we have 
Right now we have it at the 10 feet. When you do add that two foot extension, you're obviously gonna get that extra two feet that sits in the middle, but you're also gonna get new rails as well. That mm -hmm. way they are thick enough to withstand that extra two feet. And then you're also gonna get new quilt clips um, because you're gonna get bigger rails, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love this frame. It is a floating frame because it's a two rail system, um, which means you just sandwich all layers of your quilt and you just put them over the front rail and clip them down. It makes it really easy to load your fabric. Um, and then basting is optional. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people ask, do I have to baste? Do I have to not baste? I just say whatever your personal preference is. If you like to baste with stitches, perfect. Spray basting, perfect. No basting at all, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a no baster. <laughs> yeah, whatever you prefer. It is ratcheting, so both rails do have the ability to ratchet. That way you can get your quilt to the tightness that you like. Um, you don't want it too tight, not tight enough to bounce a quarter off. No. You do want just kind of a little bit of give or a little bit of sag. If it's too tight, when you take your quilt off, it's just going to pucker up. That's unfortunate. You do know yes, that to it happen. It is unfortunate, yes. Now, this machine does not just belong to this frame. I like to call our um, product lineup kind of a, a la carte. <laughs> okay. The queen can accommodate the little rebel, um, the 16 series and the 19 series as well. So you do have um, definitely a choice of kind of what, what machine you'd like to put with it. You can also put a domestic machine on this frame. Just keep in mind that domestic machines do typically have not only um, a shorter throat space but also a shorter height wise as well yes. and your quilt is going to roll up around this back rail so with a smaller throat space it's going to start to get pretty tight pretty quickly yes and i do like like you're saying with the a la carte kind of thing we have going on here it is a great frame to have even if you're just starting with a domestic you can grow into it or you can just stay there um, I really like that our products are able to be, you know, I start at this low end. I'm not trying to invest into the whole big setup. I recommend it, but <laughs> I get it. Uh, but you can just, you know, go at your own pace, upgrade as you need to. If you only want the eight foot in your domestic and then down the line, you want this setup here with the 10 foot and the 16 or the 19s. It's easy to just, you know, say, I can move up. I don't have to rearrange my entire situation. I don't have to compromise anything by a whole new setup. So I really like that about our products. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of just leading off of that, something that I also love about our products is that we give you the best features even on our smaller frames and our smaller machines. Yes. So even though this isn't the X Elite, we still give you that edge warning, that safe warning, the ability to um, customize, you know, where your handles sit, where your needle stops, all of that fun stuff. It is nice. I love that about this company. I really think they take care of the customer. They want what's best for you and not just, you know, what's the biggest best thing we can put you into, but what really works for you. Mm -hmm. And I think this could work great for someone out there. Yeah. So let's talk about maybe like the out of box experience and Ooh. what to expect when they order. So machine out of box experience, drastically different than our original packaging. Yes. <laughs> and I love it. So it actually comes with a workstation for you to be able to work with. Um, it's very easy to put together. It's wheels, encoders, handles, and the thread mast. <laughs> like, what's that called? <laughs> Super easy to put together. The instruction booklet will guide you through each step all the way with lots of details. Um, you're not going to read every single page because it does have instructions for other frames as well. So if you were pairing it with the queen frame, you just want to follow the queen frame instructions. Yes, and I will say, I was tasked last time we went to a show, you're on your own, you are the customer, you set up your own stuff, don't ask questions, essentially. The 16 was an amazing out-of-box experience. As someone who has never set that up before, I thought it was extremely easy to follow. I felt confident and comfortable the whole time, and especially the frame as well. That was another really easy thing to set up. I felt very happy with myself once I was done, very accomplished. And you know, once it's up, it's up. It was 
really easy though. It was. I also set up the queen frame for the first time recently and I was like, okay, this isn't that bad. This Got is it. easy. <laughs> yeah. So I see someone asking if they can use a Bernina sewing machine. They asked specifically on a cutie frame. Um, as more of like a standard for all of our frames with domestic machines, we do recommend a minimum of about a seven to eight inch throat and then no bigger than 19 inches on the cutie specifically. Yes. All righty. Do we have any other, any other questions from everybody watching? Um, anything else you wanna share about what we have in front of us? Oh boy. Oh. I will say another thing you get on the upgrade package, I don't know if we mentioned this, you do get the table inserts on this frame I with that upgrade that. package. And I believe you also get the cloth leaders. So that you is do. the rails, yes. the new thicker rails, these um, nice, I love them, the quote nice clips. quote <laughs> clips. I was just distracted by them saying pro upgrade because I just love that on there. Um, table inserts and cloth leaders. So it is a nice bundle to have if you're mm -hmm. doing it all. <laughs> oh yeah, and then all new machines, they come with three total bobbins. Two of them are gonna be full for you. You're gonna get three packs of needle, 10 size, 14, 10 size 16, 10 size 18. And then you're also going to get um, all your maintenance tools and also hardware to put the frame and the machine together. Yes, and I know we brought this up at the beginning. I love the customer service here. I will say um, if for any reason you have any issues, um, if you're buying through Sewing Machines Plus, they're happy to help you. And we also are happy to help you with our on-call tech team. Um, we have customer service online or on call at all times. So just know that if you do get this set up, you're not gonna be left in the dark at any point. We are here for you. Sewing Machines Plus is here for you. We love recommending people to our dealers because it's just another line of defense if you need anything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And back to bringing it back to all of our products being kind of a la carte is if you have maybe an older grace frame and you have your eye on this machine or you have an older machine and you have your eye on this frame, call us, call SMP, ask about compatibility because it's always best to ask and find out for sure. Oh, yeah. Then maybe miss out on one of these great products. Yes, and we are happy to talk to you guys. I love getting the calls. I love talking with Sewing Machines Plus. So bring them in, bring all the calls in. We're ready. <laughs> yes, I always get phone calls where they're like, oh, I'm sorry for taking up your time. I'm just, that's my job. <laughs> Take up all my time. I will answer all of your questions. That's what we want. We want you to feel happy and comfortable and not walk away with buyer's remorse. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, know. I haven't had people walk away from us with buyer's remorse. I even had somebody at a show who was like, I don't know if I'm making the right choice. And I was like, I'll extend your return date out an extra 30 days. I have not heard back from her. It's been six months. So, you know, all good things. Just, I wanted to give her time to make her feel like she could made the right choice. And oh, I'm glad that. she did. <laughs> Me too. Something, that I also really like about the 16s is that they don't look like your typical long arm. They don't look like the skinny industrial looking thing, which, you know, I don't mind that look. I think it looks sleek. I think it looks great, mm -hmm. but it is something that does intimidate people trying to get into long arming. Oh, yeah. They see that kind of skinny um, industrial looking machine and they're like, oh, I'm not a professional. That's, that's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like that we kind of want it. We made this look more similar to a domestic sewing machine, the kind of like fullness, the flowiness you kind of expect with those. That way um, it would help customers feel more comfortable making that leap and making that jump. Yes, I love that too. Oh, it's just such a pretty machine. I can't get over it. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, away. it's easy to use. It runs fantastic. Um, in my opinion, I, I consider it the most accessible machine we have for our typical demographic because of the lights in the throat area and the lights in the bobbin area and that hood that just opens up with super easy to see maintenance. I just think it's probably one of the best machines we have. I mean, it's my personal favorite. Maybe I'm just biased. Right. <laughs> That's how I feel too. <laughs> and I did see a comment on there that I did want to address. Um, Nancy said that she's had her cutie in the box still, terrified to open it. Open it, set it up. You will not regret it. We are here for you every step of the way. So go for it. Call us if you need anything. But I highly encourage you to just 
get it out the box and get it up because that's the hardest part of starting with the cutie. <laughs> yes. Someone Hey, I thought maybe they were frozen or I thought it was me. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, Anthony and Allegra, they, uh, the gremlins have gotten to them this afternoon as well. But what a great uh, presentation. We'll see if they can get themselves reconnected and jump back in. But maybe I'll just talk a little bit about the Grace 16X as we can talk about it here on the screen. You'll see it. It is the long arm quilting machine in the G zone queen frame. They did a great job talking about this machine. You'll see it right here for your quilt fest pricing 5498. That's your price right there. You can call in. There's a special. Yes, we love that. 800-401-8151. Call in, get the special if you're waiting on it and you've been waiting for it to show up on the show. Here it is. Now's the time. You're also getting a free accessory package along with your purchase. So that's super exciting too. Again, it's a call and special, but you know the quote fest pricing $5,498. It gets better. Yes, it does. I don't know. How do you choose between it all, Ella? I'm not really sure, but I, you know what I say, friends, more is more and less is a bore. So if you can't choose between one or two, buy them all. Play, I'll take your credit card. <laughs> so special thanks to our friends from Grace, Anthony Weiderberg and Allegra Erznaznik. Um, looks like, I'm not sure if they're going to be coming back on or if we should do a giveaway or if I should move on to our next presenter, or perhaps I can just tell you another joke. I think it's time for a joke. Oh, hey, Blaine. Hey. <laughs> can I do Hold a joke? Up. I thought I was going to get an hour break, but uh, since uh, they got frozen and they're not coming back. Just so pick I thought, your little Mountain Dew up and just drink it right here with us. We don't care. We have time for a giveaway, Jane. I love it. Yes, giveaway. Kennedy, what do you got in your prize closet over there? What do I, what do I have is the question. What do I have? What do I not have? She's hmm. got it all. I got it all. Make it good. Okay. Because more is more and what? Less is a bore, friends. More <laughs> is more and less is a bore. Let's do the Laura Star Iggy. Oh, hey, yes. Humor. Look at that. That's a fancy one. This $299 handheld oh, steamer. I would like Laura that. Star. So, Kennedy, let's spin that wheel. Yes, just getting it all greased up here. One second. And let's spin. <laughs> here we all go. All right, Jane. You're going to do the honors. I will, but boy, I sure do. I'd like that portable steamer, Laura Star. Um, oh, Brenda Daniels hanging with us on YouTube. Hey, Brenda. Nice to see you here. You're looking good, Brenda. 30 days to claim your prize. Go to smplive.tv. Scroll to the bottom. Give us all your information. Tell us where we're sending you that Laura Star uh, portable steamer. That is so cool. 30 days and it's yours, but I'm sure you're probably going to do it right now because you're super excited. She's shaking her head. Yes. She's jumping up and down. Actually. I told you I can see you guys. I know it. So we're going to force her to have to go uh, like steam and press her clothes. And everybody else that's around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I love, I have, I have irons. I have multiple irons. I love my irons. I have a person in my life that I know uh, that does not live in my home. So it's not my husband. But she's in the family and does not have an iron, just hmm. uses a steamer. steamer. So she's a steamer and I'm an iron. Well, I you know you what? I, I bought a Rowenta steam generator iron many, many oh. years ago with one of those real fancy ironing boards. And I don't ever use it. Michelle and I <laughs> use steamers. <laughs> you use steamers? Yes. You're a steamer. I'm yeah, we have those little portable ones to take when we travel and they work fantastic. So I would encourage anybody out there, if you want something to travel with, these handheld steamers are awesome. Well, I see everyone's like, um, night steamers are great. I want both five irons and a steamer. Somebody said never be wrinkled again. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a, I love my iron. And by the way, oh my, my gosh, husband, I'm telling you, once you start using steam, uh, you'll never go back to an iron. 
Just, just, just saying, Jane. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, way. help me out there, SMP Nation. If y'all <laughs> only steam, put a number one in the chat. If you are an only an iron person, put a number two. We're going to see right now okay. how many steamers and how many ironers so we have out there. I mean, you heard Nicole Gilbert say earlier, press, don't push or wiggle, which I thought was very interesting. Oh, here the results are coming in. Well, you're, you know, if you're a sewer, you probably know, have to have an iron because you're pressing, pressing so many things and doing things. But I'm talking, I'm not talking about fashion. just like pressing for you're ironing, talking about fashion. Like sewing. Yeah. I'm talking about just to take care of your garments that's hanging in the closet. I got you. You're talking about fashion over uh, us and our functional <laughs> sewing. <laughs> Kyle said, is there an option for just the dryer? <laughs> <laughs> the yes, dryer has Kyle. a steam function. Listen, yes. not only is there an option for just the dryer, I'm going to give you a fourth option, and that is straight out of the hamper. That's true. How yeah. about air dry? <laughs> How about the dry cleaners? Yes. <laughs> steam and iron. Steam and press. Um, I get you. Okay, so when it comes to fashion, I do. I would love to steam if I have like a long flowing gown. But, you know, like, I know you think I'm wearing a long flowing gown like every weekend, but that's not the case. <laughs> so how are we looking on the on the chat there, Kyle? I know it. The, a lot of twos. A lot of twos. Yes, a lot of so a lot of ironers out there, Jane. So they're right with you. Those are my people. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, guess what people we got coming up next? Oh, boy. Our friends from Arrow. I'm there getting you excited. Go. So I'm going to let you take it. We can go okay. see Harley and Valerie. Yes, Harley and Valerie from Arrow are here. So let's talk about Harley Thomas really quick. Uh, Harley has been in e-commerce as long as it's been around and has worked with all types of firms from the smallest all the way up to the Fortune 50 firms. I'm sure it's 50 or Fortune 500. Well, he's worked with a lot of people. But right now he's working at Arrow. By the way, he, uh, he is fantastic at solutions. He develops strategies and plans on all areas areas of e-commerce. His proudest moment is solving an e-commerce problem that resulted in a 40% increase in sales. Hello, Harley. Of course, you're sought after by all the companies. Everybody wants to work with you. And he's got a great personality. And I bet you he has a joke for us too. And Valerie, who is joining Harley this afternoon, is the West Coast account manager and SMP's rep as well. Here they are. Put your hands together. Harley and Valerie. Hello, Jane. Where did you get those pictures from? Those are old. <laughs> I look so young, though. He does. He has less hair. It's, we, we put the Tom Cruise filter. Oh, he needs that. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, Valerie, because uh, your your bio was shortchanged by just being an account representative. I need to know like three of your favorite hobbies. Three of my favorite. Cooking, gardening, and um rodeo riding i used no. to go to rodeos yes yeah. when i was younger i'd say cooking baking gardening and i i just love doing yard work um i grew up on a dairy farm so outside work for me is like bar none that is my go-to of wanting to just let go of all my frustrations and so. today is a beautiful day in your neck of the woods yeah so are, are you finally getting yeah i know it that's i it's coming down our way so thank you for that uh, <laughs> So listen, I'm excited because I love it when you guys are on because it's always so much fun. Yeah, well, and, absolutely. You know, we try to make this kind of fun, but we're going to try something a little different today, Jane. But we're going to talk about Harley, stuff. we need to do something first. What do so you want to do first? Harley and I had a, an amazing opportunity to be at Road to California this last year. Oh, and yes, And we were we there did. in the Sewing Machines Plus booth. And it was amazing to see all of your viewers stop in and just be enamored at the fact that we really do exist, that we are actually real live people. And they were so happy to meet us. And I can't remember all the ladies' names, but I just want to give a big shout out to all the ladies that stopped by and visited us um, at the Road to California show. So thank you that. so much. You guys have a huge fan base out there. They love you guys. They love Arrow. And that is amazing. Everybody and Harley, 
come over a few times and they sat in our chairs and we got to spend time with them and just feel the comfort of our chairs. Oh, I love that. By the way, if you guys were there, um, just put a, a little note in the comments that you were there. I'll see how many people are watching. Norma, I Norma was you. there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, I don't want to take up too much more time. I want you guys to take it away because I know you always have so many cool things to show us, tables and chairs. Thank you. But do we have to ask so Jane many. a question first yep. before we... Jane, what do you do for organization in your own sewing room? What are your biggest how do problems? You how do you store things so, in your sewing room? Oh my God, what a great question. Because I my studio is like half of it. And then the other half is where I actually do the work. I am in need of a table that has storage underneath. Okay. That's what I need because I mean, one. I don't know. I have a lot of projects that I would like to just put into this area and here. So I need storage and I need a place to put things on top. So I need table solutions. Sure. Okay. We hear you. And so yeah. do a lot of the viewers out there, Jane. They need the same thing. And I think many sewists and quiltists are in the same position of needing storage. storage. They need organization. Absolutely. But they also need to have and be able to sit in comfort and have those ergonomics. At the end of the day, it's no fun if you try to sew and your wrist gets sore and yes. your back gets sore and your neck gets sore and you can only sew or quilt for an hour a day. That's no fun. It's not fun at all. You want to do more. Absolutely. And we learned a lot being at Road to California because we had chairs there in the S&P booth. And it's amazing how many people came along just to sit in the chair. All the time. They're like, I own this chair, but I really need a break. So I want to take a rest. <laughs> and right? we let them sit and enjoy the time. We we did. It's nice. We're getting warm welcomes today, Valerie. Yes, we always do. For, we always I love do. The fans. I love seeing everybody. It was amazing. So always needs, Barbara says she always needs stuff. Oh, yeah. Dennis, no. Or is that, yeah, Dennis, no. <laughs> Who's Dennis? What are you talking about, Dennis? <laughs> All right, so what we are going to do today, oh, wasn't convinced, neither was I, that the chairs are really that much better than the office chair. They are, Maurice. They are so yes. much better. I love these questions that we're able to answer them kind of on the fly. That's, yep. that's the nice part about being live with you guys. Yes. And a button chair lover. Um, oh, look at that. Sam was demonstrating in our chairs today, in one of our chairs. So we've got lots of fun stuff to talk about today, but it's all going to focus around your storage needs, your convenience, kind of your work surfaces, ergonomics, which is going to lead directly into the number one sewing chair in America, as well as flatbed sewing. And I think in the past, we talk a lot about the cabinet, yes, right? The and benefits, the features, the sizes and everything like that. We're kind of interested in what you guys in the audience really want to know about a sewing cabinet. Why you need a sewing cabinet. What do you guys want to know about a sewing cabinet? We'll do our best to read your questions live and be a little more interactive than we've been in the past. And we can tell you what this cabinet is. We'll give them, should we give them a two minute overview of we'll this cabinet? We'll give them a two minute overview. So okay. I will start. So this is our Aussie cabinet. So this is our second largest opening cabinet. Has a beautiful workspace, has a little bit of storage here and this caddy right here that you can attach to the side so you can put a serger in there if you so choose. It's got a little bit on the, um, on the door over there, it's got a l three little cubbies, um, and it's got a nice size opening lift that about 95% of the machines can fit in, but just look at this expansive workspace. So this one here is just going to give you a lot of working area for you to have with your quilt or whatever you would like to sit and sew. And when we say it fits 95% of the sewing machines, what we're really saying is the width of the sewing machine fitting in this hole. Sewing cabinets have different size openings. And this one is 23 and three quarters. So if I take out my tape. Whoa, you're upside whoops. down. Whoa, oh, you're backwards. Somebody rolled the tape backwards. Here, why don't we show how long it is first? And then we can go that way. Okay. That. So here, this one is, hang on. Wow, they wound this tight. It's 100 and. There we go. Now I'm finally out. There we go. Okay. So it's 100 inches wide. 100 inches. So now. Which 100 inches is a lot of feet. It is a lot of feet. It's a lot of feet. So, what were you trying to show them here? I wanted to show that this is 23 and three quarters Oh, we got to go in front, though. Yes. Ethan's got so. a good camera view. Ethan, are you going to push in on that one? So, 23 and three quarters right here. 
by 12 and a half deep. So you're going to want to be able to measure your machine, accommodate for the knobs and the cords and all of that. But this is our Aussie, completely open, eight and a half feet. When you close it down. Four feet deep? It is four feet deep, yes. And when you close it down, it's four feet by two feet, which is really nice because for those people who have the availability to have this open in their workspace, this is a nice cabinet to have to be able to expand and do your projects. But yet, if you want to, you can close this all down into a very small footprint. And then again, compact. And you can use that caddy or not use the caddy. Depends on what you want to do, right? Whether you want it, you want it over there. I like the little notch out in the back of the opening. Oh, right here for your cords, right here. The little notch right here, yep. And we talked about comfort and you know ergonomics. Ergonomics is a big, scary word. What it really means, will it fit a brother? The Stellar, yes, the Stellar will so, fit in the Aussie. I've it's never closed luminary. mine up, Kathy. That's so true. A lot of people never close them a up. A lot of people don't close it, but you do have some people that really like to have their spaces closed up because they do have it in a multi-purpose room where they have guests and stuff coming over. Yes. So, As far as, as comfort goes, yes. ergonomics, you want to sit in your chair at a right degree angle. The nice part is the height of this cabinet. Your elbows, you can have your elbows at a 90 degree angle. So you have that nice flat bed sewing. Your stitches are not going to pull or drag. And it's also going to take the pain and strain off his neck and shoulders. And he's not going to be able to have to get up and walk around or anything like that. He'll be able to sit and sew for hours on end. So if you have those projects and you want to sit there for a long time, you can and you will be comfortable. I saw someone ask about center needle sewing. Yes. It depends on your machine and where the machine would fit in this particular opening. So this one will not fit the Altair because the Altair has a very long throat. Um, so that one you'll have to look at. Another option that we will have available um, at, an, I believe, tomorrow or tomorrow we're showing a larger opening. Raphael wants to know if my chair is actually comfortable. Oh, that chair is so comfortable. People oh. sit in them in the office around here for hours and hours. Yes. Which is great. Yes, so, absolutely. A lot of people actually, I was just at a show um, in Washington and people were buying them for their office chairs because they don't like the office chairs anymore. And or they're buying them for their husbands in the gray color that we have for their workshop so that they have their own chair. Now, I would use this as my sewing chair, but I have a different desk chair because arms. But when you're sewing, you don't want arms to get in the way. Valerie's desk chair she doesn't like her arms down. No, not at all. Nope. There was a big discussion like to earlier today about that. She wants to get really close to her desk. And without arms, it allows you to really get into the sewing machine and yep. really get up close. And Valerie went so far as accusing Harley <laughs> of taking the arms off her desk chair and setting it to the lowest position just to mess around does. with her. Right? I usually do that when I'm not in so, the office. Um, I'm a digital nomad, so I'm in the office every now and then. So I sit at other people's desks. I hot desk. And Valerie thought I sat at her desk. Come to find out, it's the gentleman, Scott, that you will meet tomorrow. So make sure if you're watching tomorrow, give Scott a hard time. Don't mess with Valerie's chair, <laughs> right? So the three-position hydraulic lift is really what this is all about. So Valerie has this up in what we call the free arm position. This is where you can use an embroidery module. If you're you can doing... put your, your accessory tray back on there. I know a lot of machines already come with a, a tray and you like to have it up a little bit higher. If you're doing garment sewing, you can get up around for a sleeve or anything like that. But this just gives you the opportunity to bring it up. But if you also, just to make sure, like Harley was showing you, you're gonna want it in that flatbed for when you're just doing your standard sewing. And then you can always put it away. And then this is a multi-purpose table. You can put the cover over the top here and you can sit and you can do your paper piecing. You can do your cutting. Whatever you want to use this for, you can utilize this cabinet for that. Would you like me to keep that down so we can close this up and show how compact Well, let's put it right there and we should discuss this. Yes, this is very important. Why is this It's hard to see on camera though. It's a piece of acrylic that is custom cut. Can you see it if I put a quilt? Can I change out the bobbin in the machine for you? You know what? I think I sewed my last quilt on this machine. It might have been the other gentleman. So if you have a Bernina yes. machine, which I do, I have a Bernina 475. 
I love the little teal one. You just bring it up into the flatbed position. You pop the front here and you're able to get to your bobbin. I know the brothers have it right here on the top, so you're able to access it that way. Um, but as far as your Berninas, all you have to do is take your insert off and then you just pop it right back up. So can we see if we can see the insert here, Ethan? Can we get a, a graphic of this? So this is what this insert looks like, if you can kind of see it. Well, kind of. Okay, just hey, keep moving at the hey, light keeps reflecting. Closed than me. Can okay. you hold it in front of you, maybe? Sure. Okay, there, there you go. go. There now you can go. kind of see it. Oh, kind of see it. look at that. All I'm right, a great so this model. is an acrylic insert. This is very imperative to have when you are sitting and sewing, and you can order these through Sewing Machines Plus. Um, so this is going to give you that flatbed sewing. So your stitches are not going to pull or drag. Your wrists are not going to catch on the edge. And if you drop something, it's not going to fall down to the floor. So this is very important to have when you order your sewing cabinet to get one of these that's custom cut to your machine to the opening of the cabinet. You know how you make quilts and you give them away to hold to keep people warm and yes. comfy? Yes. This keeps your sewing machine warm and comfy. It does. Is that, is that too far of a stretch? I think so. It, it hugs the sewing it machine. Hugs it. it gives it a hug when it's feeling sad. So things can't fall down. It's a perfectly smooth surface. You can sew longer and really have a great time. Yeah. But we should probably put it, we should probably we store should it, put, shouldn't we? We should store it. We'll put this right over the top because I think we have some other cabinets to show them that gives them other options for, you know, uh, Someone asked again how big of a machine fits in here. It has to be 23 and three quarters inches. Has to fit in an opening 23 and three quarter Ooh. inches. Should we show them the storage option that comes with this cabinet? Oh, you know what? Before we move on. But wait, there's more. But, but wait, there's more. So I'm going to open this. If you this buy right this cabinet, if you buy this from cabinet, Sewing Machines Plus, you're going to get this. Ta-da! If I can roll it, Kiwi cabinet absolutely free. So this is our little cabinet, that Kiwi cabinet that's going to be coming um, with the Aussie cabinet. If you purchase it during the show here, um, it comes with the pressing mat and the cutting mat. So it has a nice. It little, comes with the pressing mat. It comes with it. It comes with it. And it comes with this. And wait, there's more. And it comes with a removable thread storage cabinet. So you can take these out. You can put them wherever you want. You get two of those. And then the bottom one's big enough for an iron, a small serger, a tape measure. I'm a steamer, so I don't need a place for the iron. Oh, you're a steamer too. I, I'm out of the closet now. I'm a steamer. Yeah, I'm a steamer. And why is that? I can't talk about why. <laughs> I can't I'm talk about why I'm a steamer. You're, I'm a neither. Yeah. I'm a clothesline or air dryer. She's an Sorry. air dryer, which air dryer did come up. It did come up. I and air dry all of my clothes. Kyle, so you don't feel bad. My second choice, the dryer guy. Yeah, right? nope. I run it in the dryer or I'm a shower guy. I put my shirt in the shower and I'll let it do that. Yes. Because I hate spray starch all over the floor. When I, so messy. this is the Kiwi cabinet. Comes in either white or teak to match the color of the Aussie cabinet. Um, it is absolutely yours free with the purchase of this cabinet. And it's the same height. So if you ever want to extend your workspace and even have more storage right at your fingertips. And if we put it right over here, this is kind of what we, this is our opinion. I'm going to move this rotary you can cutter. Say, you can say we're wrong, but our opinion is, you want to sit this time? I can sit this time. I've had okay. a long, exhausting day. You've had a long, exhausting day. So if you sit here, as you can see that Ethan's showing from above, you can actually do some cutting, do some pressing, and then you can sew. We could actually move that closer and then she wouldn't have to roll. Yes. But the nice part is you can spin around and do the whole thing in one motion. And if you have this open on this side, you can pull this caddy out and you can have your serger sitting right here. So if you need to do any sort of surging, that it's right here as well. And as Valerie said, this is a $699, $699. option, but it's not an option. You can get it for included free, free yes. with your purchase of this Aussie cabinet. So it, it comes in colors. Does it feel or it feels ergonomically? It is very ergonomically to do that, right? That's our theme today. Storage, organization, ergonomics. And comfort. And comfort. Ergonomics is different than comfort. You are correct. All do, right. Do, 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 do. You move that. I will move this. All right. Do we want to just push this one back? Yes. All right. Next one up we have is. We're going to talk about a cabinet that is one of many people's favorites. 
it is at a lower price point and it has a few less features, but they may be features you don't need, right? So why buy more if you don't really need it? So what we're gonna talk about here is the Krista sewing cabinet. We worked with Krista Watson. You guys might know her. She's an influencer, she makes patterns, does all sorts of fun things. So we worked with Krista and Krista really was trying to come up with a cabinet that would be affordable and allow someone to do free motion quilting. Um, not a lot of bells and whistles, right? So this cabinet is actually hitting several of those notes. Storage is not an option with this cabinet, except for the drawer. You get a little drawer right here that you can- So you get a drawer in. for storage. And this is just a little drawer cover, so you can just take that off and easily access your drawer. So the nice part is you've got some storage, you've got lots of organization, and there's something unique that we have behind this cabinet that we'll talk about, which I guess it's kind of a convenience thing. It is. It so depends on what kind of sewing you do. It depends on what kind of sewing. And if you want center needle sewing again, if you've closed this drawer, that is back far enough, you can actually slide in and do center needle. If you if you took this off, mm -hmm. you can do And that. this is just a manual lift. So this doesn't have that three position hydraulic lift like we had on the other one. Um, so this one will always stay up. So for those people who never put their sewing machine away and don't worry about it, this one would be an ideal cabinet for you at a great price. Valerie, do you keep your sewing machine like on the dining room table or the no, kitchen table all I the have, time? I have mine in a little bandicoot cabinet, just like Blaine does for his wife. Well, you know, that's really wise. But how many of you out there, I'm curious to know, are sewing on something other than sewing furniture, something designed for sewing? Like a could be a card plastic table. folding table of some sort. You could so. be on a, a piece of wood on a bed. I did hear somebody tell me that they do sit and sew on their bed. Their bed is actually what? their chair and they pull a table up to them. I just heard it last week and they pulled the table up. I said, oh, we need to My back chair. hurts already just Kitchen thinking about table. it. Banquet table, yes. Kiwi. Yes. Have no sewing, sewing tables. tables. Folding tables. Oh my goodness. I bet you guys are in a lot of pain by the time you're done sewing. Or you can't sew as long, right? And you don't have a dedicated space. We all want a dedicated space. You know, if I was in the construction business, I'd make a lot of money going to these quilting shows because all these women. With legs and dining room tables. And you know what? Dining room tables are a great place to sew if that's your only option. Yes. But if you really want to have something at the proper height, this is a little lower than a dining room table, I'd say. It is. Not by a, much. Not by much, but it but, is a little but bit But every low. half inch matters yes. to you and your height from where your arms are to have to you kind of shrug your shoulders up to get up a little higher. Um, Ethan, what camera shot do we have going on right now? Are we doing a, a wide view? Yes. Okay. So as Valerie said, this is a manual lift. So it doesn't go up and down all the way down. What it does is it it's flatbed position here. Mm -hmm. There's a metal arm. I was going to say contraption. Arm. Arm that you use and it brings it up to the top, which is great. A folding table many years ago too. Yes. This has the quilt leaf on the back and this opening is the same as the Aussie. It is. 23 and three quarters by 12 and a half. So again, you want to measure your machine. Don't forget the knobs and the cords, which would go right here. I can't use this machine. It doesn't have any cords. It doesn't. It's That's easy okay. to move around. I wonder here. if we lost them. Probably not. They're, They're probably around here. in our Kiwi storage. It's probably. probably out in our showroom because we've all been busy sewing quilts. Yes. And it's been kind of fun. So, oh, quilt fest. Anne, thank you so much. I want to heart Anne. Quilt <laughs> fests wouldn't be quilt fest without the two of us, which is really sweet. So, this is the Krista cabinet. Uh, overall size of the Krista. Um, when cheat. it's completely open is six feet by three and a half. Um, the quilt leaf itself, uh, or when with the quilt leaf open, now that's not right. When it's closed is four and a half by two. The quilt leaf is one and a half. And this quilt leaf on the back actually has two support arms to it. 
So you could put another sewing machine back here. You can make it another cutting surface. You can have somebody come over and join you, or you can teach your children how to sew right at your fingertips. And Kathy, you are absolutely correct. Ooh, I don't this think could you be a great starter table. We're going to show a cabinet next that's even for those folks that have a really small space and say they can't do it. Where is Pockets? You know, Pockets was with the Aussie, wasn't it? Uh, yes, wasn't he? Pockets comes with the Aussie, the kangaroo Pockets cabinet. comes with our kangaroo product line. This is the most important thing of the day, okay, everybody? Pockets comes with the kangaroo line. Pockets comes with the This is part line. of the arrow line. So, yes. Okay, let's talk about free motion quilting. Do you free motion quilt? I do not. I don't either. I don't either. It's kind of a talent. Krista Watson does lots of free motion quilting. So, in talking with Krista... One of the issues was the quilt falls off your cabinet or your table top. So why using a dining room table would not be great. Things are going to fall off. This actually are little catchers, little quilt catchers. Are you going to pretend like you're sewing? I can. Because we don't have like an electrical cord, we can't really sew. It's going to make life kind of hard. I can pretend. So we're going to pretend. Let's pretend we're all happy, Valerie. All right, we can do that. Okay. Fake it till you make it, right? Fake it till you make it. That's right. <laughs> so Ethan's got a nice close shot here of these quilt catchers. And if Valerie were free motion quilt, this quilt's kind of small. We could take the one off the wall, but we won't. So if she's free motion quilting and pushing it back here toward the back, the nice part is these catchers catch it. It's not going to go, if you didn't have it, right? It's going to go over the edge. And hey, you're taking fall my quilt. To the floor, right? You're going to pull your seam. You're going to pull them tighter. I won the Aero Dingo ooh, at the first Quilt Fest. Congratulations, Cecilia. So, this, uh, yes, very good for the lower back. So these quilt catchers, you know what, Valerie? What? I believe in the quilt catchers. So do I. So you know what we should do? What should we do? I think we should give one away. Would you guys like us to give away a set of quilt catchers? Would somebody like a, a set of free quilt catchers? Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll mail them out to you. Why not? Hey, Kyle. Why don't we have people put the word comfort, C-O-M-F-O-R-T. I was going to say, do you know how to spell that? <laughs> no, it's, it's a good question. Into, yes, they want quilt catchers. Yes. Put right. it into the chat, comfort, and Kyle is going to spin that magic wheel in just a bit. And somebody, it's some gonna lucky win. person is going to win their own set. So it does come in multiple colors. It comes in white, teak, or gray. So whoever does win today just needs to let Kyle know what color you would like. And we will ship it out here from Arrow directly to your home. And as you saw, you don't damage the cabinet. You don't add anything to it. It has a bracket. And you just finger tighten it and it stays on. It works yes. great. You just crank them down with your I'm hand. I'm glad to see all these people really want a set of quilt catchers. Valerie, that was an excellent idea to give away quilt catchers. You know what's next? I don't know what's next. What's next, I believe Carly? It's, I believe it's my favorite. Your favorite? The Judy? Yes. Is the Judy your favorite? Yeah. Is this what you have at home? I have a favorite. Am I allowed to have a favorite? I think you would be allowed to have a favorite. I think Judy was created on a napkin at some point. We'll move this over. And then we said, hey. And you can move Judy in. Now, you notice how well that rolls. Of course, now you got to get up on the carpet. But... Rolls on this, rolls on our carpet and our rug very well. The the these last two, the Krista and Judy have heavy duty casters. This one has. Have, does it have an industrial caster it on, does the, have on an the middle of it? Yes, on all of five underneath the base. So yes. the main part of it, and then so the that's door the has the difference heavy duty between casters. the Arrow and the Kangaroo line. So the Kangaroo line is going to have the heavy duty. They're still typing the word comfort. I know everybody wants. There are it. hundreds of people watching this thing right now. Or how many people are putting it in twice? I don't think Kyle will let him put it in twice. <laughs> but the, the kangaroo cabinets do have heavy-duty locking casters with a lifetime warranty. The Aero line has the um, heavy-duty plastic casters with a 10-year warranty. So that's the difference between these two um, in the Aero and kangaroo Now, cabinet. the Judy cabinet I'm just gonna is great there. for a multi-purpose workspace. You Tammy's saw how small treasure that says, Hi, Judy. But did you did they see how small this is? It's tiny. Look how tiny this is. So this is great for a an apartment, a small area. If you have somebody that's starting out, a kid um, that just wants to learn how to sew, and you you know you get them a small entry level machine. This is a great cabinet to have. Oh, I believe it's I believe it's only twenty four inches wide. Well, okay, we lie. It's twenty five, but so it's just over two feet. 
Oh, this thing right here. You measured the whole cabinet. Oh. But the cabinet, if the cabinet yeah. were closed, it's only two feet wide. Everyone yeah. has room for a two foot wide cabinet, I think. It's Great yeah, for campers. It's four, four feet when it's completely open by one and a half. And you do this and it can fit. 20 and three quarters. That's right. By 11. So that's going to fit. 80% of the machines? Yeah, so like your like mid your small to mid-sized machines. So like an entry-level machine. Um, I know some sergers fit in this cabinet uh, as well as, you know, like the Bernina, like Bernina 5 series and below. Like this is the size opening that I have my little Bernina in, and it works perfectly fine. I have plenty of extras. Space. It has a great price point. It has a ton of features for a cabinet under $400. Okay. It's got some storage, but yet it's a nice little cabinet to keep you organized to have your machine have its own home. So again, not being able to take this and have to take it off of your dining room table, it has its home and it's a very inexpensive cabinet for a great cabinet. And it, it, the, like you said, if you want to move from your dining room table and have a little comfort because you, yes. you can sit at this at the right angle, you have flatbed sewing. You will have comfort. You will have convenience. <laughs> My mom's you will have name ergonomics. Was she was small too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are almost out of time. We are. Let's talk chairs really quickly because oh, SMP Nation wants to know about chairs. You guys want to know about chairs? And these are comfort. Talking about comfort, you've got these right here. One of the ladies there is having a birthday month. Ooh, my birthday's coming up. I don't do birthday. My daughter-in-law does birthday month all I, month. I don't celebrate. It's just another day of the week. Your birthday is like a joke, though. Hey, my birthday is a joke. Literally. Okay, everybody. Now, chairs. While we wheel these out, let's tell you about the number one sewing chair. And if I don't do it, Jane's going to tell you. Oh, man. When did we get so many we chairs? Now? We should have it's how many? It's kind of fun. It is Just fun. to have them all out yeah. here hodgepodge. It is, but you got to have some order in organization, Harley. Organization. Are you putting all the solid colors together? I am. And then I'm going to separate. Ethan, are we too close to the camera? Do we have to pull back a little? What? I think he was sleeping. All right. So the number one sewing chair. Why is it number one? Let's talk about it for a minute. So this is absolutely amazing. It goes from 18 to 22 inches. It hits that lumbar support right here in the small oh, of your Ethan's back. Got, oh, yeah. Ethan's got the right camera. And it is to die for. It hits you in all the right spots. It's so comfortable. It takes the pain and strain off your neck and shoulders. It's got the 360 spin. I'm going to move away from you because you're going to try to push me off my chair. That was only a few shows ago that I tried to push you off And chair. the other thing, and I everybody Someone needs knew that was a so, so Now So Wow chair, and you kind of blend in that chair, Valerie, with your, with your leopard shirt today. Yes. It's super comfortable. The chair or your blouse? Both, actually. Great. Um, you can hide stuff underneath the chair. Yeah. We had one person say that's their naughty place when they have a project not going well. They mm -hmm. put it on there and they sit on it. Literally, yeah. they sit on it. Put it in a timeout. So they put it on a timeout. Uh, the sewing chairs are so comfortable. We're going to leave you guys Ooh. with this saying chairs. are. I'd love to try one of those chairs. Kyle, I want to know who's going to win. I want to see who. Somebody wants a leopard first, print we want to talk to Jane. Yeah, we do want to talk. Yeah, about what's you. up with Jane? What do you mean, Kyle? I want to see you. I'm the one that's going to spin the wheel with Kennedy and Kyle. Guys, okay, listen, Harley, Valerie, I am sold. I love the chairs. Everybody needs to have a chair. That's it. Chair, chair, chair. Put one in every room in your house. Put a couple of them in your sewing room. Do not sit at your dining room table. Get the Judy. They're all amazing. They are. And they're, you know, depending on how much room you have, how large your machine is, will drive a lot of it. And if you have a big machine, you can't get the littler cabinets. You need the bigger cabinet. Exactly. So, yeah. so when I, you asked me what my biggest concern was, the chairs. We all know I love the chairs. I love a good place to sit. But it's like that space that you're sewing on. That's what I love about your cabinets. Well, thank you, Jane. Okay. And, and you know, it's a math problem. We like to always joke, oh, it's just a math problem. Should we do this? It's just a math problem. It's like finding the right cabinet. It's just a math problem. How big's yeah. your machine? Which ones does it fit in? I love it. That's how you do it. 
So I want to do this giveaway so then I can tell everyone how they can do it. So Perfect. you yeah. guys are, you're going to stay right here. Yeah, it absolutely. Is, it's the comfort, Finn, the, the cold catchers that we're giving away. Yeah, I'm going to yes. let Valerie and Harley, you guys do it. Ready? Ready. Spin. 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 Wheel. Wheel. Nice, guys. That was great. I'm really impressed. You guys have a great show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is. Jana Elliott. Congratulations, Jana. Just get all your information Ooh. and your color over to Kyle. And we'll get these out the door to you. Amazing. Congratulations to Jana. By the way, she needs to go to smplive.tv to redeem the prize and make sure she puts in all her information and tell us what awesome. she wants so we know that it came from you guys. But uh, thanks for watching with us, Jana, on Facebook. And Harley and Valerie, you guys are just really, you're, I mean, it's like a variety show over there. I love it. We try to make it fun. <laughs> we, we try to make it fun. You know, it, it sewing and quilting is supposed to be fun, Jane. It, it is. It, it is fun. It is. What do you think I'm doing here? I got to tell everyone how to buy it because we got, we're running, we're running Thank out you. of Thank you. Appreciate it. Love you guys. Okay. All right. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Let's get these. Let's get these cabinets. Let's get these, uh, let's get these things up here on the screen. You got your Aussie to Ash White. It is, you see the quilt, quilt to fest pricing there, one nine nine nine, And of course there's a call in special. So the cool thing about this is you're getting that free Kiwi sewing storage rolling caddy with your purchase of the Aussie. So go ahead and call in for that special. You know, they're going to do you a solid number on there with the great pricing. 800-401-8151. Moving on. We've got the Krista. Oh, I love the Krista. But Krista is great. So listen, you see the Quilt Fest pricing there. Great price on there, $999, $999. And we've got a call in special. So because it is National Quilting Month, the special pricing, $700 off already. Call in for that special, 800-401-8151. And next up. We've got the Judy, Judy. We love the Judy. Uh, this is the craft and storage table. Love it. It's got that lift. You've got great pricing on there. It's $389. Of course, you've got the call-in special, 800-401-8151. You're getting special pricing because it is a national quilting month. I love it. And I think we have one more. And those are our chairs. Yay. The hydraulic sewing chair. Oh, the chair. I love it. Quilt Fest pricing, $329. But of course, because it is a Quilt Fest, there is a special price. So call in 800-401-8151. It's not a question is if you're going to buy it. It's a question of what color, what pattern, what print are you going to pick and how many will you buy today? I love it. Okay, let's keep things moving right along with our next guest. The lovely ladies are here again. And if we'll put up that one sheet, that would be great. There you go. Christina, Whitney, and Kim Sandberg. Now, Christina was selected to be a member of the Handy Quilter Quilt Your Desire Inspiration Squad in 2017. She's been featured in magazines and TV show programs and on the Handy Quilter truck. That's cool. She's also a member of many local quilt guilds and enjoys continually learning and improving her skills. And Kim Sandberg uh, helped on the development team for the PS Designer and PS Catalog she enjoys designing, editing, and teaching all about this great software for quilters. Kim loves the process of choosing or creating designs to complement and highlight her piece. I'm super excited to welcome the dynamic duo, Christina and Kim, back to the show. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi Jane. How you doing? We're doing, doing well. good. Good. I love the, uh, the, I love the quilts of the clovers behind you. Super cute. Isn't that Thank fun? Thank you. Yeah. Shauna that was doing the presenting yesterday and Monday, she created that pattern. So It's so awesome. It's very timely, but we love it. We love it. Okay. Um, since we're in, we're a little bit late, I want to let you guys take it away and tell us what you got. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Jane. So we are on the Amara ST today. We are. So this is our stationary machine. Mm -hmm. And we say stationary instead of sit down because the machine is stationary. Mm -hmm. 
and you move the fabric. Exactly. Do you have to sit down to use this machine though? No, absolutely not. That's one of the best things <laughs> about this machine. Um, I'm not going to stand up because if I do, I would be cut off about right here. <laughs> but uh, one of the great things about the Amara ST was we developed a brand new table to go with it. And it's called the lift table. And this table is awesome because it has um, change. You can change the height of the table at the touch of a button. As a matter of fact, watch this. It's like my favorite thing to play with. Woo. Everybody can hear that. It's so great. So I'm just holding that there and then I can go ahead and hit it and we'll take it back down to a comfortable height for me because I am sitting on a stool today. Uh, but yeah. it is fantastic because you can make those slight adjustments depending on the type of quilting you're doing, what you're working on, mm -hmm. or if you happen to want to stand up that day or you want to sit down depending on what you're working on. Uh, it's really versatile. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It even has uh, the ability to save presets. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What other fun thing does this table have built into it? So it has inside stitch regulation. So if I push our little project out of the way, we have these two sensors here on both sides of our needle. And these two sensors read the movement of the fabric over or the quilt. And so we can get that awesome stitch regulation and we can get that beautiful, perfect stitch, stitch that Handy Quilter is known for. Yep. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, you just have to make sure and leave a little extra fabric at the um, edges of your a little extra fabric beyond the, your project. And then it, it works like a dream, doesn't it? Yeah, as long as those sensors are covered, it, yep. you got that nice stitch regulation. Um, while we're talking about stitch regulation, the ST has the ability to work in manual mode where yeah. you are the stitch regulator. Yes. Or you can take advantage of those lovely sensors and do stitch regulation in both precision and in cruise. Yep. So lots of options there. Exactly, exactly. Uh, one of the other things I absolutely love about uh, quilting on the ST, so I quilted on my home sewing machine, my domestic machine for a lot of years, basically like 10 years <laughs> before I got my first long arm. And the fact that I have so much throat space here, this throat space is amazing. And the fact that the machine and the orientation of it, I don't have over here is where the the edge of it, the edge of the throat space is. It's to the back. It just makes it that much easier to quilt even really large projects on this yeah. um, on this machine. So it's got that twenty inch throat. Mm -hmm. So that is a lot of space. Yeah. And you actually have more throat space on mm -hmm. this stationary machine than yeah. you do with the exact same. 20 inches yep. on a frame mountain machine because you don't have those poles in the way. Exactly, exactly. So. You get to take advantage of that full mm -hmm. 20 inches. And to top it off, we have amazing lighting here. This lighting, um, I don't know if you guys can see, I've actually got a lot of good lighting here. I have these lights turned down as much as they will turn down. If I turn them up any more than this, we get like a halo effect while we're, <laughs> while we're filming. Um, they are so bright, but it's fantastic because there's a light right here at the needle and then there's a strip light up here in the throat space and they're independently adjustable. So depending on where I really need that light, I can turn it brighter or dimmer, which is really nice. And a great thing with being able to adjust that lighting is that we have that touch screen. Yes. We have this nice big touch screen. Uh, it makes it really easy to change all of the, the different options on it. I can choose my stitches per inch easily. I can choose to have my needle stop in the up or down position. I have my number for my tension so that I can easily get tension rolling the way I need it to. I even have because even though I am a long arm quilter and I am a tall person, <laughs> I can't reach to the back to turn that hand wheel if I want to just a do it a little bit. I know. <laughs> but luckily, right on the screen, we actually have a little button right here. So if we look down here at the needle, you can see that I can, I can just scroll right here and my needle will go up and down. So if I need, if I just want to do a little half stitch or I just want to bring my needle up a little bit higher to change the foot, anything like that, I don't have to walk around to the back of the machine. I can do it right on the screen, which is really great. Perfect. I love that screen and those abilities. Um, let's also talk about stitches per inch. Yeah. So when we talk about stitches per, min per inch, we're talking about stitch regulation. Mm -hmm. um, and the stitch regulation works on this machine up to 2,500 stitches per minute, which is a lot, yeah. especially when you're moving the fabric. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's really fast. Get a workout. But the nice thing is it ensures those consistent, even stitches. So you get that nice, consistent stitch throughout your entire quilt, which, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. And you have a wide range of stitches mm -hmm. that you can choose from. You can do a basting stitch, yeah. I believe, down to yeah. four inches per we can stitch. Do, we can do, okay, I'm going down my, I can do, yep. I can do clear down where it will only take one stitch every four inches, which is a long way to move the fabric before it takes a stitch. Yep. But if you're just tacking something together to hold it in place, the four inches works great. So we've got four inches, two inches, one inch, half inch, and quarter inch basting stitches. So just depending on the project you're working on, you can find a basting stitch that will work for you to keep your keep everything where you want it to be. Yeah, and anything bigger than that, I think mm -hmm. it goes up to 24? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. 24 stitches per inch. Which, um, yeah. nobody tiny. wants to rip those out. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go there. Yeah, so. but you'll have a nice consistent stitch. Little teeny tiny Just stitch. Very teeny tiny. Yeah, very, very teeny tiny. Yes. Okay, so um, we're talking about the screen. What mm -hmm. other controls do we have on the screen? Like a foot pedal? Yeah, actually one of the really cool things, and I'll show you guys this when uh, we start stitching here in a couple minutes, you can actually turn this machine on and control it either with a foot pedal or with a button on the screen or a combination of the two. And remind me, I'll show you when I start stitching, I'll show you how I, how I do that, which is really nice. So if you do happen to have any limitations where Maybe um, you, uh, you, you know, you need to be sitting and maybe your feet aren't working quite the way you want them to. You can do everything with your hands on the screen, which is really great. Yeah. Um, it makes it uh, really easy to quilt. Very nice. Okay. Um, so what project do we have here? So we have got a fun little uh, St. Patrick's Day. We're, we're sticking with a uh, what the theme we've got rolling here with our uh, pot of gold here behind us. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention really quick and just wanted to show you guys. So there's a couple of accessories that we can add here to the table. Um, one of my favorite things is this uh, the table extension. So it's just a leaf that pops up right there and you can see how much extra space this adds. Yep. You can add one on both sides, which doubles your space. So you have plenty of room to do a really big quilt. Um, then the other cool thing that you can add, and I can pull this out here and you guys can see, and then Jacob can take a little bit of a closer look at this. We can actually add a little secret drawer here. So you can have a drawer to keep this. I've got paddles in here. I've got some bobbins. You could keep your scissors or rulers, gloves, anything like that. But it's great because it's just right there, super handy. And you can put casters on this table too, which is awesome. I'm trying to remember if we even mentioned that. Did we mention that before? The casters? I don't, I don't think so. And I don't think we locked ours. Oh, maybe we did lock them. Maybe, maybe we did. Yeah. yeah. We'll find out when I lean against it at some point here. <laughs> Which I is guaranteed do. to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's really nice though if you're mm -hmm. in a small area mm -hmm. and you need to push the machine out of the way. Yep. Um, I've heard of people that have closets and they mm -hmm. push it into the closet, shut yep. those doors, and then when they're ready to stitch, they can pull it back yep. out. So um, that makes it really nice to be able to move it around easily. Exactly, exactly. So this is a great machine if you're looking for a long arm and you're tight on space. Because if I remember correctly, this table, like the footprint of the table is 36 by 38 inches. And so, yeah, I mean, everybody's got, you know, three feet in the corner of a room. They can put something there, pull it out when you Shove need it. it in there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and those, um, the table extensions, they fold back down. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, have it up and big. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, fold them down, push it away. So very nice. Neat and tidy, neat yes. and tidy. Yes. So, okay. okay. And then uh, talking about other accessories that we can add. So we can use any of the handy feet on this machine, just like any of our other um, ones. And we promised earlier today that we would do some couching. So that's actually what we're going to start with. So let's talk for a minute about this fun little project. I have to give Christina full credit here. She was inspired by Shauna's cute quilt in the background. She's like, let's make a pillow. I was like, let's do a pillow. That sounds great. She she went ahead and created this. So this is a Christina Whitney original. <laughs> I want everyone to know that's where the pattern came from. Christina's mind. And yep, it's a shamrock. <laughs> So what, what we've done is uh, taken a white square of fabric and we have I have basted it down. I use that quarter inch basting. First, I basted it with like a 505 uh, basting spray. 
and then I stitched it down. And then I have put this little shamrock down with some of that 505 basting spray too, because I don't want things to shift around while I'm quilting. And what I want to do first before I do any other quilting here is we're going to go ahead and couch around the edges of this cute little shamrock to hold everything in place. And I've got my couching foot on. Now these couching feet have a little um, plastic disc in the center that allows me to run this yarn through, through it. And what it does is it keeps that yarn centered right underneath the needle so that it stitches right through this yarn and it will just hold it right in place. So let's show everybody how to do it. It's, okay. it's kind of fun and addictive, isn't it? And, and while you're getting the yarn through, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna let our viewers know that we have lots of videos. Like we put out a video every single week. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of continuing education for these machines. And most of our videos, um, they're not necessarily done on a stationary machine, but it's the same technique. Yep. So you can use that. Um, but we do have videos that show how to get the um, the yarn through the couching yep. foot. So, yep. There's you just gotta wiggle it through there. You know that old song, wiggle, wiggle it, it just, just a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> we should totally. never gets old. I know it never <laughs> does. We laugh every time we say that. So I have got my yarn pulled through here now, and I've got this set up. I like to, when I do stationary quilting, I like to wear gloves. Um, these are machine gears, and they have just a little bit of grip here on the fingers. They just make it a little easier for me to hold on to that fabric. So we're going to go ahead and do some quilting here. And for right now, I'm just going to use the foot pedal to start and stop this. I just want everybody to know that. I'll use the little feature on the screen in a little bit when we do the other. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and whenever I want to stop, I'll just give it a little stop, lift my foot up. Christina's going to be the official keeper of the yarn here for me. Let me make sure that that feeds nice and well. But you can see how easy that is, how it just stitches down. Isn't that fun? I love couching. Although I do feel like Christina is the queen of couching. Christina, <laughs> if she can figure out how to add couching to a project, she does it. So we're just popping off that edge a little bit there. And we're going to yeah. pop back again. There we go. And it's a hopping foot. So if you ever do go off the fabric, yep. you can just pause, lift up the needle, put the fabric back in position. And this is one of the things that I love about quilting on stationary. Look at this. I can just turn the whole quilt. Ah, lovely. And keep and keep rolling. That's something you absolutely cannot do on a frame. Yeah. Another thing that's so much easier on these stationary machines is checking your tension. Yes. Absolutely. Now I'm getting in the groove here. Might have to go back and do just a little bit of trimming, or maybe I'll do a second second lap around, huh? Yeah, so um, this morning when we were demoing on the Moxie, mm -hmm. um, we were doing those little blocks and I had one that I had already done and I actually did go around it twice with okay. the yarn. So well, maybe we'll gives just, it a little bit more definition maybe we'll and covers that. up the spots that you missed. That Absolutely. and you can trim off extra. Yeah, you can always go back and do a little bit of trimming. Let that stop there. So this is quite fun. Um, you know, I think how much fun it would be to do like a little set of holiday pillows here. And it's so easy. Like seriously, yeah. yesterday I just pulled out some solid fa fabric, cut out a shape, basted it on, and now couching it down, we're going to get some great effects. Okay, I'm going to do a little clip right here. And you know what, I'm going to take a second trip around because I've got everything in place now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back the way I just came and stitch here on the outside. Look at you being wild and crazy and going the wrong direction. I know. I'm not the wrong direction, the other direction. The other That's direction. That's what I meant. Well, this, this is, like I said, <laughs> this is one of the things that I love about stitching on a stationary machine is you are not, I mean, I can, I can just turn that quilt in any direction I want to yep. and stitch. I don't have to, you know, especially using rulers or things like that. I don't have to do any gymnastics <laughs> when I'm using a ruler because I can just make sure I can always turn my quilt so that I am moving in the direction that is the most comfortable for holding that ruler. And I'm watching as you're doing this and those stitch sensors are staying covered. So you're getting that nice stitch regulation. Yeah. 
sure and am. I don't know if you can, uh, you paused for a second. Yeah. Um, are you in, um, are you working in cruise? I am precision in cruise. And what speed? I'm in cruise at 11 stitches per inch and I am at a 200 for cruise. So a little bit of a higher cruise, but that's good because then that gives me nice, when I come in on a corner like this, I make sure and get that stitch, uh, a nice point there. All right, and we're back to where we started, and there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and raise up, do you wanna... and we'll pull this away. And I'm just gonna scooch everything over this way, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut. This is another thing too, when you're stitching on a stationary machine, we don't have to do all the little tricks we have to do to bring our bobbin thread oh, up. Yes. You can just pull it over to the side and do it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that right back out again. Perfect. So how fun, how fun did that turn out? Look at that, I've got that all nice and uh, outlined. And you so. could use whatever colors, yep. whatever shape, anything. And I, I had a friend who actually did a cat. Oh, really? And he couched the entire cat and it was so cute. Oh, that's so fun, that's so fun. So, okay, let's do some quilting inside of this um, shamrock. And then what I wanna do is show you how easy it is to just put a back on here. And then this entire project will be done. Okay. So I was trying to think of a fun something besides just stipple, cause you did stipple this morning. So I thought maybe a stipple with a, a shamrock. If I do a little, three little hearts. Yeah, let's, do you feel uh, like thinking that much? <laughs> I'll let you do the commentating. Okay. <laughs> She is getting ready to bring up that bobbin thread. Okay. She now has her bobbin thread and she is going to do a couple tie off stitches. Yes, I am. Wait, I'm practicing okay. my golf voice. And what I'm going to do <laughs> is I am going to use the button on the screen to get me started. So I'm going to turn it on and then I am going to use the foot pedal to let me uh, to stop. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a meander with a loop actually is what I'm gonna do. That'll be good. I figure that'll be kind of fun. So we just wanna quilt this down. I'm liking that thread. I know, you know what? I lucked out because it was what was already in the machine. <laughs> you believe that? How lucky did I get on that one? And you can hear how the machine is just keeping up with me, everything that I've got rolling here. You guys will notice I didn't change from the couching foot to go ahead and do the rest of the quilting and that's okay. As long as you've got a hopping foot on there, you can do your quilting, so some kind of a foot. The green really is a fun contrast, isn't it? It is. All right. So, filling in that space. Lovely. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab those um, scissors. Once again, it's nice. I don't have to do that whole, Should hold my bobbin thread up at the bottom. Should we show them a fun thing that you can do with your scissors with the ST? Yes. So we've got a magnetic collar right here. We so actually just, have. Oh, there's two pairs. <laughs> there's a couple. But you know what? That actually shows you. So I know at home on my um, on my Amara, I keep a pair of scissors, and then I keep my little screwdriver that I use to tension my bobbin. I keep that right here. Oh, perfect. So it's nice. It's nice to keep it nice and handy. Yep, and that so, comes standard. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I am going to change this foot really quick. I want to show you guys how easy it is to change this foot. So I'm just gonna undo this little screw here and I'm gonna put on the sure foot because I wanna use a ruler to put on this quilt back or this uh, pillow back, sorry, because I wanna make sure that I get everything nice and straight so that my pillow is nice and square when I go to trim it up. And once again, Christina was nice enough to actually even hem the edges. I'm so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I feel like half the time when we do something like this, we uh, don't, um, the, the edges here, she she flipped it under and hemmed it just on a domestic machine. I feel like half the time I don't even, I yeah, just fold it over. <laughs> it looks great, it looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this down here. Right sides together. Right sides together. And we'll lay the other one down. 
And I do have that, so it's just a little bit over. Okay, and what I wanna do is I wanna start on this side over here, up in this corner, and I'm gonna use my ruler. Now, another advantage uh, when you're using a, a, for a stationary machine is you don't have to have a ruler base to use a ruler because your entire table is your ruler base. So let's go ahead and I will bring that bobbin thread up, pop that over to the side and pull it up. And then I'm so impressed that you could get that bobbin thread with those gloves on. Hey, I, I quilted for a lot of years on a domestic machine doing this exact thing. I actually, can you believe that? I actually learned how to do that bobbin up thing from reading my first book, learning how to do um, quilting on a domestic machine. The, the gal that I really? learned it from, I'm trying to, it was Harriet Hargrave, I believe, one huh. of her books. Uh, she, she, she recommended doing that. And it's a good thing because then you can clip your threads on the top and you don't end up with any thread nests on the bottom when you start quilting. So, okay. What I'm gonna do is just line that up and then I just go ahead and quilt right along the edge of that ruler. And when I get past where my hand is stabilizing it, that's when I wanna go ahead and make an adjustment with my ruler. And I don't wanna adjust my ruler when I'm not, uh, while I'm stitching. That could, that could lead to a big boo-boo. Yeah. <laughs> a big uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So now I'm turning my corner and I'm keeping everything nice and straight as I'm stitching here. And you guys will notice that I actually, one of the sensors is not covered. You can still get the stitch regulation as long as one sensor is covered. You get the very best quality with both, but you, I'm still, I'm still getting that consistent stitch. Have just a little less fabric on that on that side. I'm getting excited to see this finished pillow. I know. Original Christina Whitney design. <laughs> okay, go ahead and adjust that ruler again. And one last time. It is so nice to be able to just turn the fabric and hold the ruler the way that feels the most comfortable so that I am not having to do any <laughs> crazy torsion work. Contortion work. Although, you know, that's always fun too. All right. And we'll do a little bit of some tack stitches there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my, and then I'll go ahead and grab scissors <laughs> off of my handy dandy magnetic tool collar. And we'll clip those. And then uh, we would trim this up normally, but I think I think we should just go ahead and flip yeah, let's it. Just what do you think? It. Yep. Let's just go ahead and flip it. Actually, it'll give it the appearance of having a little stuffing in there. Yeah. We can stuff the extra yarn in there oh, too. Oh, there we go. <laughs> show what it'll look like. Have a fun little project here to show off. So there we go. Let me get my little corners popped out here just a little bit more. And there we go. It's all ready to look super cute. Ready for uh, St. Patrick's Day? We'll have to put it out. Um, let's see, that's actually, it's on Sunday. We won't be at work this week. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. So, well, we'll yeah. enjoy it until then. We will. We'll enjoy it until then. So that's a, you know, something fun that you can do uh, with the Amara ST. You can make pillows from start to finish right there. Or a king size quilt. Or a king size quilt. Lots, lots of fun things to do. So I, if, if any of you have questions about how to take advantage of purchasing this great machine, I think that Jane, if we're going back to Jane, Jane's got all that information for you. I'm right here. You can make a pillow. You can make a quilt. It's everything from left to right, A to Z, all the way. I love it. And that pillow is so cute. Thanks. I know. It's so great. Yeah. Christina and Kim, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your demonstration. It was so much fun. You had me laughing in stitches, if you will. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys thank soon. You. Let me tell everybody how they can get their hands on the Amara ST. So here we go. This is an amazing long arm quilting machine. It is the Amara 20 inch sit down. You saw the girl so comfortable sitting down. I loved it. Uh, you're going to have to 
Quilt Fest pricing here. Order now. Here's your Quilt Fest pricing. $6,995. But that is a fantastic machine. And that is a great price that you're getting this week during Quilt Fest. Again, the Amaro 20-inch sit-down long arm quilting machine. 800-401-8151. You know it's free shipping and you know you want it. Uh, so you can get that today. All right, let's move on. And here I am back at you guys again of seeing Christina and Kim. I love that Amara 20 inch sit down machine. I think it's fantastic. Lane, what do you think? Well, I tend to agree, Jane. That was a great uh, demonstration. Great machine. And uh, I would encourage anybody to get into quilting. If they don't have a machine, try it out. Get into it. Uh, all you have to do is start. All you have to do is start. That's it. Just start. And speaking of starting, we've got our next uh, presentation starting. Okay, so we'll let's see you back it. here in 30 minutes, Jane. We're going to wrap it up and give some stuff away. All right, guys, we have Belle Bruner coming up next, and she is going to be talking all about our King Quilter sit down. This is our very own brand that we have made for us. And I tell you what, we absolutely love this machine. And I know Belle's had it for, uh, I think, a month or so now. Has it been longer than that? We'll have to ask her. Uh, but anyway, y'all welcome back to the show, Belle Bruner. Hey, Belle. Hey, Blaine. How are you? I am doing great. Now, so how long have you had your King Quilter? We, we couldn't remember. I got it right when I got back from Quilt Festival. So it's been about three months. Three months. Okay. I knew, I knew you'd had it not very long. So, well, we're going to let you get started on. I know you have a lot to cover, and then we'll come back in about 30 minutes and tell everybody how they can get theirs. Sounds great. Well, it's great to be with you all uh, again. I presented about, about this great machine yesterday, and so if you missed it, we're going to go through it again. Uh, like Blaine mentioned, I've had this machine for about three months, and it is a really easy sit-down machine. So this is the King Quilter 2. And it is a sit down long arm machine for free motion quilting. Now, let me tell you a little backstory. So for me, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm a quilt pattern designer and lots of times I would quilt my own quilts if I didn't send them off to a long armor. And lots of times I would do just real free motion, basic free motion on my domestic machine. And this is the great next step up. I know it was for me. Um, it can be a little intimidating sometimes thinking about free motion quilting, but this machine is so simple and I don't like things that are complicated. And so I'm going to talk to you about how simple it is and how well it works. Uh, there's um, a great manual. There's actually a great little cheat sheet for you as you get used to this. I really focus on kind of confident beginner quilting things. And so this machine really goes along really with that topic of being a confident beginner. And I believe in giving things a good loving try and, and practicing. So this is a great start for that. So first let's talk about, now I can see your comments over here. So I'll try to look up from time to time to see if you have any questions uh, as I go through this. Uh, yes, I know I'm a peacemaker. Thanks for all the compliments on the shirt. I'm a peacemaker in real life. I don't like conflict and confrontation. And so it was just perfect to be a quilter too, right? Okay, let's get started. So the features of this King Quilter 2, let's start with the quilt vision table. So this machine comes in this quilt vision table and I'm gonna tell you why it's called that. Couple things. One is let's talk about the surface. So we'll have um, quilt husbands doing the filming for me today. If you can see the slick reflection here. So oftentimes, if you are doing free motion quilting on your domestic machine, you sometimes have to use a glider, right? I used to have to do that so that your quilt would slide. Well, you don't have to with this vision quilt vision table because it has this special surface. So it just slides whenever you're moving your fabric around. So that is a really great feature of this table. Um, another one is let's talk about the height of this table. So I'm pretty tall and I actually piece standing oftentimes and I could technically free motion quilt standing with this table if I wanted. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I want to tell you the dimensions. So it's adjustable from 25.5 inches all the way to 39.9. 
Now, I'm not quite sure. My husband and I, when we put this together, I don't know exactly what height I have it at, but I'm pretty tall. I have a pretty tall torso. I actually am sitting in an Aero sewing chair that you heard um, Harley talk about earlier, and it's adjustable. So regardless, if you have an adjustable chair, you can come up higher or lower if you don't want to adjust the table. Um, you can do that. So that is the dimensions on this table being adjustable. Also, let's talk a little bit about the size. So it is 32 inches deep. So from the edge where I'm sitting all the way to the edge here is 32 inches. And then from the edge right here where my hand is to here is 36 inches wide when these extensions are folded down. Okay, so I actually keep this over in a corner. I'll have my husband kind of show you over there. That's normally where this lives. And so oftentimes when I'm quilting, I don't need necessarily the two extension tables folded up, especially if I'm doing something small. But if I'm doing like a king size, queen size quilt, these are 18 inch extensions that literally just fold up. So you can fold them down put it in a corner in your in your studio, in your bedroom that you sew in, whatever space that you have in your home, this is a great size for that. So if you think about a piece of fabric that's 36 inches, you could go into your corner right now and go get a tape measure and measure out 36 inches. And that is the size of this when these extensions are folded down for easy storage. So I have a lot of stuff here in my studio and this was the perfect size for me. When I want to quilt, then I will sometimes just pull it out from that corner and I can lift the, um, the extension tables here on the side. So 36 inches when they're not extended. When they are extended, you've got six feet. So six feet to be able to quilt a king size, queen, whatever it may be. So it is really, really versatile when we think about that. So again, six feet, if you've got them folded up, uh, 36 inches if you've got them folded down, okay? So the other thing about this table is that it's movable. So it comes on um, casters. So Chris can look down here. You can see the casters, and you just click the little button there, and they will lock in place. So I was able just to roll this over here for you all today, um, kind of out of the corner over there. So it moves really easily. You could move this, roll it around the house if you need to, okay? All right. So next about this table, let's look at the sensors. So this is where the magic happens. This is what makes us even look like a better stitcher, quilter, <laughs> uh, that, we, that we may not really be and we want to be because of these little eyes right here. So these are the sensors that actually pay attention. It can tell how fast you're moving your fabric. OK, and so what will happen is I'll show you in a few moments when we talk about the stitch regulator mode, there is stitch regulator mode on this machine, a cruise and a precision. And these little eyes here will read how quickly you're moving the table. So or, I'm sorry, how quickly you're moving the fabric. So the faster you move the fabric, the quicker it stitches. The slower you move it, the slower it stitches, right? It's excellent features. And Susan, you're right. This is so good for a small space. And these sensors really make you feel like a quilty rock star um, if you want that. Now, there's manual mode, too. And so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But these sensors, and you don't want to use any kind of like um, alcohol or any harsh chemical over these because they are, you know, paying attention to that fabric. So that is the special part of this table. This is really easy to assemble. Now, my husband and I put this together, this table. It took us, what, maybe an hour? Yeah, I think it took us an hour to put this together. Um, the, the toughest part was both of us were needed to actually set this in the table. Easy to do, really easy to do. Maybe if you have a second set of hands to help you put this in. So that is the Quilt Vision table. And I think you'll love it for a small space that you have. Yes, quilters do rock. We are. And sensors do make us even better. I want to show you a little bit here. You can just see this was um, some practice quilting that I did with the machine as I've been getting used to it. And this is on stitch regulator mode. So you see how nice these stitches are here on there. And what I did was when you practice, you know, I say, you know, give things a loving try. If you've been nervous about free motion quilting, 
give it a try, practice on your quilt sandwiches, you know, that you have. And then I just made an eyeglass case out of, I just cut up this block that I was using to practice on and I made an eyeglass case out of that. So as you're practicing, you actually can just use these small little sandwiches, you know, uh, to make things with too. So I wanted to show you those close-up stitches so you could really see that. I'm just trying to learn a, a new motif, a new pantograph here of little cute flowers. So I wanted to show you that. All right, so that is the table. Let me look up here and see if there's any questions. Oh, thanks, Mona. You know, I was pretty proud of myself too because I'm trying to learn, you know, and, 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 and there took a little bit of practice to do that. So thank you. Okay, let's look now at uh, the features when it comes to the throat space of, of this actual quilting machine here. So this is 18 inches deep. So from the needle, all the way to the back is 18 inches. So, you know, some of us like to roll our quilts up and then some of us like to just smoosh them all up under there. Whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy, that's what you should do. But there is plenty of room for that. And then you've also got eight inches. So it's eight inches tall from here to here. And if you know me, um, if you've been like me, it's hard to wrangle a quilt under a regular just domestic sewing machine. This is perfect for rolling or scrunching. Very, very deep space. So excellent measurements on that. Then let's look at the overall visibility. So like I said, my torso, I'm pretty tall. When I'm sitting right here and I'm looking down from where I'm sitting, there is um, four inches of visibility. So this comes up four inches. So I'm able to really see the needle and the presser foot here uh, to be able to see what I'm doing with my fabric. Yeah, so great, great vision there for that. And then um, in front of me is um, the, um, the um, screen. And I'm going to show that to you in just a minute. Before I do, I want to show you the lighting. So I'm going to be 50 next year. And my eyes are starting to act up a little bit. And I was thrilled that this had not one light, but it's got two lights. So I'm going to show these to you so you can see how great the lighting is on this. So I have both of them on right now. And if it's off, this is what it looks like with both of them off. If you want just the back one on, then you can turn the back one on. If you want just the front one on, you can turn the back one off. And then you've just got the front on. I keep both of mine on all the time. Um, excellent lighting, but it's not overly harsh where you're having to squint or anything, but you don't have to worry about, you know how sometimes we'll get those LED stick on track lightings that we stick under our machines. I don't have to do that. You don't have to do that with this one. Um, plenty of lighting for you. So that is a really, really great feature as well. Let's talk a little bit about threading. Okay. Let me look up at the comments. Yep. Yeah, love the lighting. Okay. How hard is it to get the bobbin changed? I'll talk about the bobbin, Mona, in just a minute. Super easy. It's actually here in front. It's not like in some place that's kind of hidden. Let me talk about the thread first on threading. So if you notice here, I'm sitting, I don't have to get up to thread. So I've got my hand here and I can reach the thread mast and you bring it up through here, right? You don't have to get up and then you're going to come through the thread guide here. Super easy to thread. Then you're going to come through the thread guide here and you'll loop it through all three of these holes. Now, depending on the thread top you have, you may actually just go through two holes. You'll look at your direction manual because it will mention about, depending on the weight of your thread, you might need one or you might need two or all three holes uh, to put your thread through. Then you're going to come down through this uh, thread guide, and then you're going to come around the tension ring, and you notice the tension knob. Now, do you notice anything unusual about this knob? What's missing? There's no numbers. And there's no numbers because a nice feature of this machine is there's a readout on this digital screen. I'll show you in a few minutes. So when you use your tension dial here, the readout is on the screen. So that's why there's no numbers. You're going to come around. You're just going to loop up here through this thread guide, through the hook, all the way down through this thread guide, and then directly to a little hole here in front and then right out there. Super easy. And the nice thing is, is also... The machine, the machine comes with this little handy, I call it a cheat sheet, and I actually keep it next to me. It really quickly, as you get used to it, you've got the guide here that it tells you, you know, how to do that. But again, I think once you do it once, 
you actually won't need this again, but it does have this really handy cheat sheet even to tell you about all the buttons that I'm going to show you in a few minutes on the screen. So that is a little bit about the threading. Now it uses a, a front load bobbin, or it's got a front load uh, bobbin area, I'll show you, and it uses an M class bobbin. So it's this here, M class bobbin. And it, this will hold 210 yards of thread. So uh, I'm going to show you the, um, the uh, bobbin winder here in a second. And what you can do is just wind a bunch of these up in advance. And then, you know, you're ready to go. So that is the bobbin. Now, Chris, I'll have you come on over here. So let's show everybody the bobbin area because someone was asking about that. It's super easy to find. It is literally right here in front of you. Okay, so you see that? And initially, you'll have to look, but eventually you'll get muscle memory. And you just pop it in there and it snaps. And you just leave a little tail hanging. And this stays open. There's not a door to have to open or anything like that. But it's also out of the way so you don't accidentally bump it with your knee or mess anything up. It's, it's in this hard, this hard casing here. So front load. Yeah, really nice. Bit nice big bobbin, easy to see. And there's a light. Yeah, exactly, Carol. There's a light under there so you can see, which is really nice and it's easy to get to. So you don't have to open up some kind of little special compartment. It's just right there for you. Now let's move on over. Speaking of the bobbin, let's move on over here to the bobbin winder. So this is what's really special about this whole setup is your bobbin winder is separate. So you're not using up the motor of this long arm machine. It's separate. So you actually um, can just go ahead and wind up all your bobbins before you start your quilting project and just pop those babies in there like I showed you. So this is super easy. We won't have time for me to show you uh, really kind of how to do it all. But I do have on my YouTube channel three videos about this machine. One is the overall features. One is how to thread it, and then one is the bobbin winder. So if you forget everything I told you today, just pop on over to my YouTube channel, and I do the demo for you. So with your thread, you've got your comb. It's just going to go up through the thread mast here. There's a hole uh, back here in the back, and you'll just put your thread through that hole. You'll come around the tension area here, and then you just feed your thread through your bobbin, pop it on there, and hit start and you are good to go. And yes, Gina, it does stop when it's full. So there's the sensor. These are two little sensors here. And um, what'll happen is there's a little screw right here and you'll get a screwdriver and you can adjust this. It'll slide to like how full you want your bobbin to be. And then that, that sensor will officially read, okay, the bobbin is now full to whatever level you want and it'll stop. So it doesn't just like keep on going indefinitely. Uh, and it's a class M bobbin, class M bobbin. So this just plugs in and I kind of keep it over close to this machine. Just wind up all my bobbins and I am ready to go. Yes, it is good to be able to adjust that. So um, great to know about that there with that. Okay, uh, let, let me look up here and see if there's any other questions. Yes, Karen, it is an M bobbin. Um, can you purchase the bobbin wander separate? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, someone there from uh, SP answered that. It looks like you can do that. Okay, uh, what size thread? You can use all kinds of thread. Right now, there's 50 weight on here. Um, I've been practicing with 40 weight. Um, you could do 30 weight, even. I haven't talked about the feet yet, but there's even Handy Quilter has compatible feet. There's couching feet for this. So you can use actually yarn also. I think uh, the ladies were just demoing before me about couching. So there's other feet that you can buy to go with this machine. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of those. Now, the one that comes with it, there's two feet that come with this. One of them is, is the one I have on here. And this is just for basic free motion quilting. And there's it's open on the back side of this foot. So you can see the needle, see what you're doing and where you're going. OK, do I like a certain brand of thread? You know, um, I, I use Wonderfeel, um, but I've also used Superior. 
Um, I put this Aurafil on. So it takes a little practice to figure out kind of what you like and what you, what project you're using. Uh, you may want to change it up. I have a whole entire uh, wall full of thread. So just try out all the different threads. It actually, any of it will work on the machine. You'll just have to make sure you adjust your tension when you change out your thread weights, okay? Now, back to the presser feet here. The other one that comes with it is this ruler foot. So I've got a ruler over here. And you know that saying I told you about giving things a loving try? I have never used a ruler before until I got this machine and I decided, you know what? I'm going to quilt a baby size quilt, um, which I'll show you here in a minute. But this is how this goes through there like that. You see how that works? And so that's what this special foot is for. So when you get this machine, get you a ruler or two. I think So Steady was on this week. They've got rulers um, that they talked about um, that you can give a try. So those are the two feet that come with it. Now there's other feet, again, that you could purchase as extras. Another great one to get is the Echo Foot. This one right here is great if you've got quilts with little bumps and lumps in it. Um, you actually can just glide right on over that. It's also called a glide foot too. Then as I mentioned, we've got couching feet. We've also got a micro foot here, which is good when you want to do stippling and thread painting. So you've got a lot of add-on options once you, you know, get ready to try other things rather than the two feet that come on this. Okay. All right, so that is a little bit about that. Now let's let's come on over here, Chris, to the screen, and I want to show you all the screen so you can see the features. So one thing that is really handy is this is only three and a half inches wide. So you've still got visibility. You can see what's going on here with your quilt because this is narrow, but it's it's super big. I don't have my glasses on, and I have to wear readers sometimes, and I can still read all of this quite well. So the numbers and the buttons are large enough for you. So I want to show you some of the things that are on here. You've got your tools on here. So you've got right here this button. This is to be able to keep track of your bobbin if it's getting ready to run out. Because do you really like to play bobbin chicken? I honestly don't, but I know some people do. If you don't want to play bobbin chicken, then you actually are able to put in your brand new bobbin. You'll hit record. And then once the bobbin runs out, the first time you hit record again, and it remembers how much thread was on that bobbin. And so you'll get an alarm that will, will happen, and it'll let you know, uh-oh, I'm getting ready to run out of thread. So no bobbin chicken for you either, Terry. <laughs> yeah, right? So you've got that feature here, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then also, we've got um, the uh, the read out we've got the stitch count counter here to be able to see how many stitches you've put into a quilt so i know some of you might like to say i have one million stitches in this quilt and now you can have bragging rights to be able to show how many stitches are in there you also have a timer so sometimes we are known for not getting up and moving our bodies and there are alarms on here to be able to help you remember to do that to get up move around and stretch which is really nice you've also got a calculator in case you decide you want to do a little quilty math while you're here. Um, there's some diagnostics. And then I showed you earlier, there's where your lighting is to be able to change your lighting also. So great features there for you um, with those things. Okay, let's look now at manual mode. We've got manual mode. So you see here in green. Manual mode is basically what you do on your domestic machine in the sense that when you press the pedal, which I'll sh have Chris show you the pedal down here because you do have the option to get the larger pedal instead of the smaller one if you do want to upgrade with that. It's a great size here, as you can see. You know, you're not going to miss that. But when you're doing your manual quilting, you control, right, the needle. When you let off the, um, the, the foot here, your needle's going to slow down or stop. So you actually have full control in manual mode for how quick, how fast, and how slow you're, you're actually going, okay? Then you've also got a basting stitch, right? So a lot of machines don't have that. I know we like to do the victory lap. And on my manual machine that I have, my domestic machine, I have to turn it all the way to a six to try to baste the edge of the quilt. With this, you've got basting mode. And so with your basting mode, you can get one stitch per half inch, per one inch, per two inch, or per four inch. So really nice that it's got that basting feature for you. Now back to manual mode, you also 
um, can decide. Let's see. Let me hit baste again. There we go. I usually stitch at about 525 stitches per minute. You can program that. And sometimes we don't really know if we've never used one of these machines, the speed that we like. Once you play around and figure that out, you can actually keep track of two different speeds. So that's definitely an option there for you. This button right here uh, will actually uh, make the needle go up and down. I'm sorry, this one right here makes the needle go up and down. This one will actually, if you're in uh, regulator mode, it'll cause it to actually just start, okay? So manual mode right here, easy, easy, easy. And then we can go to regulator mode. Now with regulator mode, you've got two options. You've got um, the cruise control. So the cruise control is this one. And cruise control is basically the minimum speed the machine will stitch regardless of how slowly the fabric's moving. So it's kind of like an idle mode and it helps your stitches look really pretty. Then we've got precision mode. And with precision mode, when you stop, it stops. When you move, it moves. The faster you move, it moves. Um, and then you also can pick how many stitches per inch you want. So right now I've got mine set on 10, but you can go anywhere from four to 22 stitches per inch. And for some of you that are speed quilters, let me tell you, this machine goes anywhere from 50 to 2,200 stitches per minute. So you can go as fast or as slow as you want. Yes, Barbara, the machine does let you know when the bobbin is empty. Absolutely. It will beep at you and let you know that for sure. Okay. Also with the needle, it's just a tap of a pedal, up or down. So if you just tap the pedal, then the needle will go up. If you tap it, the needle will go down. Um, and then. Um, I think the, oh, the other thing I was going to show you really quick is this was the first time to use the ruler and I'll let him show you. Um, I don't think I used the ruler correctly and that I didn't turn it the way I was supposed to because I've never used one, but I was so proud of myself. But look at these pretty stitches that the machine does. Isn't that nice? This was in, in a regulator mode. Yeah, this is the posy chain. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of a, a peek of, of what that does. Now it comes with a, a 10 year warranty. Um, on, I think, the actual machine part, and then a five-year on the electronics and the mechanical, but Blaine can let you know about all of that for sure. Okay, I think I covered anything, uh, everything. Oh, Patty, there are mistakes on here, but you know what? I believe in progress over perfection, and I just say, you know what? Just give it a loving try, right? Okay, well, friends, I'm going to turn it back over to Blaine. It was so great to be with you all today. And I have to say, I think this is the second, maybe the third time I've been on the show. You guys are the kindest community. I, when I watch the comments on here, everyone's just so loving and complimentary. Nobody's cranky. So SP <laughs> Nation, you guys are the best. So thanks for being with me today. And Blaine's going to let you know how you can get the great King Quilter. Well, great job, Bell. And you are right. The SMP Nation is awesome. And thank you so much for coming on the show. And as always, it was a great demonstration. And we'll look forward to, to uh, having you on more shows. Sounds great. You guys have a good week. Okay. Thanks, Bell. All right. So this is the King Quilter 18 inch sit down. This is our very own brand machine. And I am super proud of this. We launched this, uh, our first one, the long arm. Uh, stand-up version. We launched it in 2018 and uh, we followed up in 2020 with this one. And again, guys, we have that quilt vision table. Uh, this thing is just awesome. I love this thing. And, you know, I think the question came up before is, you know, if you decide you wanted to get a long arm quilting machine, could you uh, convert this? You sure can. You can uh, put the handlebars on it and it will go onto a frame. You can make it go work on a frame. So uh, there is a way to do it. Um, this, let me just tell you a little bit about the, 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 the machine. So it does have that 18 inch, uh, opening throat space. It's eight inches tall in that harp area. Uh, it has the quilt vision stitch regulation, which is built into the table. So you're going to have electric eyes on each side of the needle plate that senses how fast you're pushing that fabric, uh, when you're doing free motion. And that's what, uh, you know, uh, basically uses your regulation for your speed. Uh, the table is 36 inches wide uh, and 32 inches deep. Now, when you get those uh, extensions on the, each side, each one of those are 18 inches. So when they're folded out, that gives you a full six feet, 72 inches of quilting space. It's going to be 32 inches deep. 
uh, the it's going to raise that table is going to go from 25 and a point five inches all the way up to 39.5 inches. So this is made where you can sit down, set it where you're sitting, or you can adjust it up to make it where you, if you want to do stand up, uh, and it's going to stitch at 2,200 stitches per minute. So extremely fast. And then in like uh, she, uh, Bell showed you has that nice big foot pedal uh, that you can use. And uh, we're super excited about this. We have some special financing available for you. Uh, the price is $59.95, but we do have a call-in special. And we're also uh, not even, uh, besides the call-in special, we're going to throw in those uh, extension uh, extensions for the table as well. And so give us a call right now, 800-401-8151. And naturally, we're going to ship this free nationwide right to your doorstep. All right, let's bring our co-host back in, Miss Jane Klaus. <laughs> How excited I am about that. <laughs> well, Jane, guess that what? Weird. <laughs> it is the end of day three. I am giddy. I don't I want more. Say you it ain't more? so. Yes. Well, I tell you what, here <laughs> Kennedy's volunteering to stay here for another few hours. And okay. You, you can host. Okay. Me and Kyle are out of here. <laughs> and uh so it's just going to be the the Jane and Kennedy show the That's rest right. for the next two hours. Oh, we can find some guests. We can do. I can tell more jokes. I mean, I'm <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, you know. yeah. Y'all will have to do the demonstrations. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the we'll do the demos. Sure, I'll just oh, turn. I got some whoa. cameras around here. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There you go. And we don't right, know well, exactly let's... what we'll be demoing, but it could be something fun. Yeah, it could be how to fix an hourglass. Um, <laughs> we could do that. All right. Well, let's give some stuff away. What do you think? I love that. That's a great idea. That's what we would do if we stayed for two hours. We would give things away. All right. So what we're going to do first up, we are going to give away. Kenny, what do you got over there in your prize so closet? Let's start off. Of course, we got to send some people home with some mats today. Oh, oh yes. Masts. All right. Our world famous so mats. We have these in 13 different colors, four sizes in each color. Uh, and I always say, if you do not have a sewing mat for your machine yet, you're doing your machine a disservice. We should just all say that together. You're doing your machine, machine a disservice. A disservice. Right. You are. All at once. We'll next time, guys. Yeah, next time. All right. So, Kennedy, spin <laughs> that wheel. You got it. Oh, where am I at? This is the wrong <laughs> thing. There we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, She's got it, everybody. Spin it. I like that squirrel girl that just ran by. Is that real? Oh, uh, wait. Uh, I almost won. <laughs> you almost hey, won because you're, <laughs> you're doing your machines a disservice, Blaine. Well, what I did is I put my name in there because I wanted to win something today. <laughs> I, I typed in comfort earlier today, so I chatted one time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You chatted one time. You almost won. I know. So, Kelly. We need you to go to smplive.tv, scroll down toward the bottom of that page where it says claim my prize, fill out all that information complete, and in the notes section, most importantly, put what color of so mat you want and what size, and we'll get that right out to you. You have 30 days to claim that prize. All right, what's up next, Kennedy? We got another, because Acupult is so generous, we have another Acupult Go cutting machine. Awesome. All right, Jane. Oh, yes. All right, Kennedy. Let's do it. Spin that wheel. Ooh, you got it. <laughs> I need to come up with something to say after. Like, what's something that flows? Okay. Spinning. Spinning. <laughs> Pretty. Okay. Tanya. Tanya, 99503. Do we think that's her password to something? Zip code. <laughs> All right. Uh, watching today from YouTube. Uh, so, Tanya, we need you to go to smplive.tv. Scroll down toward the bottom of the page where it says claim my prize. Fill out all that information complete. Hit submit, and we'll get your gift right out to you. Uh, you have 30 days to claim that prize. Yes, Blaine, I love that you just were like, all right, you're like just keeping us in line. Let's give away some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're wanting, they're the, they were wanting to win some stuff. So we yes. gotta make sure we give a lot of stuff. Let's away. do it. Let's do it. All right, Kennedy, what else is in that prize right. closet? We got, we'll do 
do a gift card and then we have one more. So okay. Fifty dollar gift, gift card to SMP. That's so good. Kennedy, spin that wheel. You got it. Here we go. So exciting. <gasps> Linda Boostrom. Linda Boostrom watching us on YouTube. Congratulations, Linda. You're looking good. Yes, you won the gift certificate. Now you need to just go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. Mm -hmm. Tell us where we're sending it. Do we send it or you send her an email? Uh, we will send you an email. So nice. most important thing is email in your form. There you go. Yay. All right. Last up. A Janome TM16 sewing machine in the cutest blue I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, Kennedy, spin that wheel. Okay. So exciting. I want to know who wins. <gasps> Tony L. Tony Woo! with an I. Congratulations, you won the sewing machine. Go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. Scroll to the bottom, fill out all the information, and the folks at SMP will get that out to you ASAP. Mm -hmm. All right, Jane. So the next gift we're or next drawing we're going to have is for the uh, Dream Studio yes. giveaway. Twenty six thousand dollars worth of goodies, and we're going to draw our third finalist for that and all the finalists are guaranteed to at least win a sewing machine and uh, one of them lucky of those five are going to win a dream studio on friday and uh, day one on monday our finalist was laverne mendez on day two our finalist was sewing bev and day three is right now so kennedy spin that wheel oh boy this is so, my fingers are crossed for everyone. I want everyone to win. I'm nervous. I feel like everyone screams at home, spin that wheel at the same time. Yes. Karen. Karen. Karen Bruin. Bruin. She's brewing up something good. Oh yeah. Congratulations, Karen. So Karen, we need you to go to smplive.tv, scroll down toward the bottom of that page, fill out all of our information and hit submit. And uh, we will and make sure you put in there that I, in the notes section, I am the day three finalist yes and uh kennedy's making notes as well yes i've got you written down but please fill out the form so we yeah, that's how we can are. keep up with everything so we uh that way we'll have all your information that we need and uh, so we get to add her to the list of finalists and Congratulations. Uh, we have all three finalists so far we'll pick a fourth tomorrow and then our fifth finals will be on friday and then i'll put them all in a hat and draw it out live on air jane that's so exciting. It's so much fun. Um, yay. So just keep commenting if you haven't. If you're too shy and you haven't even said hello, like Blaine even commented. You just have to I write one little, one little comment and you're in the mix, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I was hoping to win something today, but no, didn't win. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Maybe was tomorrow, so Blaine. Easy. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane, another great day today i've really enjoyed all the demonstrations and uh you know the educational session today was was fantastic that jane did and uh, we're gonna have another one tomorrow another great educational session yes, some great will. demonstrations all day long and a lot of prizes and uh, so another great day under our belt and uh, this thing is counting down very quickly so i hope everybody will tune in tomorrow We'll be going live again at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Central. And then Jane and I will be on there just about 15 minutes past the hour. And then our first demonstration will be at 30 minutes past the hour. And uh, we'll be here the whole rest of the day. So lots Jenny more, lots more fun and games. You never know. Lots yep. more and giveaways. So again, we're going to be random giveaways throughout the day. So you got to be uh, kind of be right. on your toes. Lots more fun and games. Lots more giveaways. I'm, I'm sure the gremlins will show up, but we don't want them. Plenty more jokes. All the fun is happening here on Quilt Fest. It'll be day four. I can't believe it, Blaine. Oh, I know. I know. All right, everybody. Uh, um, thank you all so much for tuning in. We hope that you'll be here tomorrow. And, and can Jane I say one I thing? 
Yes. Where? How can they find you, Jane? Yes. Thank you. I would love it if everybody went to my website, janeclaus.com. That's C-A-C-C-L-A-U-S-S double S for extra special, janeclaus.com. Uh, sign up for my little hellos. And I actually just posted a couple of great podcasts. So next week, when you're working on your projects, you can tune in and have a listen. Uh, one was with our friend Amanda Todaro about her journey becoming a, a theatrical costume designer and then I have one coming up and it is going to be about trends in home and housewares and I know we all love that so uh, it's anywhere you get your podcast it's called creative living but you can also go to my website it's all there and I've got lots of fun St. Patrick's Day crafts and sewing ideas there too all right y'all heard it here so make sure you go check out Jane's website and uh, we hope that y'all will all come back and check us out tomorrow and hope everybody has a great night tonight. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.